educational institutions have reopened today uh, but these visuals here you can see uh, people leaving with everything that they have and going back to their hometowns in West Bengal. Nidan, take us through you know the situation on the ground as far as Gurugram and adjoining areas are concerned. Are people going back to business? Is the sense of normalcy returning? Uh, you know when we talk about the traffic situation, you're saying the security remains in place. Uh, are you seeing the same number of uh, the police deployment on the roads of Gurugram and adjoining areas? Is, has there been any sort of change since yesterday? Well, Divya, as I was driving uh, through, uh, you know, the, uh, when I was driving from Delhi to Gurugram, the police deployment certainly was lesser than yesterday because yesterday we saw that there were uh, several uh, paramilitary forces, there were also, uh, you know, rapid action forces that were deployed on roads, they were conducting flag marches. Today, the police deployment was lesser. And secondly, uh, educational institutions and many of the companies, uh, including the big four companies that had ordered their employees to work from home, they've also now said that employees can can actually come and work from location, work from office. That's why there was traffic movement as well, more than we saw yesterday. And another important aspect here is that, um, you know, if you talk about these migrant workers, they say that for the next two, three days, they're not going to work at all. In fact, let's get in a sense from some people here also. Sir, you uh, name Shadul Islam. ये बताइए कि आप लोग जैसे कुछ लोग तो यहाँ छोड़ छोड़ के जा रहे हैं जो लोग यहाँ पर हैं क्या आप लोग काम पर जा पा रहे हैं अपने अभी दो तीन दिन कोई काम चले दो तीन दिन से काम, काम पर जाना नहीं भैया नहीं जा पा रहे हैं काम पर आज भी आप काम पर अगले दो तीन दिन का क्या मतलब आपका है काम बिल्कुल पूरी तरीके से काम बंद है पूरा पूरा काम बंद है इसका क्या रीजन है क्यों काम पे नहीं जा रहे तो क्यों नहीं जाना चाहिए रास्ता में जब काम पे जा रहा है तो रास्ते में सब सबको मर रहा है इसीलिए काम पर नहीं जा रहा है अपना 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 घर पर सब भाग रहा है जी समाटा में छोड़ के सब भाग रहा है जी सो दिव्या एज यू हर्ट इट यू नो people who are not leaving they are also scared to go to work that's why you know they've also been advised by the police many of them tell us to stay inside their homes that is why you know they've been hit economically many of these are migrant workers they're daily wage laborers they earn on a daily basis that's how they run their homes so their uh, households uh, depend on that meager earning that they get from uh, you know the many of them are rag pickers many of them are uh, daily wage laborers so all of them are hit but uh, as far as normalcy is concerned it has started to return with education institutions reopening internet coming back to several parts except certain subdivisions uh, and also traffic movement resuming uh, you know back to normal uh, we also saw school buses etc that were taking uh, kids to school so normalcy has started to return but it will take uh, some time for these people to get back to normal in the sense that they still have that fear that if they go to work there could be some untoward incident while uh, you know they're on their way Right, Vedant, you're mentioning how uh, life seems to be coming back to normal as far as Gurugram is concerned and the presence of uh, the security forces seems to have reduced. But when we talk about uh, new, uh, you know, flag marches were conducted early this morning. Uh, we have seen the rapid action force also in Bachapur yesterday and new this morning. So even though there might be a sense of calm that's returning, yet, uh, you know, the security arrangements seem to be uh, there in areas of uh, new as well as Bachapur. You see, uh, Divya, Nu has really been the center of uh, this entire uh, com communal violence. That is why, you know, you, you cannot really compare the situation in Nu to Gurugram. In, in, in Nu, of course, um, uh, what we get uh, from the cops is that uh, constantly there's police deployment. And as you said, there were flag marches conducted this morning as well. Rapid action forces, paramilitary forces have been deployed. In fact, this is something that the Home Minister has also said, that uh, we are making sure that there is heavy police deployment. In fact, uh, from Bhonsi, where... where, where where, was, where there was this battalion headquarters that has been shifted to NU just be, uh, to ensure that uh, there's enough police deployment in the event of an untoward incident. Uh, and other than that, uh, the Chief Minister of Haryana, Manohar Lal Khattar, has also said that there has to be enough police deployment uh, till the time uh, life returns to complete normalcy. Uh, a three-member committee has also been formed to, uh, to take a look at social media. Uh, that is something that is very important because uh, there, are, there are constant uh, unverified reports, videos of online that are flaring up uh, communal tension so th that is one aspect that is very important uh, but uh, you know the fact of the matter is that it will take some time for normalcy to return completely because it involves uh, the, the fear that uh, these people are facing in fact there are a lot of people uh, who were from Mewat and Nu in Gurugram uh, they have returned to Mewat from Gurugram given the fact that uh, things were not normal here so you can imagine uh, the, the kind of fear that people are living in uh, but uh, given the fact that the government has assured 
uh, police deployment. The government has also urged people to maintain calm, to make sure that there is harmony in uh, slums. I come to you from a slum area where both, uh, you know, there's a mixed population. Despite that, uh, people are urged to live in harmony. And, there, you know, there, there are instances of how uh, people from uh, various uh, villages, people from various slum clusters are helping each other. They're all saying that we feel safe when there is police deployment. Right. But in no, of course, the situation is still sensitive because that has been the center of violence. Right. Uh, and you did mention uh, the Chief Minister of Haryana, Vedanta, talking about how uh, they are asking for more police protection in the areas. At the same time, he said that it's not possible for the police to protect every person in a state and has appealed to the people to maintain peace and harmony. Thank you so much, Vedant. We will keep coming back to you for more on that. Now, when we take into account uh, the human aspect, it's not just, uh, you know, the violence that's erupted since Monday. It has resulted in six people dying and over 70 people have injured. But the human toll of the violence that broke out in Haryana's new has spread to other parts of the state and it cannot be measured only in terms of the dead and the injured. A locality in Gurugram is a glaring example of this. And of the 100 Muslim families from West Bengal that were staying in the locality, only 15 have been left behind and that too because they don't have the money to go back home. Life over livelihood. Many migrant workers are making that choice packing their bags and leaving the Millennium City. Those left behind are terrified. Forty-year-old Safiya, a domestic help, moved to Gurugram from West Bengal less than a year ago. Her son, Shamim Hussain, a food delivery agent, says they are being intimidated. Kuch kal local bande aaye the, saath, pacha saath. तो आके बोला के जितने भी तुम हो बंगाल से आए हो तो यहाँ रूम खाली करके चले जाओ सौ फैमिली रहते हैं सौ घर हैं यहाँ पर टोटल सौ में से नब्बे चले गए दस रह रहे हैं हम लोग जो जिस जिसके पास पैसा नहीं है वही रोक रहे हैं अभी बाकी सब चले गए ये बच्चा है इसके लिए बहुत ज़्यादा डर है अभी ये सब मुश्किल फेस करना पड़ा है बीवी भी डर गई वो तो रात से रो रही है कल से दिस इज इन द स्टोरी ऑफ वन फैमिली Thousands in Gurugram have had sleepless nights after a 22-year-old man named Saad died in communal violence on Monday and many shops and cars have been burnt ever since. In this luxurious residential society in Gurugram sector 70, a housekeeping worker allegedly was beaten up by a mob of around 70 to 80 people. According to the people who work here, that housekeeping worker was first beaten up and then threatened to not come to work here. And that is what has happened. Around 20 housekeeping workers who used to work in this society have not shown up for work. So as the violence in Gurugram is clearly reducing, the fear that it has left in the minds of the communities has kept them away from leading a normal life. चार कल हमारा एक हाउसकीपिंग को मारा था वहाँ पे रस्ते पे वो गाड़ी लेके जा रहा था उसे नाम पूछा नाम पूछ के नाम बताया आगे आगे एक बात भी नहीं बोला सीधा मार चालू हो गया बीबी है मेरे बच्चे तो बोल रहा हूँ चार दिन में जन्म नहीं देते हुए बाबा चार दिन में हुआ जन्म देते हुए चार और बाकी हमें भुगतना पड़ेगा मैं गरीब हूं मैं मैं मर जाऊंगा इधर रहूंगा मेरा देश है ये मैं मैं कहीं नहीं जाने वाला छोड़ के हम लोग बंगाल से आए हुए कमाने खाने के लिए आए हमारा किसी के साथ लड़ाई झगड़ा नहीं है किसी के साथ हम मारपीट करने नहीं है यहां हमारा कोई नहीं है अगर हमको डर सा लगा रहता है अगर कोई रात में आके हमको पीट देगा तो हम कहां जाएंगे डर से ही जा रहा हूं लेकिन हमारा कुछ होगा तो कोई मानदा नहीं लेकिन हमारा बच्चे को कुछ हो गया तो while recording, we heard two goons on a bike asking people to leave. As families live in this fear, the Gurugram administration says the situation is now normal.
while the rapid action force carried out flag marches across the city. In the last 20 odd hours, there has uh, not been even a single incident. Uh, some news came regarding the uh, migrant workers and uh, uh, they are being asked uh, to vacate mm -hmm. their premises and they are being assured that uh, nobody has to leave and the administration is standing with them. Eight people have been arrested for yesterday's vandalism and 15 FIRs have been filed. The Gurugram skyline, marked with high-rise buildings, was contrasted with ashes three days after the new violence spread to the city. While the city awaits normalcy, several schools have been shut for the rest of the week, while employees in the multinational cooperation hub have been asked to work from home. You'll see houses locked everywhere. They're just locks on houses. People have left, hundreds of people have left, and there are just locks here outside because people have left out of fear. It is good to know that some people are saying the situation is peaceful, the police is giving them protection. So that is why the situation is getting better. But indeed, the fear that the violence has left in the minds of these people is unfortunately going to last a little longer than this, even after the police protection. And that's what we can see in these locked doors. In Haryana's Gurugram with camera person Manoj Thakur, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. Switching tracks now, the BJP has issued a whip for its MPs in the Lok Sabha for today with a discussion and voting on the Delhi Services Bill is expected. Meanwhile, Lok Sabha was adjourned on Wednesday amid ruckus, but this time by the Treasury bench. The discussion on the Delhi Services Bill was washed out. All this played out with the Speaker Om Birla missing from his chair in the House and Om Birla refused to come to the House through the day even though he was in the Parliament complex, expressing deep displeasure with both the ruling party and the opposition over the continued disruption of the Parliamentary activities. He said he would not attend the sessions until the lawmakers behave in keeping in mind with the dignity of the House. Meanwhile, the data protection bill is likely to be tabled today. And we have uh, Mega with us to get us more. Mega, the Lok Sabha Speaker, Om Birla, was notably absent from his chair yesterday. He said he won't attend the sessions now. The, what scope does that leave for Delhi's service bill, which is expected to come up today? Well, the Speaker, of course, uh, was angry uh, yesterday. You know, Divya, uh, saying that he didn't want to come and handle the affairs of the lower house till the time the MPs there start behaving. And he was, uh, he was targeting MPs both of Treasury benches as well as uh, of the opposition. Interestingly, yesterday it was uh, the BJP MPs who actually created so much of a ruckus in the House got adjourned. But before that, for nine continuous days, it's been the opposition MPs who've just not been listening to the Speaker. The Speaker appeals to them every single day, 11 o'clock when the session begins. He has the same words to say, uh, you know, appealing to them, requesting them to go back to their seats and not create a ruckus, to not scream inside the house to let the house function it's falling on all on deaf ears and so he was so upset yesterday that he said he didn't want to come inside the house and he didn't but one is hoping that he would be back because you know till the time speaker gets back to the house it'll be it'll be slightly difficult you know and then in, in, in such a situation where you are having to both uh, handle uh, uh, you know the way the house has been functioning in the sense that the ruckus that is being created you will need the speaker back in the chair uh, also because very important bills are still left to be taken care of, are still left to be debated, are still left to be introduced, are still left to be voted upon. So, you know, Speaker, of course, his uh, you know presence is going to be imperative. So one is only hoping that he would be back if he gets an assurance from these uh, Member of Parliament, at least in the Lok Sabha there, you know, that they would allow the House to function. Maybe he will change his mind. But, yeah, temporarily you could say that he was, he was so angry that he just didn't want to come to the House. Uh, having said that, today very important uh, again, uh, you know, in terms of legislative businesses because the data protection bill is expected to be introduced today by Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav. Apart from that, again, there is a whip today, uh, Devya, for uh, all the BJP MPs to be present. So uh, this is, of course, in connection uh, with the Delhi Ordinance Bill because the government is hoping that in the second half they would be able to have some sort of a discussion on it and then put it to vote. That is why everybody from the BJP has been asked to be present. The opposition also wants to make the point so yesterday when it was yesterday also there was a whip uh, for the BJP MPs and the opposition was uh, of the opinion that they would be uh, that they would 
you know, a debate would happen. So they had come prepared. Uh, possibly today also opposition might just, you know, let the House function around the time when the, when the Delhi Ordinance Bill comes in because they also want to make their statement. They want to be heard as far as this important bill is concerned because they are opposing it and their point of dissent has already been put forth by their side. Uh, so there are people who've been chosen from the side of the opposition parties to make their statements. That might happen today. Mr. Amit Shah would also speak. And then, of course, uh, if, that, if everything goes, you know, uh, smoothly in the lower house, then uh, most likely uh, the bill will be put to vote in Lok Sabha today. Right. Uh, well, Amiga, also the opposition parties have written to the Lok Sabha speaker on Wednesday requesting that the schedule for the no-confidence debate be advanced so that they can participate in the discussions on the bill. Well, the schedule has already been announced the 8th, 9th and 10th of uh, next week. That is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And Thursday is the day when the Prime Minister is expected to reply uh, to the no confidence motion in Lok Sabha. So uh, as far as the Speaker's office is concerned, and if you were to, uh, you know, understand how, why uh, this sort of a schedule was made, both from the Parliamentary Affairs uh, Minister's office and from the Speaker's office, uh, according to them, adequate time has been given. Uh, 8th, 9th and 10th. So you actually have two and a half days, uh, you know, for people, uh, for the parliamentarians to make their uh, statement and reply to the motion. So that gives enough and more time as what the Speaker's office also believes uh, to uh, just about every uh, member of parliament because you would have representations uh, from different pol political parties. At least one person from each political party would be given a chance to speak. Uh, well, this is a request that has gone in from the side of the opposition. Whether it is heeded to, we don't know because you have very little time actually left. You know, If you're scheduling it for next week, next week is the last week. Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday, so that gives you, and Friday is the, this the day that the Lok Sabha is supposed to be adjourned, sign a die, the parliament, I beg your pardon. So you just have one extra day in Monday, so whether they are going to pull it up, uh, we don't know, but yeah, that's a request that's gone in, the speaker's office to decide on that. Right, uh, thank you so much, Omega. We will keep tracking the story and coming back to you for more on that. Uh, Delhi services bill to come up in Lok Sabha today, and in a blow to Arvind Kejriwal centers uh, Delhi bill against another backer in TDP. We'll get you that and a whole lot more. For now, we're slipping into a very short break. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to up sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debate. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. 
with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech Welcome back. The Allahabad High Court is expected to rule today on whether a scientific survey by the government body ASI can happen inside the Gyanwapi Mosque or not. The survey was ordered by the Varanasi District Court on the 24th of last month based on a petition by four women who claim that the only way to determine if the landmark Varanasi Mosque was built after raising a Hindu temple is through a survey. The ASI did start a survey on the 24th of last month, but it was stayed within hours by the Supreme Court after the Mosque Committee approached it. The case was then taken up by the Allahabad High Court the next very day and the judgment has been reserved for today. The Mosque Committee has argued that the structure is over a thousand years old and by any sort of digging it might destabilize the structure and that it could also collapse. The committee also argues that any such survey is in violation of the existing laws around the religious areas. Now the ASI and lawyers for the women have said the survey is in no way intended to change the character of the mosque and there'll be no harm whatsoever to the structure in any way. We have my colleague Alok joining us uh, to get us more on this. Alok, how are things expected to play out at the Halabad High court today. Well, so the Allahabad High Court is expected to decide today whether that ASI survey that was ordered by the district court in Varanasi can proceed or not. Now, of course, just to recap for our viewers, uh, there was a petition that was filed by four women uh, in the Varanasi district court saying that the Gyanwapi mosque was built after raising a Hindu temple and that the only way to actually get to the truth was through a scientific survey conducted by the government body, the ASI. Now, the district judge, I think on the 21st of July, if I remember the date correctly, had actually ordered that ASI survey, of course, saying that an area that has been sealed previously on Supreme Court order should not be tinkered with. And uh, that survey was uh, ordered on Friday around 4 p.m. and the ASI started conducting that survey on Monday at about 7 a.m. in the morning. So the mosque committee had then approached the Supreme Court and basically said that, look, we've got no time for redressal and that we feel that any attempt to carry out a survey uh, inside the mosque may harm the structure. It's a very old structure. It may even collapse.
They also said that any attempt at a survey at the Gyanwapi Mosque is a violation of existing laws that call for status quo at religious places of worship. Uh, the ASI has given an affidavit both, both before the Supreme Court where the appeal went first and then the Supreme Court of course asked the Allahabad High Court to hear it while staying uh, the survey temporarily. Uh, in both courts, the mosque committee, uh, the mosque committee has made these arguments. While uh, the lawyers for the petitioners, which are the women, and also the ASI, have said that there will be no harm to the structure at all, and that they are going to take utmost care, and that there are no violation of laws. This is what the lawyers for the petitioners have said. So this is the crux of the argument. I know it's a simplified way to put it across. It's a very complex case with layers after layers, but this is what essentially the arguments are. So the Allahabad High Court is expected to decide today. I think it will be personally interesting for me to also see whether the Allahabad High Court, in case it does order the survey to go ahead, gives a window for redressal to the aggrieved party, or even if it doesn't, does it give some window for redressal? Because last time the complaint also was from the mosque, mosque committee that, look, the order came in on Friday. We had no time for redressal because Saturday and Sunday were court holidays. And then on Monday, 7 a.m., the survey did actually start. So all of these things are happening. The original Ganwapi case we are, of course, aware of where, you know, five... Uh, women have gone to court asking for year-long access to shrines inside the Gyanwapi Mosque complex uh, in uh, in Varanasi, which is a landmark mosque that is located right next to the equally uh, historical and important uh, Kashi Vishwanath Temple. Both are icons in Varanasi, but the Gyanwapi Mosque at the mid uh, at the moment in the middle of a dispute. Right, uh, Alok, we will keep tracking the story and coming back to you for more on that. Allahabad High Court to decide on the ASI survey. With that, we're slipping into a short break. Lots more coming up on the other side. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Undeniable, we're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. 
नेहरू प्लेस साकेत साकेत मुंबई टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी चलिए शुरू करते हैं NTTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NTTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology to ab sabhi ke paas hai, but what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav, aur ab main aagya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Welcome back. We have breaking news coming in at the moment. The mass burial of 35 Kuki dead bodies, which was to take place today, amidst a high security that had been beefed up in Chura Chandpur as well as Bishnupur, has now been postponed by five days. Methi groups had raised the question as far as the location of uh, the mass burial of the Kuki uh, community is concerned. And like I mentioned, security had been beefed up, but that now mass burial is has been postponed by five days, and this is on account of. Of a meeting that was held late last night, which went on till about four o'clock in uh, the morning. To get more details on this, we have my colleague Ratadeep uh, joining us. Uh, Ratadeep, uh, security was beefed up in Bishnupur and Chura Chandpur border as that mass burial of uh, 35 bodies was to take place uh, today. And it was the Meeti groups which were questioning as far as the location of the mass burial of the 35 bodies was concerned. Uh, but now that a decision has uh, been taken as far as that late night meeting that went around uh, for about four till about four o'clock in the morning along with the chief minister of mizoram also appealing for a postponement and now postponement has uh, that decision has been taken this is on direction of the mha the ministry of home affairs uh, that uh, the um, burial the mass burial of the 35 bodies will take place now 5 days from now so it has been postponed by 5 days Uh, uh, Ratadeep, uh, what brought about uh, this uh, postponement? Well, what we are picking up from uh, our sources within the tribal org uh, organization, uh, the Kuki Zomi organization, and Manipur government is that uh, ever since uh, uh, the indigenous tribal leaders forum declared that they would organize this mass burial at uh, uh, burial, uh, the you know uh, the uh, valley based uh, Imphal Valley based uh, Meti. Uh, Uh, civil society groups uh, like Kokomi, they had raised uh, their objections to the location where uh, this uh, uh, this burial was supposed to take place, claiming that uh, you know this is uh, this belongs to the Meiti people. And there was a uh, and even yesterday uh, there was heavy build up of security. The security in the area was beefed up, uh, and in fact volunteers uh, from the Kuki Zomi community they uh, entered the area to clear the area, uh, the burial ground, and they. Stayed there whole night, and there was also on the other side, on the Meiti side, there was a, uh, there was a protest. So there was a you know a fresh uh, you know tension building up in that area. That's what uh, you know uh, uh, security sources have told us. And this was reported to MHA, and what we are picking up is that MHA uh, in turn uh, uh, actually spoke to the uh, you know the uh, Kuki Zomi groups, and uh, they had requested uh, them to uh, postpone it by a few days so that. Uh, the this uh, entire uh, you know uh, claims and counter claims about the location of the burial uh, can be decided can be sorted out so that there is no there is no untoward incident and there is no fresh flare up uh, because of uh, this incident and in fact uh, therefore uh, uh, because of this you know uh, uh, program of mass burial and therefore uh, what uh, seems and in a statement uh, itlf has said that uh, 
keeping in mind the request from uh, Ministry of Home Affairs and Home Minister Amit Shah, they have decided to you know postpone it for five days. But they have uh, put uh, demands like you know they want uh, legalization of the right. burial site uh, uh, within uh, five days, and also they have requested that all uh, you know uh, state forces should be moved away from the uh, Kukizomi areas and uh, the uh, dead bodies of the Kukizomi tribe people who are there, uh, which are there in the morgue in uh, Imphal should be sent back to them. Uh, so these are the key demands that have been uh, placed uh, for MHA to decide upon as the uh, you know, burial, mass burial has been postponed by five days. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Ratnadi, for getting us all those details. Switching tracks now, uh, moving uh, towards uh, Himachal Pradesh now, and a landslide in the area has blocked the highway that connects Shimla to Chandigarh. Uh, this is in Himachal Pradesh, this is a Solan district. Uh, it has left many vehicles stranded, a large number of vehicles, including about 100 trucks laden with apples and pears, as well as buses, are stranded on both sides of the road. And this is because a 40 meter long highway has been washed away after landslides. And this is at the Chandigarh Shimla National Highway 5 near. Solon district. The supply of essential goods to Shimla and Solon have also been badly hit due to the blockage of the national highway. Men and machinery have been deployed at the damaged stretch and restoration works are underway. But what could add to the worry is that heavy rainfall is expected. It's likely to increase and isolated spells of very heavy showers are expected especially along the districts of Chamba, Kangra, Shimla, Kullu as well as areas of Solon where uh, the roads have been badly impacted due to that landslide. And moving on now to uh, the spotlight that's back on India. Foreign brokerages are uh, bullish on India. Morgan Stanley upgrades India to overweight and downgrades China to equal weight. An overweight rating is a simple term. That means that the brokerage firm believes that India will perform better in the future. Let's get you some more international news coming in and according to reports at least nine people have been killed on Wednesday in a police operation targeting criminal gangs in a complex of a slum of Rio de Janeiro, uh, the latest in a series of deadly security uh, force that raided across uh, Brazil. Uh, the Rio raid brought the death count from six days of police crackdowns on drug gangs in Brazil to at least 42, including 42. Uh, this is uh, about uh, 19 in the northeastern state of Bahia, uh, the Rio state police have said that the officers had returned fire after coming under attack during a raid on a meeting by organized crime bosses. The United States has ordered the partial evacuations of its embassy in Niger following last week's coup. Hundreds of foreign nationals have already been evacuated from the country and the French embassy was attacked by protesters on Sunday. The coup leader has warned against any interference in the internal affairs of the country. The US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has gone on to say that despite the partial evacuation, the country's embassy in the capital would remain open. And the police have an all clear at the U.S. Capitol complex on Wednesday, finding no gunmen or suspicious activities after a report of a possible active shooter that was most likely bogus. The U.S. Capitol Police Chief has gone on to say that after about 90 minutes of investigating, they allowed the workers in the three Senate office buildings adjacent to the U.S. Capitol to return to work. And Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his wife Sophie are separating after 18 years of being married. The couple said that they would remain a close family with deep love and respect in an Instagram post. They were married in Montreal in 2005 and have three children together. In a statement, Mr. Trudeau's office went on to say that while the couple had signed a separation agreement, they will still make public appearances. And the organizers of Germany's Wacken Open Air Heavy Metal Festival have stopped admissions to the event after heavy rain turned the grounds to mud. Although a sellout crowd of 85,000 was originally expected at the festival, only an estimated 50,000 people made it to the site. 
according to a statement on their website. This is the first time since the event was first held in 1990 that the organizers had to stop admissions. Bands expected to perform at the event running through Saturday included Iron Maiden as well as Halloween. A newly discovered whale that lived nearly 40 million years ago could be the heaviest animal to have ever lived based on a partial skeleton found in Peru. According to scientists on Wednesday, the modern blue whale has long been considered the largest and heaviest animal ever, beating all the giant dinosaurs of the distant past. Now, this is uh, the colossal whale from Peru that may have been even heavier according to a study that's been published in the journal Nature. Researchers calculated that the ancient giant weighed somewhere between 94 and 375 tons. The biggest blue whales found have been within that range at around 200 tons. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and centre. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers, part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chali.
Welcome back. Now, as temperature and humidity so we can't help but crave our favorite comfort food. And today we have Chetna Markan with us, all the way from the United Kingdom, with a monsoon special recipe curated just for NDTV viewers. Chetna is a cookbook author and a YouTuber. Let's see what she has in store for us. Shahrukh Khan, are you listening? Hi, I'm Chetna Markan, food writer, cookbook author and YouTuber and I'm here to share a special recipe with the NDTV viewers. I'll be cooking zucchini pakoras, a twist on the classic onion pakoras. As we're in the thick of monsoon season, I just wanted to make something that is easy, it's delicious, Moorish and the whole family will love it. So I'm just thinly slicing some onion and I'm going to grate one zucchini. I'm a fashion designer and I trained at NIF Mumbai and moved to the UK almost 20 years ago um, and around 10 years ago I took part on Great British Bake Off and I tried to incorporate Indian spices uh, with the British bake. So in these pakoras I've just added some salt, chilli powder, chaat masala and now I'm going to throw in some uh, besan gram flour. And there's no need to add any water to this. There's enough moisture in the zucchini that it binds it together. Often people think healthy food has to be boring and it's things that you have to count and it is dull, it's tasteless, but actually that's not the case. Our everyday Indian food is full of nutrition and it tastes amazing. And I'm just gonna Fry these in some um, oil. I'm using sunflower oil today. While these are frying, NDTV viewers have sent in some questions, so I'm going to answer those. What's the one childhood comfort food that's still a favorite? Easy one, aloo parathas. One overrated food trend according to you. I think I'm not really into food trends, but the food, uh, one of the things that I find overrated is chia seeds. I think they're just, um, yeah unnecessary given all the sunshine. Who is the primary guinea pig when you experiment with new recipes? Oh, super simple. I don't have to go far. It's my kids and my husband and a lot of times my friends too. A cooking tip that you swear by. Um, I think I always say this, whether you're making something very quick or something that takes a lot of time, just be patient because you see that um, it does affect what you're cooking. Name one Bollywood movie actor you would invite to cook with you. Shah Rukh Khan, are you listening? What is more fun, cooking for social media or for cookbooks? That's a very difficult one, but I do enjoy experimenting for the cookbooks and I really love uh, cooking for my YouTube channel. In case you want to check it out, it's called Food with Chetna. One British favorite dish that you would like to Indianize, desify. There are actually a couple, the roast chicken, which I already have desified. <laughs> uh, but the other one I would love to do is fish and chips. Here they are, zucchini pakoras with a piping hot cup of chai. Mm. So good. Hope you guys are going to enjoy these. If you want more delicious recipes, then please check out Chetna's Indian Feasts. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Brought to you by the NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you 
front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center, conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Haryana violence, uh, because of which a flag marches are being conducted in Nu. Those are visions on your screen of the rapid action force in Nu this morning. Internet services continue to be banned in Nu in Faridabad, Palwal, as well as subdivisions of Gurugram, which includes Manesar as well as Sona. Alabad High Court to decide on the ASI survey today as far as the Gyan Wapi uh, case is concerned. And that's coming up in the High Court this morning. The ASI survey ordered by the Varanasi Court was stayed by the Supreme Court last month. And the court to decide the legality of the survey at the Gyan Wapi Mosque today. Mass burial of uh, 35 cookie dead bodies has now been postponed for now. It was to take place today and security had been beefed up in the area. The Methi groups are questioning the location of the mass burial. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav to move the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill in Lok Sabha today. Uh, the Data Protection Bill is now a money bill. The Rajya Sabha MPs can only make non-binding recommendations and the BJP issues a whip for its MPs in the Lok Sabha for today. A discussion on the Delhi Service Bill is also coming up in the Lok Sabha today. A landslide in Himachal Pradesh blocks the highway connecting Shimla to Chandigarh. A large number of vehicles, including 100 trucks laden with apples and pears, as well as buses, are stranded on both sides of the road.
A very good morning. You're watching NDTV 24 7. I'm Divya Vadwa. Let's get you the latest from Haryana, where flag marches were conducted early this morning in Nu. The Rapid Action Force uh, conducted a flag march in Nu today, a similar situation that we saw in Bajapur yesterday. Now, the Haryana government has said that mobile internet as well as SMS services in Nu and some other places in the state will remain suspended till the 5th of August. So, internet services remain suspended in areas of Nu as well as adjoining areas of Faridabad and Palwal along with a territorial jurisdiction of the subdivision of Sona, Patodi and Manesar of the Gurugram district. Now, this comes at a time when the Haryana government has formed a three-member panel to monitor the social media as far as the posts and fake videos are concerned as per the Home Ministry of Haryana. Now, tensions seem to be easing in the violent hit areas of Haryana, while Haryana's chief minister has gone on to say that they are adding uh, police forces in the area. But it's not possible for the police to protect every person in a state and has appealed to the people to remain peaceful and in order to maintain the peace and calm as well as the harmony in the state. He went on to say if there's no amity, there's no security, and if everybody insists on opposing each other, there's no security. It's not possible for the police, the army, or for you and I to protect each and every person. So far, 116 people have been arrested and 190 people have been detained. <laughs> I come to you from the Palra village in Gurugram where migrant workers continue to leave. Many of them say that they live in constant fear. That is why they're going back to their hometowns. Many of them are from Assam, uh, border areas of West Bengal, and they're all going back to their homes. They say that uh, till the time there's police, they feel safety, but otherwise they're living in a constant sense of fear. Let's get a sense from some of these people. Sir, tell us your name. Yes, sir. Sir, tell us, you all are taking your own stuff here. What is the reason for you to leave everything here? Sir, the reason is that we were here. There was no problem. There was no problem. At about 10-11 o'clock, उसी टाइम कुछ बंदा आया था बीस तीस ऐसा होगा आके थोड़ा गाली गुलिस किया करा सब यहाँ से जाओ मतलब हिंदू मुसलमान वाली बात आ गया था हम लोग यहाँ से डर के चले गया था फिर वो लोग चार इतने दिन कहाँ रहे आप लोग आसपास में इधर उधर छप्पन इधर छत्तावन सेक्टर इधर रह रहा था फिर वो लोग बोला चार बजे फिर आऊँगा आया था प्रशासन भी आया था प्रशासन कम से कम पचास साठ प्रशासन भी आया था प्रशासन से वो लोग थोड़ा बहसबाजी किया प्रशासन कह रहा कोई दिक्कत नहीं कोई परेशानी नहीं हम लोग हैं तुम लोग रोटी बनाओ खाओ दाओ मस्त करो तो अब अब इसके बाद उसके जब परसों की आप बात कर रहे हैं उसके बाद फिर से कोई ऐसा इंसिडेंट हुआ जिसमें लोग आप यहाँ पर तमाम अनवेरिफाइड ऐसे वीडियोस भी सामने हैं कि कल कुछ मारपीट हुई यहाँ पर कल कल कुछ हुआ था लेकिन हम था नहीं हम हम कहीं और था अभी आया मैंने कल कुछ बंदा उधर था तो कुछ मारपीट हुआ कल कल मारपीट हुआ जी जी पुलिस किस तरीके से सेफ्टी यहाँ पर क्या पुलिस थी लगातार यहाँ पर लोग जी जी पुलिस बहुत हम लोग को सर्दी की थी क्या बहुत हेल्प किया लेकिन क्या कारण है कि आप लोग देखि� मनोज जी फिर क्या आल्सो शो देम कि आप पूरा पूरा सामान जो जो आपके पास था यहाँ पर सब कुछ लेकर जा रहे हैं जा रहा हूँ क्यों कहाँ जा रहे हैं बंगाल जा रहा हूँ अपना अलगा जा रहा हूँ घर जा रहा हूँ क्यों यहाँ तो हमारे पास कोई है ही नहीं ऐसा कोई पुलिस वाला था ठीक है लेकिन किस कितने टाइम तक रहेगा पुलिस जितना जित जितने टाइम पुलिस वाला है उतने टाइम उम्मीद है कि वापस आ पाएंगे यहाँ पर कभी कुछ अभी सोचा है कि इतने तो डर हमारे अंदर है अभी तो उम्मीद नहीं है जो हम लोग आएंगे और आप पूरी फैमिली के साथ जा रहे हैं पूरी फैमिली के साथ कौन कौन है आपकी फैमिली हमारा बच्चा था बच्चा मैंने भेज दिया फैमिली था सब देखो फैमिली वाला है यहाँ जितनी है सब कोई कुटी में काम करता है कोई ऑफिस में काम करता है कोई कबाड़ा बिलने वाला काम करता है सब यही है हम लोग का and uh, as you can see here, uh, they've uh, packed all of their stuff, whatever they had, and they're uh, loading all of it into cars and trucks, and they're leaving for their homes. They say that when there's police, they do feel a sense of uh, uh, security and safety. But because of uh, repeated such incidents, yesterday also, as many of these people say, there was another uh, incident of violence where a couple of them were actually beaten up. Uh, let's also get in a sense from some people here. Sir, your name is दिलीप कुमार पांडे यहाँ पर आप देख रहे हैं सर कि ये लोग अपना पूरा सामान बांध कर जा रहे हैं कहीं ना कहीं सबके लिए ये 
And breaking news coming in, uh, well, the Allahabad High Court has taken up the case today of the ASI survey at the Gyanwapi Mosque and has allowed the survey. The, let's just listen in to what the lawyer had to say. The case was that by ASI survey, the structure damage will be damaged. The argument has been rejected by the court. And the court has rejected the court's petition of 227. So today's impact is that the ASI survey will start from the time of the time. Mr. Lakshan, what do you think about the case of the case of the case? बिल्कुल आगे के लिए मार्ग प्रशस्त हो गया है क्योंकि अंजुमन इंतजामिया का आर्गुमेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट में यही था कि हमें हाई कोर्ट जाने का मौका नहीं मिला तो हाई कोर्ट ने उनको पूरा सुना और सुनने के बाद जो उनकी एप्लीकेशन थी उनकी पेटिशन थी उसको रिजेक्ट कर दिया और साथ ही साथ जो डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट का फैसला था उसको तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी कर दिया जितने भी जितने भी इंट्रीम ऑर्डर थे स्टे के सारे स्टे ऑर्डर वेकेट कर दिए को तोड़ने की या नहीं एस आई ने एस आई ने एफिडेविट दिया था क्लियर टर्म्स में की बिना क्षति पहुँचाई हुए हम सर्वे करेंगे तो आज हम भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में रहेंगे अगर वो जाएंगे तो तो जाएंगे तो हम भी रहेंगे और ये जो सप्लीमेंट्री हम भी अपनी बात सुप्रीम कोर्ट में रखेंगे देखिए कोई आदमी किसी पक्षकार को कोर्ट जाने से नहीं रोक सकता ये उनका राइट है वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाए हम भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में मौजूद रहेंगे पर जो इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट का आज फैसला आया है इसमें बहुत क्लियर टर्म्स में कह दिया कि स्ट्रक्चर को कोई डैमेज नहीं होने वाला है उनका जो सबसे मेजर आर्ग्यूमेंट था कि स्ट्रक्चर डैमेज होगा वो ए भी कह चुकी है और इलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट ने आज उसमें मोहर लगा क्या फैसला हुआ हाईकोर्ट में क्या क्या कहना चाहिए देखिए आज इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने जो अंजुमन इंतजामिया की पेटिशन थी उसको खारिज कर दिया है और साथ ही साथ इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने यह कह दिया है कि आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया द्वारा सर्वेक्षण शुरू होना चाहिए और डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट का जो फैसला है वो तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी हो चुका है जिस तरह से तमाम बातें हो रही थी कि ऐसा ही क्षति पहुंचाएगा और ऐसा नहीं है कोर्ट ने उसको डिसबिलीव किया और हमारे पूरे आर्ग्यूमेंट को कोर्ट ने मान लिया है जो हमारा पूरा आर्गुमेंट था वो यही था कि बिना डैमेज किए सर्वे किया जाएगा एएसआई ने भी एफिडेविट फाइल किया था तो कोर्ट ने कहा एएसआई के एफिडेविट को उसको डिसबिलीव करने का कोई मतलब नहीं बनता है और एएसआई ने जो एफिडेविट फाइल किया उसके टर्म्स में सर्वे हो शुरू से आप लगे हुए कैसे देखते हैं इसके फर्दर प्रोसीडिंग किस तरह से होगी देखिये मुझे लगता है सर्वे शुरू होना चाहिए और जो भी बात है सच या झूठ जो भी है वो कोर्ट के सामने आना चाहिए माना जाए सेशन कोर्ट जो बनारस में हुआ था वो सेम जो है वो लागू होगा आपसे सेशन कोर्ट का ऑर्डर इन टोटो अपहोल्ड कर दिया है ऑनरेबल इलाहाबाद हाईकोर्ट ने और ये भी लिखा है की सेशन कोर्ट का ऑर्डर तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी है मेरे साथ Big breaking story that we are tracking this morning. The High Court has essentially given a nod for the ASI survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque to continue. This is uh, uh, a, a verdict at the moment that has far reaching consequences. Uh, we will break this story down for you as we go along. But first, I want to go across uh, to Alok Pandey, who's been tracking the details of these developments. So, Alok, earlier than expected, it does appear that the Allahabad High Court at the moment has pronounced a verdict according to which. The survey of the Gyanwapi Mosque, as per the Archaeological Survey of India, will be allowed to continue. All right, we've lost that line with Alok. We'll go across to him in just a moment, but this is a big breaking story that we're tracking. The Allahabad High Court has allowed the Archaeological Survey of India to conduct a survey of the Gyanwapi Mosque complex in Varanasi. Remember, this was uh, stayed, and uh, the Supreme Court had asked the parties to go to the Allahabad High Court. So the Supreme Court had given a stay on the ASI survey uh, after the mosque committee appealed in the Supreme Court against a lower court order allowing for the ASI survey to take place. Uh, the Allahabad High Court now has uh, removed that stay and in a sense said that the Archaeological Survey of India can carry on their survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque. Uh, the High Court has given a nod. It remains to be seen whether the Mosque Committee now will once again knock on the doors of the Supreme Court. What really is going to be their legal strategy going forward? All of those are questions at the moment that still need to be answered. But what we do know is uh, that as per the latest information coming in, um, the issue of commission is permissible. That's what uh, uh, the High Court has said. Varanasi 
कोर्ट ऑर्डर वाज जस्टिफाइड आगे मार्ग प्रशस्त हो चुका है ए सर्वे बहुत बड़ा अचीवमेंट है अलाउ होना और हमें लगता है कि कल पिछले जो पिछली सुनवाई हुई थी आप ही की तरफ से तस्वीरें रखी गई थी कोर्ट में हाँ हाँ क्या कुछ तारीख तय की गई है समय निर्धारित किया गया सर्वे शुरू होगा सर्वे का अभी तो जजमेंट उन्होंने चीफ साहब ने पूरा ऑनरेबल चीफ जस्टिस ने नहीं पढ़ा है जजमेंट हम देखेंगे लेकिन सर्वे अलाउ हो गया तो आज शाम से हो सकता है कल सुबह से हो सकता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाने की बात कर रहा है नहीं नहीं वो देखिए देखिए चीफ जस्टिस साहब ने ऑर्डर को डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज के ऑर्डर को रिस्टोर कर दिया है और रिस्टोर कर दिया तो सीधे सीधे बात है कि सर्वे आज से शाम से हो सकता है कल सुबह से हो सकता है अब रहे मस्जिद कमेटी के पास तो उनके पास सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाने का ऑप्शन है आलोक पांडे नाउ जॉइन्स अस विद द वेरी लेटेस्ट सो आलोक द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैड पुट अ स्टे ऑन द एएसआई सर्वे दैट अपीयर्स टू नाउ हैव बीन रिवोक्ड इन अ सर्टेन सेंस बाय द अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट व्हिच हैज प्रोनाउंस्ड इट्स वर्डिक्ट एंड गिवन अ नॉड फॉर द आर्कियोलॉजिकल इंडिया आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया टू गो अहेड एंड कैरी आउट द ज्ञानवापी मॉस सर्वे uh well yes you are actually uh, uh, you are you are you are totally right i'm sorry you're totally right uh, i think uh, it would be prudent for us to wait uh, to see the detailed uh, order from the allahabad high court before we look at the reasoning about why the allahabad high court has overruled the mos committee and said that the survey can go ahead but yes what we can certainly confirm uh, is that the chief justice uh, of the allahabad high court has ordered uh, that the survey at the ganwapi mosque uh, in varanasi can go ahead uh the lawyer for uh, the petitioners which are the women he said he appeared to say that you know uh, the si survey order now gets effective immediately meaning that a survey can perhaps uh, start immediately that's something that uh, the lawyer said but we'll have to read the fine print obviously uh, beyond that i think as we look at more aspects of the order uh, it's also uh, it may also be prudent for us to just look at what the dispute actually is and how it has panned out so uh, in effect uh, this petition was one asking for an asi survey at the ganwapi mosque because uh, uh, four women who were part of the original ganwapi litigation too they approached the district court in varanasi basically saying that uh, a survey a scientific survey of the ganwapi mosque is needed uh, because uh, they believe that the structure of the mosque was built after raising a hindu temple and they say that the only way to get to the truth is to actually go and uh, carry out a scientific survey in those parts uh, now on the 21st of july the varanasi district court said it agreed with this petition by the four women and that an asi survey should actually be carried out at the mosque in the interests of swift justice in the case uh after that uh, this order was passed on friday on a friday at about 4:30 pm and right after that two days later and there were two court holidays in the interim uh, on monday morning that asi survey did start uh it did it could go on only for a few hours because after that the mosque committee uh, approached the supreme court of india for urgent relief and the relief that was granted to them was uh, a temporary stay on uh, the csi survey and the supreme court asked the mosque committee to go to the lahabad high court which would be the next higher jurisdiction in the case uh so the mosque committee did approach the lahabad high court uh, hearings went on for two days if i remember the dates correctly it was the 26th and the 27th of july Uh, there was a wide uh, range of arguments and i'll also just recap those arguments for the benefit of our viewers uh, the mosque committee argued before the lahabad high court rishika that any such survey would cause damage to the structure it was a historical structure and it could even come down and that is something that obviously is in nobody's interest uh, the second thing that they said was that uh, any such survey at uh the ganwapi mosque uh, in varanasi would actually be in contravention of existing laws uh, which uh, which asks for status quo at the place of at a religious place of worship as on the day of independence uh the other side argued which is the which are the lawyers for the petitioners they argued that look uh, the asi is a very professional agency and they are saying on record that there is going to be no damage at all uh, to the structure and this is something that we should believe they also said that any kind of survey at the ganwapi mosque could not be in contravention of any uh, laws as such because there is no attempt to change the character of the place of worship by carrying out uh, the survey so they, those were broadly the arguments that happened uh, before the lahabad high court the court had done had then reserved the verdict for today initially uh, we had been told that the verdict would perhaps come at 2 uh, in the afternoon but i think uh, you know in the interest of giving time to the aggrieved party to approach a higher court which then 
uh, in this case would perhaps be the Supreme Court, Rishika. Uh, I think the judgment has come early in the morning. Uh, so one waits to see how this pans out. Now, I mean, I don't think we should speculate on this, and this is not the first time a survey is happening at the Gyanwafi Mosque anyway. But nevertheless, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that perhaps the SI will start its survey right now. Uh, the other possibility is that the Mosque Committee will immediately approach the Supreme Court. So I think we have to kind of uh, look out for both possibilities. But broadly, uh, broadly, this is uh, what has happened before the Allahabad High Court. And uh, the survey at the Gyanwafi Mosque, which was... Uh, uh, which was uh, uh, which was stalled or stayed after the intervention of the Supreme Court has now been allowed uh, by the Allahabad High Court. How things pan out uh, in the next few days is, of course, something that one will have to uh, watch very closely. Yes, and I think it's important, Alok, to also highlight, like you said, you know, the historical context of this. While you've broken down the timeline of developments, um, according to, uh, you know, the reports that we've been carrying, there was a 30-member ASI team which was at that site. Remember when the Supreme Court actually put a stay on this particular survey, the survey had already begun. The Mosque Committee appealed to the Supreme Court to halt this survey, after which the Supreme Court said that the Mosque Committee must appeal to the Allahabad High Court. And till the Allahabad High Court doesn't deliberate on this, the Supreme Court had specified that no survey activity will be conducted. It's also important to note that the Mosque Committee had decided to boycott the survey altogether. Alok, what's going to be their legal strategy going forward? Will they go back to the Supreme Court immediately? All of those are questions that need to be answered. We also don't have clarity on what the fine print of the Allahabad High Court order is at the moment. So we don't know when this survey will actually uh, commence, if at all. But according to the Allahabad High Court, they have essentially vindicated the stance of what the Varanasi court had already said, which is that allow this survey to happen. No survey will, of course, happen at the Vazukhana. That's going to be excluded from the ambit of the survey. And uh, from whatever we've heard, prima facie, the reactions of the lawyers from the Allahabad High Court, uh, they, they appear to say that, you know, now either the Mosque Committee goes to the Supreme Court almost immediately or else, almost immediately, the survey might just be allowed to continue, which is, you know, as early as, as whenever is possible, Alok. Yeah, I think uh, the next few steps are in a flux, but uh, again, like I said, this is not really the first time a survey is going to happen at Gyanwapi. So while we in the media sometimes tend to go overboard with these surveys and what is happening, uh, what actually happens on the ground, uh, Rishika, is really this, that you stand outside the Gyanwapi temple, a survey team enters, you film that entering, then you film that coming out, and then uh, at least earlier there have been this leak and that leak, etc., etc. So that is how the process goes on on the ground, you know. So, uh, I mean, beyond all the excitement that is built, uh, this is what the actual uh, situation, uh, this is how the actual situation pans out on the ground. But nevertheless, it's an right. important judgment. It's an important, uh, you know, it's an important timeline in this entire dispute. And like you said, you've already given us uh, the broad-based contours of how things have panned out in the last some time. Yes. Uh, in terms of Alok, options stay ahead, on. yes, you are Alok, right. You know, there on, can be two options. With us One because, have... Alok, stay on with us because we have Deshata Nigam joining us on the broadcast. Thanks very much uh, for speaking with NDTV. Uh, uh, Mr. Nigam, if you could just put on your legal hat and break down for our viewers what essentially has the Allahabad High Court said. We're still awaiting uh, the copy of the final judgment, but the Supreme Court essentially had stopped the Gyan Vapi Mosque survey shortly after it began. Uh, but it does appear that the Allahabad High Court has in fact quashed the challenge that was filed by the Mosque Committee. Yes, in fact, uh, once the challenge by the uh, Gyan Vapi Structure Committee uh, by the Allahabad High Court clearly made the survey as directed by the district court will continue. And that's a scientific survey and they will uh, cover the entire structure apart from that particular area which they call it Vizukhana, which has been sealed by the Supreme Court. The survey will go on unless uh, it is challenged by the uh, Mosque Committee in the Supreme Court and Supreme Court intervenes. That is the present situation. Otherwise, if uh, Allahabad High Court, it appears, has not found any merit in the contentions uh, raised by the Mosque Committee because this is about uh, uncovering the truth, which actually can be seen by anybody. Even a blind person can see that it was a Hindu temple. And uh, the Islamic records also prove that it was a temple which was raised by uh, Aurangzeb and uh, uh, a structure was built on top of it under Islam. Such kind of structures cannot be considered as a mosque. Even the Muslims know about it and they do admit 
Mr. Nigam, uh, Mr. Nigam, let's not jump to conclusions. That's your opinion and I respect it. But as a lawyer, I wanted to understand from you, uh, you know, it's interesting because the Supreme Court stepped in pretty heavily when they stopped the survey shortly after it had actually started. And they said that the survey will be in abeyance till the Allahabad High Court has not deliberated on this. Uh, what is the timeline now going forward? You know, what are the larger implications of of the archaeological uh, survey of India, the, the survey that is going to be carried out by experts? See, the intervention by the Supreme Court was only interim till they challenged it in the Allahabad High Court. There was nothing called heavy or light. It was Allahabad High Court's jurisdiction and they said go there. In the meantime, they said nothing would happen. So yes. far as the survey is concerned. But and if the Moss uh, Committee, if the, since, since the, since the Allahabad High Court has essentially upheld what the Varanasi Court said, uh, you know, can the Moss Committee say almost immediately go back to the Supreme Court perhaps and uh, uh, and ask them to address this matter again? How does this play out legally? Legally, they have a right to go and challenge the Supreme Court and uh, the maintainability is all, already pending in the Supreme Court. So they probably they will go and mention it today itself once the, they receive the copy. And uh, the implications are... Uh, as good uh, or as fortunate for the Hindus as it was in Ram Mandir, but there also such kind of a scientific survey was done and a lot of things were unearthed there. Yes. That was a very difficult case you know, because everything was underground. Right, right. I want to also very briefly, uh, Mr. Nigam, ask you, and we know we've had several conversations around the Places of Worship Act 1991 and how, you know, that is a very crucial question as far as the law is concerned here, isn't it? Uh, you know, as somebody who understands this better than most, can you explain to our viewers where does this particular issue stand with respect to the Places of Worship Act 1991? See, there are two or three points. Places of Worship, uh, Worship Act 1991 does not prohibit the determination of nature of the religious places for which the scientific survey is going on. Now, second question is whether the nature of uh, religious uh, place can be changed or not. There itself is an exception in Section 4, Subsection 3, in the Places of Worship Act. If the uh, monument is an ancient monument or an archaeological site under the ancient uh, historical monument and archaeological site act of 1958, then Places of Worship Act will not apply. Even otherwise, that act is under challenge, it's pending in the Supreme Court. And, and uh, once probably it is caught by the Supreme Court or upheld, then the, the different consequences would arrive. But that exception, as I told you, of the ancient monument and historical uh, site act 1958 would also come into play. Right. Uh, do stay on with us, Mr. Nigam. I want to get in a perspective from Tehseen Poonawala as well. Uh, Tehseen Poonawala, the Supreme Court of India had stopped the survey from taking place and asked the Moss Committee to appeal to the Allahabad High Court. The Allahabad High Court now has upheld what the district court said and has allowed for the ASI survey of the Gyan Vapi Moss to carry on. Your first reaction. So, you bowed off before the majesty of the Allahabad High Court. But I am sure that this judgment will be challenged in the Honorable Supreme Court. And uh, I haven't read the judgment in totality on what grounds has it been allowed, how has it been allowed. But uh, we should have a look at what the, what the court says and uh, let the matter go to the Honorable Supreme Court. I'm sure it's going to be challenged by either party would have challenged it in the Honorable Supreme Court. Right. Uh, but do you look at this as, uh, as a setback? Because, uh, like I said, the Supreme Court was pretty clear they had given instructions that no survey will be carried out until and unless the Allahabad High Court has deliberated on this. The survey had actually started, remember, when the Supreme Court actually uh, came down pretty heavily and said that no survey activity will be carried out. The survey had to be halted until and unless the Allahabad High Court deliberated on it. So how is it a setback? The Honorable Supreme Court gave a judgment. That judgment has been followed. The Honorable Allahabad High Court and whoever has an objection to this uh, judgment, whichever side, in this case, uh, I believe it will be the, the mosque side, they will challenge it in the Honorable Supreme Court. So I don't see why uh, a legal issue should be made into a political or religious issue. This is an issue between two, between two parties and it will take the course of uh, law. I don't see why there is such a... Such a such a huge issue about it. Those it's from the it's ironic, from the, from the, it's from ironic that you say why legal issue should be made a political one given the wide ranging political contours of this particular story. Do stay on with us because speaking of politics, the deputy chief minister of Uttar Pradesh has reacted to these developments. Let's listen in. 
माननीय उच्च न्यायालय के आदेश का हृदय से स्वागत करता हूं और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि एएसआई के सर्वे के माध्यम से सच्चाई बाहर आएगी और ज्ञानव्यापी का जो विवाद है श्री राम जन्मभूमि विवाद की तरह इसका भी निर्णय होगा निस्तारण होगा और शिव भक्तों की जो मनोभावना है मनोकामना है वो पूर्ण होगी सर कहा जा रहा है सर ऐसा ही सर अच्छा के बाद सत्य की जीत होगी सर इसको किस तरह नहीं मैं बस इतना ही कह रहा हूँ कि आज माननीय उच्च न्यायालय ने जो एस को सर्वे का आदेश दिया है उसका स्वागत करता हूँ और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि सर्वे के माध्यम से जो मुगल आक्रमणकारियों ने मंदिर का विध्वंस किया था और उसको छिपाया गया था वो सच बाहर आएगा बाकी अभी मामला न्यायालय के समक्ष विचाराधीन है और जो भी निर्णय आएगा जब भी आएगा उसका हम स्वागत करेंगे Let's go right back to Alok Pandey joining us. So Alok, very interesting because we, we just had Tehsin Poonawala talk about why make this a political issue when it is a legal one and you have uh, a pretty strong reaction there coming in from the Deputy Chief Minister who's talking about how the aspirations of Shiv Bhakts uh, would hopefully be realised at the end of this and how he's expecting a Ram Janma Bhumi type of verdict as far as uh, Gyan Vapi is concerned. Uh, well, uh, if it were merely just a legal issue in the minds of our politicians and of our lawyers and of us, then perhaps you and I would not be discussing it right now. But uh, it certainly is much more politically also important for the BJP. That is why you have the deputy chief minister actually reacting. Uh, I'd also like to remind you and our viewers that uh, just uh, two or three days ago, the chief minister, Mr. Adityanath, also uh, gave an interview to ANI, the news agency, and he made a, made a host of... Uh, comments that you know one could perhaps judge as contentious uh, given that these co uh, cases are still in courts there's been no uh, decision on them yet but he said that anyone with any eyesight would know that you know this is not a mosque etc etc i don't want to repeat all of those comments but uh, uh, this case has been much more than just a legal issue and uh, that is why you have a host of these reactions coming in that is why you have a lot of the hype being built around this uh, it's a decades old dispute you know it's not a new dispute it's, it didn't start in 2021 in fact uh, you know all of us know that uh, this dispute has been uh, one of the three uh, including ayodhya and mathura that the bjp uh, did uh, utilize or rake up in a big matter in the early 90s and uh, you know uh, at least the Ram Janma Bhumi issue is uh, a catalyst in their rise to power in India. Uh, so uh, this is at the end of the day uh, a big issue uh, across the board but uh, I think yes the jury will be out on whether it is as emotive an issue as the Ram Janma Bhumi. Uh, nevertheless we heard what the Deputy Chief Minister said. Uh, in terms of legality I think what the Haseen was saying was also very important the fact that uh, there is likely to be a challenge that is uh, going to be mounted to this in the Supreme Court. I wouldn't be surprised if it is done today itself. Uh, I have not been able to find out yet whether the survey is going to begin right now at the ASI, uh, at the Kyanwapi Mosque or is it going to take some time. Also the fine, fine print of the Chief Justice's order has he given some time uh, for that appeal and said that you know it's going to start after that yes. or as the lawyer for the women was saying, Mr. Jan was saying that the, that the district court's order is effective immediately. So those are things that we await clarity on. Right, several questions there that need to be answered in terms of how the modalities of this order are going to work out. But like I said, political reactions already coming in even before we have a copy of the order to actually understand, uh, uh, you know, what it means. When is the survey going to begin? Is the Mosque Committee now going to be, uh, uh, you know, knocking on the doors of the Supreme Court once again? All of those are questions that need to be answered. But Alok, uh, you know, if I can just come back to you, you were there in Varanasi on the day that this uh, uh, the survey actually began, after which, of course, it was stopped uh, with the Supreme Court intervention. Um, how many members of the you know ASI team were there? Uh, what is what are the broad contours of the survey? What are the modalities of the survey that you can share with us? What's the timeline? Because according to what the Varanasi court had said, the it was the the report of the survey, the scientific report was supposed to have been submitted by the fourth of August, if I'm not wrong. Those timelines clearly now stand uh, you know changed. Well, you're not wrong at all. Uh, that's absolutely the timeline that was put in place uh, by the Varanasi court. But obviously, like you said, that's not going to be followed. I will also point out that I was not only there when this survey started, I was there when the earlier survey started also. 
so I'm very much familiar with how uh, these things happen, not with what happens inside because the reporters or uh, the media won't be allowed inside. I mean, the, uh, the fact that we are outside and so much happens, imagine if we were allowed inside, what would happen? But nevertheless, uh, the, the survey, I think there was the 40 member team that uh, went inside the Gyanwafi Mosque the last time, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, that survey was uh, carried out on the 24th of July, if I remember correctly. Uh, the exact scientific modalities, I wouldn't know, but uh, from the affidavit that the ASI filed before the Lahabad High Court, it does seem that they are not going to carry out any excavations, at least that is something that they have said, and they are going to use very advanced technology to scan the entire area, you know, to image the entire area and to come to a picture about, uh, you know, I mean, for the want of a better expression like, uh, right now, what lies beneath? Because something would certainly lie beneath. I mean, uh, it, it could be rubble, it could be, as the petitioners say, the ruins of a Hindu temple, or it could be nothing. But nevertheless, that is what the ASI is mandated to do. And, uh, you know, the scientific modalities of how they will do it, I don't think uh, I'm the proper person to, you know, actually talk about that because I frankly don't know. Uh, but nevertheless, they do say that they will use the most advanced technology and ensure that uh, there's going to be no harm uh, to the mosque structure at all. Right, which was one of the main concerns uh, that was raised by the mosque committee uh, when they appealed to the Supreme Court. So in that challenge petition, they had in fact said that they fear that the actual structure, uh, you know, may be damaged because of this particular survey. Uh, Alok, we're going to leave it at that for now. Thanks very much for joining us with the latest updates. We'll, of course, wait for uh, uh, a copy of the Allahabad High Court judgment to better be able to break down for you what this verdict essentially means. But it is a big verdict by the Allahabad High Court, which has essentially reversed what the Supreme Court had said. The Supreme Court had put in place a stay on the survey till the Allahabad High Court deliberated on it. The Allahabad High Court has now pronounced its verdict, uh, giving permission for the archaeological survey of India to carry out a survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque. A scientific survey will be carried out to unearth the historical significance of what lies there. The Vazukhana, of course, continues to be excluded from the ambit of the survey. We're going to slip into a very short break. We'll bring you more details on this big story on the other side. Don't go anywhere. With the NDTV News Network that informs, inspires and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Namaskar, this is Amitabh Bachchan. Welcome in our journey towards good health for all Indians. Banega Swast India Season 9, brought to you by NDTV and Dettol. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV.
TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, 
We bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. Welcome back. You're watching NDTV 24-7, the big breaking story that we're tracking for you. The Allahabad High Court has allowed for uh, the ASI survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque to take place. This after the Supreme Court, remember, had put a permanent, uh, a temporary stay, an interim stay, I beg your pardon, in place and asked the mosque committee, which had filed a challenge to the ASI survey in the Supreme Court, to first go and knock on the doors of the Allahabad High Court. So the Allahabad High Court essentially maintaining what the Varanasi court, upholding what the Varanasi court had said, has allowed for the ASI survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque to take place. The judgment is not yet out. We don't yet have a copy of the judgment, uh, so we can't break down the finer modalities of what the Allahabad High Court has said. But what is clear is that the Archaeological Survey of India has now been permitted to go out and carry out the scientific survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque apart from that Bazukhana area which will not be surveyed. Now remember in the challenge petition that the Muslim committee had filed with the Supreme Court, they argued that uh, the ASI survey could potentially damage the structure. This is remember an old structure but uh, the Supreme Court while at that time had heard um, uh, the mosque committee petition and had stayed the survey even after it had already started. Um, the final ball was of course thrown in the court of the Allahabad High Court which is now allowed for this survey to take place. So that's the broad contours of what has happened in this new uh, development. Let's quickly listen in to the reactions that are coming in and then uh, we'll get you some expert voices to analyze this development. You know that in the Gyanwapi Masjid case, the Varanasi court had given the ASI survey in July in July in July. और उसके खिलाफ मुस्लिम साइड ने सुप्रीम कोर्ट में एक पेटिशन 24 जुलाई को फाइल किया और सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने 26 जुलाई तक सर्वे पर रोक लगाई और अलाबाद हाई कोर्ट में अलाबाद हाई कोर्ट से रुझू करने का ऑर्डर दिया और अलाबाद हाई कोर्ट में के सामने बात रखी गई और आज अलाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने सर्वे की इजाजत दे दी है और जाहिर सी बात है कोर्ट का ऑर्डर है उस पर अमल किया जाएगा लेकिन मुस्लिम साइड यही चाहता था कि ये जो हमारी तकरीबन 600 साल पुरानी मस्जिद है उसमें किसी किस्म की कोई खुदाई ना की जाए तो कोर्ट ने मालूमात के हिसाब से उसमें खुदाई करने की बिल्कुल भी इजाजत नहीं दी है खुदाई करने से मना किया है और हम लोगों का एक जाहिर सी बात है केस ऑलरेडी चल रहा है प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप एक्ट को ले करके और यह कानून इसीलिए बना था कि जितनी भी प्लेसेस हैं वर्शिप की उनका जो स्टेटस 15 अगस्त 1947 को था वो मेंटेन रहे हम लोग सब यही चाहते हैं कि इस कानून का पूरी कड़ाई से इस पर अमल किया जाए जिससे कि आप कभी किसी भी इबादतगाह को लेके कोई कंट्रोवर्सी ना हो क्या मुस्लिम साइड जो और भी अदालत सुप्रीम कोर्ट में भी इसको चैलेंज करेगा हाई कोर्ट के इस फैसले को all right, we in fact also have a reaction uh, from uh, the petitioner that is coming in. We'll go uh, to that reaction. All right, we'll go to that reaction in just a bit. All right, Khalid Rashid and Kapil Madan are both joining us on the phone line now. Uh, Khalid Rashid, I want to go across to you first. We just heard your reaction on. Uh, uh, you know, that ANI soundbite that you were giving. I want to ask you very quickly, what is going to be the strategy of the Mosque Committee going forward? Do you have any clarity on whether they intend to knock on the doors of the Supreme Court again? No, till now, at present, there is no clarity on this issue. But uh, legally, we have the option to go and, uh, and appeal before the Honorable Supreme Court. And I think that this uh, uh, option must be used. Right. Your first reaction, uh, you know, to what has happened in the Allahabad High Court because the Supreme Court had granted a stay and had asked for the Allahabad High Court to deliberate on this matter, but the High Court has allowed for this survey to take place. Uh, we still don't have clarity on what the broad contours are in, ter in terms of when the survey will start, but what is your first reaction to what has happened in the Allahabad High Court? Uh, naturally, we wanted that uh, there should be not be any uh, SI survey. And already there are various petitions uh, related to the mosque on uh, various issues. And uh, we are of the opinion that uh, the Places of Worship Act 
must be followed and implemented in all the uh, places of worship. And now, as the Honorable uh, High Court have uh, given the order of an ASI survey, let the uh, we have to see what the Masjid Committee decides for them. Right, uh, Mr. Rashid. You know, I I do uh, have. Uh, a one very specific question, you know, while of course you've deliberated on this and you've spoken about it extensively in the past, if you could just for the benefit of our viewers break down, what are your main objections with this survey? And what would you say to those who, who believe that let an ASI survey happen, let there be clarity uh, on the basis of, you know, what this scientific survey re uh, reveals, why is it that the mosque committee is opposing the survey per se? There are two main points. Uh, we are offering namaz from the last about 600 years in the mosque. And it is uh, a mosque. And as far as Islamic law is concerned, we all know that uh, no Muslim can build any mosque after demolishing any other place of worship or for that matter on any land that does not belong to the Muslim community or has not been donated by anyone. So to say that... Uh, the mosques have been uh, constructed after demolishing any place of worship. We are not uh, in favor of this point of view. And the second is that we want uh, that uh, the Places of Worship Act has been uh, enacted by the parliament itself. And in the Babri Masjid case, the Honorable Supreme Court has uh, given more, you can say, uh, power to this act. So, so this act must be implemented in letter in spirit. All right, do stay on with us, uh, Mr. Rashid, because I do uh, want to get in a word from Kapil Madan as well. Kapil Madan, you know, do come in here on the point of the Places of Worship Act because that is something which is at the very heart of this argument. You heard what uh, uh, Mr. Khalid Rashid has had to say, that they have a petition that's already pending and there is a Places of Worship Act that was enacted after the Babri Masjid demolition. The Supreme Court at that point has, in fact, only emboldened this particular act. So why is it that despite the Places of Worship Act 1999, are we still having a debate like this? How would you respond? Yes, so, so I, I, I agree with you. There seems to be a bar under the Places of Worship Act. And you would also recall when the Muslim side was contesting this case at the trial court level, they have moved an application seeking dismissal of the case on the ground of maintainability on this premise alone. And you would also recall, you know, the matter went up to the Honorable Supreme Court, wherein the Honorable Supreme Court, although orally observed, that the, the uh, inquiry qua the character cannot be stopped. So I, what, what appears to me is that till the time Supreme Court affirmatively decides whether, you know, the Places of Worship Act will bar this kind of uh, an inquiry, this kind of a suit, I mean, and the, since the trial court has already held that this suit is maintainable, this particular order seeking survey is sequitur to that maintainability order. Can you, uh, Kapil Madan, for the benefit of our viewers, simplify that? You know, like I asked Khalid Rashid, the very simple question on what are the objections that the Mosque Committee has with allowing this survey to take place. You know, how would you respond to those who say that let a scientific survey happen, let the Archaeological Survey of India experts do their job and let the scientific survey actually put this debate to rest? What would you say to those? Yes, so once the trial court has decided that the suit will go on, this is logical next step wherein the court will have appointed a, a, a scientific body to carry out a scientific investigation and you know survey of the site. Right. It is logical. So what appears to me is that the objection by the Muslim side is that while conducting that survey, there should not be any damage to the site. Hmm. And I think Allahabad High Court has allowed the uh, 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 ASI to continue with the survey and has overruled the objection given by the Muslim side citing that this survey might damage uh, that site. So ultimately what I feel is that uh, the Muslim side is, uh, in, in all probability, they will challenge this uh, order in the Supreme Court. Right. Until the time Supreme Court decides the maintainability on the basis of places of worship act. If the maintainability is decided, you know, on the favor of the Hindu side, then the suit will go on. And if the suit will go on, thus, you know, the survey will happen. Because survey is happening because the court wants to do a fact finding that what was the exact nature and the character of that place. 
All right. So, you know, larger questions uh, on the maintainability of this petition altogether in the light of the 1990 Places of Worship Act. I mean, all of those questions at the moment really need to be answered. And on what basis is the Allahabad High Court allowed for the ASI survey to take place is also a question that still needs to be answered. Uh, Kapil Madan and Khalid Rashid, thanks very much for joining us. I just want to recap for the benefit of our viewers if you're joining us uh, on the broadcast. There are two important developments that have taken place. Uh, the Archaeological Survey of India, Scientific Survey of the Gyanwapi Mosque will continue. This is what the Allahabad High Court has said very clearly. This, remember, despite the fact that the Supreme Court had put in place a stay on the ASI survey that was already underway, the Supreme Court stopped the survey, put an interim stay and asked the mosque committee which filed a challenge petition before the Supreme Court to go back to the Allahabad High Court. On what basis is the Allahabad High Court allowed the survey to continue and what are the conditions, if any, that the Allahabad High Court has put on the survey are still questions that need to be answered because we're waiting for a final copy of the Allahabad High Court order. We'll track this story very closely. Short break here. We'll be back with more news on the other side. Stay with us. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella? Jeff is a... Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world.
23 years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the climate explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Narrow place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har af pe. Ab aap ke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Big development in the Gyan Vapi case, the Allahabad High Court has allowed for the ASI survey to take place. The ASI survey, remember, was ordered by the Varanasi Court but stayed by the Supreme Court earlier. The Moss Committee is now set to appeal in the Supreme Court again. A flag march was carried out in Nu today amid reports of fresh violence overnight. Internet has been banned in Nu Faridabad, Palwal till the 5th of August. Fear, meanwhile, continues to drive migrants 
out of Gurugram post the communal clashes. Mass burial of 35 cookie dead bodies has been called off for now. Methi groups, remember, had questioned the location of the mass burial. Data protection bill to be tabled in Parliament today. The BJP has issued a whip for all MPs to be present in the Lok Sabha. A discussion on the Delhi Services Bill is also likely. A landslide on the Himachal Highway has blocked the highway connecting Shimla to Chandigarh. A large number of vehicles, including about 100 trucks with apples and pears and buses have been stranded on both sides of the road. Welcome back. After the Allahabad High Court has allowed for the ASI to conduct a survey, a scientific survey of the Gyanwapi Mosque complex, now we're learning that uh, the Mosque Committee is now going to be approaching the Supreme Court once again. Remember, the Varanasi Court had allowed for the survey to take place. Once the survey began, the Mosque Committee had approached the Supreme Court, after which the Supreme Court had put a stay. The Allahabad High Court has now allowed for this survey to take place and what we're learning is that uh, the Mosque Committee is once again going to be knocking on the doors of the Supreme Court. Alok Pandey joins us live with the latest. Alok, on expected lines, the Mosque Committee will now be going back to the Supreme Court. Uh, do we have any more details? Uh, not too many details as of now, but yes, certainly a confirmation from one of the lawyers uh, who represented the Mosque Committee in the Allahabad High Court that they are going to approach uh, the Supreme Court of India. I think this was also more or less a given, you know, it wasn't as if uh, this was not going to happen. Uh, either side, whichever party would end up being aggrieved in this case would have gone to the Supreme Court and that is what seems to be happening. So yes, the confirmation certainly has come from one of the lawyers. Uh, the secretary of the Mosque Trust spoke to my colleague Himanshu in Varanasi a while ago and he said that look until i read the detailed order i cannot really comment on it but yes uh, we will follow the legal process so yes i think you know this is the next logical step as far as the mosque committee is concerned that they're going to approach a higher court which in this case will probably be the supreme court of india that then leads us to the question as to whether the survey is going to restart today tomorrow or if the, it's going to wait for the supreme court to first take a view on it given uh, as and when the Mosque Committee does approach the Supreme Court. So uh, those are questions that we don't have answers for yet. Uh, last time the survey began with much alacrity, if I remember, so an order was passed on Friday at about 4 p.m. and then Saturday, Sunday were cold offs or holidays. And then on Monday at 7 a.m. the survey did begin. Uh, this time around, is, will there be, uh, will, will more uh, prudence be exercised? I think that is something that uh, one waits to see. But yes, the confirmation certainly has come from the Mosque Committee that they are going to approach the Supreme Court of India. All right. Uh, so what really happens in the Supreme Court? When will that appeal be filed? All of those, again, uh, are questions that need to be answered. We'll track that story very closely, Alok. Thanks very much for joining us with the update. More breaking news. It's coming in from Rajasthan. We're reporting on a horrific case of a 14-year-old girl who was allegedly burnt in a brick clin in Bhilwara's Kotida. Uh, now, this has sent shockwaves across the district. This is a crime that was discovered late on Wednesday night after the girl went out on Wednesday afternoon to graze animals. When she didn't return, the people in the village and family members went out looking for her. They found her in a brick clin in a nearby field. The police have found shoes and a silver anklet outside. Police teams from across four police stations have arrived at the spot and uh, an investigation is underway. Three people have been detained for questioning. Let's go right across to Harsha joining us with the very latest. Uh, Harsha, horrific case uh, from Bhilwada there. What are the details? The FSL team, because do remember the girl went missing yesterday and only this early this morning did the village people discover that the brick kiln was burning and they found the shoes and um, a silver anklet there. So the FSL team is there. The police have also rounded up three people. They're suspecting five people are involved. But to exactly say whether gang rapes happened or whether the girl was murdered and then burnt, you know, I mean, the, the details, the exact chronology of crime is difficult to put right now. What we can say is that the girl went missing. She had gone to graze animals um, yesterday. When she did not turn up, the, um, the family went looking for her. Early this morning, they found that the brick kiln was burning. 
and that's when they suspected that you know something like this could have happened. The, the police is there. The, so is this SP. So our political leaders, Dheeraj Gujar, who's the Congress MLA from there, the former BJP MLA, everyone is at the spot given how horrific this crime is. Police have rounded up three people. Now they definitely suspect rape and murder. But exact chronology of events, we still are waiting for them to arrive at some kind of a conclusion. All right, uh, Harsha, you know, but as far as the details are concerned, uh, what we do know at the moment is that three suspects have been detained for questioning. But you're saying that the forensics team is still at the spot and they're trying to ascertain whether, uh, you know, this minor girl was in fact uh, raped and whether it is her body that is that is in the clin or has that already been unearthed? Well, you know, the anklet and the shoes do seem to indicate that this girl's uh, body is in the kiln. The, uh, uh, you know, whatever the forensic team recovers from the kiln, and then they'll have to do a DNA test, so that will take some time to establish. Also, you see, if the body is not available, then whether rape happened or not cannot be forensically established. Um, but, you know, it will depend on what the, uh, the people they've detained, if they are the correct people, and if they conf uh, um, confess to a crime. So a lot of this will be confessional-based. Uh, you know, it will probably not be something that the FSL can prove. The FSL will be able to prove whether the body um, discovered in the kiln is indeed the girl. All right, Harsha, thanks very much for joining us with those details. Horrific details really coming in on that uh, Bhilwara alleged uh, uh, gang rape case. What we know at the moment is that three suspects have been detained and a forensics team is at the spot to ascertain whether it is indeed the body of this 14-year-old that is burning inside that brick clean. We track that story very closely. Thanks very much, Harsha, for joining us with the details. Meanwhile, uh, both houses of parliament are, uh, in fact, underway. The crucial data protection bill is going to be today. Uh, we also know that there is a discussion in the Lok Sabha that's likely to happen over the Delhi Ordinance Bill. Uh, let's quickly dip in and listen in to what's happening in parliament. Number of applications received about 15 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 50,000. Already the benefit is given to 14 lakh 89,000. Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana applications received 3 lakh 65,000. And number of benefits sanctioned 3 lakh 54,000. So, like this, all the other schemes, our brothers and sisters who are part of the PM Swanidhi scheme, they've all become beneficiaries of that. I will just name them One Nation, One Ration Card. PM Shram Yogi Manan Yojana, registrant under BOCW, Janani Suraksha Yojana, PM Matru Vandana Yojana. Sir, in overall terms, sir, in overall terms, one can say that from being vulnerable members of the society, they have now joined the mainstream, their data has been uh, on, uh, onboarded and they have become beneficiaries of the other scheme. Along with, sir, I might say that Hamari Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, Uska Malikana Haq is the name of the lady of the house. Baki bhi chiz ka hai. Sir, I thank you very much. I could have, would have liked now, to continue Jesus. to share things. I want to thank the honorable hey, member question for is asking replied, this question. Thank you, sir. The question is replied. Supplementary, second supplementary. Sabhapati ji, I want to ask you that we are going to give a special package in which we are going to give a special package and the act उस माध्यम से उनको जो फायदे होने चाहिए जैसा हेल्थ का हेल्थ के बेनिफिट्स है बच्चों का पढ़ाई है तो इसको क्या हम इंक्लूड करने जा रहे हैं और महाराष्ट्र में जैसा चार लाख चौदह हजार बत्तीस ये जो लोगों को फायदा मिला है तो ऐसे जो जो स्टेट है उसमें और बढ़ाने का और उनको सपोर्ट करने का और हमारे पास में क्या प्लान है? the number of vending zones which are there in each state. And I want to thank the honorable member. Some states, as she mentioned, Maharashtra has 1,509 vending zones. But some states, like Andaman and Nicobar Islands, maybe because vending zones and the scheme, you need mostly in B-class town. I get the feeling that the same pressure is not there, but we are monitoring this. We have a total of 13,403 zones. Some states like West Bengal don't have any vending zones. Now that I find very surprising. The state of West Bengal does not have any vending zone. In also some other states would also have very few. So we are monitoring this and we are going to try and incentivize them to ensure that more and more states 
derive the benefits, which I think is one of the most unique schemes worldwide, and it is being hailed worldwide because the Honorable Prime Minister showed very high degree of sensitivity to the most vulnerable sections in our society, and it has been widely welcomed, including by the uh, beneficiaries of the scheme. Of, and, and we have been repeatedly, they have expressed themselves on record to be able to take benefit of this. Shri Kripal Balaji, you have... भारत के यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री आदरणीय मोदी जी का धन्यवाद करता हूँ कि ये जो गरीब लोगों के लिए बहुत अच्छी स्कीम इस देश में चलाई जा रही है सर जो जवाब हमें मिला है उस पर से तो हम बिल्कुल खुश हैं इतने अच्छी तरह से ये गरीबों के लिए स्कीम हमारी इंप्लीमेंट हो रही है और लगभग अड़सठ लाख लोगों ने उसका पंजीयन भी करा चुके हैं लेकिन इसमें मैंने जो देखा कि बैंक का रूम देने का जो मसला आता है तो वहाँ पर नेशनलाइज बैंक उसको लोन दे रही है लगभग 95 परसेंट लोन है नेशनलाइज बैंक दे रही है लेकिन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक एंड अदर बैंक और अदर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन उसमें लोन नहीं दे रही है तो उसके बारे में भी कॉपरेटिव बैंक को कुछ डायरेक्शन देने की ज़रूरत है ऐसा मुझे लगता है और ये स्ट्रीट फूड होने स्ट्रीट वेंडर होने के कारण ये स्ट्रीट पे फूड भी बेचते हैं वेजिटेबल्स भी बेचते हैं बहुत सारे प्रकार के साधन जो लोगों के डेली यूज के लिए होती है संक्षेप में तो इस मसले पर मैं क्वेश्चन पूछने जा रहा हूँ कि हेल्थ का ध्यान रखना बहुत जरूरी है उनका हेल्थ का ध्यान हम रखेंगे तो हमारा भी हेल्थ अच्छा रहेगा तो इसके बारे में इनके लिए कोई ई एस आई लागू कर रहे हैं या और कोई शासन की योजना है जिससे इनको हेल्थ फैसिलिटी मिलेगी और आई वॉन्ट टू थैंक दी ऑनरेबल मेम्बर हु वॉज रेज थ्री वेरी वैल्यूएबल पॉइंट वन इज दी लोन विच आर बिंग ड्रॉन एंड टू सिक्स सेवन नोटिस यू रिसीव टूडे सुपर सीड्स एनी अदर वन सेवन सिक्स नोटिस बट दैट्स नॉट द इशू सर द इशू इज द पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री वॉन्ट टू हैव वॉन्ट टू हेयर अस ऑन मणिपुर वी एज एन ऑपोजिशन all of us including our respected leader sir we want this discussion on manipur we are not here to show ego or arrogance sir one minute please, sir please, one please, minute listen to sir him. one minute listen to him. sir i will please. i will appeal i will appeal through you to the leader of the house i will appeal through you to the leader of the house manipur sir needs care needs healing needs to listen to the voice of consolation Your point. i will appeal to you to the leader of the house let us find a solution let us find a solution because this log jam is helping nobody we will suggest we will suggest to you sir manipur has to be discussed for 6 hours for 8 hours let us discuss it in a spirit in a spirit of one nation this is not one state sir we are very serious about this honorable member please Even take us in our leader of the mr opposition, direct sir, you know, sir this is you what made your point you made so we come to you sir with yes, your spirit you please and i appeal oh, no. i appeal to you sir okay. to the leader of the house there is a very simple way no more nothing will go to court now no no nothing will go to court please take your seat honorable members no before that honorable members honorable member one, one second one, one second no no honorable members the honorable member has raised a very valid point and as a matter of fact it is very wholesome it is a reminder to all of us that we must get into way forward stance because discussion on manipur is imperative and in the heart of arts everyone wants it let me remind you at the very first instance i consider to the notice under rule 176 and the government very promptly agreed for a discussion i had fixed in consultation with the leader of council of states date and time supplementary list of business was drawn i had indicated from this chair that two and a half hour short duration discussion time limit will not apply i had indicated to everyone 
that I will allocate as much time as all segments of the house need to avail for making an input. That opportunity did not fructify. I do not wish to engage into blame game. We All in right, this house uh, so both Houses of Parliament the they're underway. We heard uh, in the Lok Sabha that uh, there is a discussion that is underway despite the fact that there is some sloganeering that continues with the opposition members in the well of the House in the Lok Sabha raising slogans uh, demanding a discussion on Manipur. Similarly, we also heard in uh, the Rajya Sabha, Derek O'Brien uh, was in fact making an appeal yet again for a discussion on Manipur. Uh, let's go right across to Himanshu joining us with the very latest. Uh, Himanshu, you've been tracking the details in, uh, uh, you know, of what's happening in Parliament. But I just want to ask you, what are we likely to see happen today? Uh, we're given to understand that the crucial data protection bill is going to be tabled. Are we also expecting a decision on the? De uh, are we also expe uh, expecting a discussion on the Delhi Services Bill today? Uh, that's right, and these are two bills which are listed in Lok Sabha. Uh, but in Raj Sabha now, the effort to resolve the stalemate on how the discussion on Manipur situation should take place is still on. Raj Sabha chairman in the morning today has said that I've again received around 29 notices, but has indicated that it's very difficult for him to accept notices uh, which are demanding a discussion on Manipur situation under Rule 267. Uh, then Derek O'Brien, who's a Tinamun Congress parliamentary party leader, he got up to say that there should be an att attempt made to find a solution uh, to the problem because Manipur situation requires six to seven hours of debate. And then Chairman said that I've already allowed a short duration discussion under Rule 76, and I've also indicated that there would be no time limit uh, for a discussion under short duration discussion. Right. So the attempt is still on to resolve the stalemate okay. uh, which has stalled the proceedings of Raj Sabha since it started on 20th July. Thanks, Imanshu, for joining us with that quick update. In fact, Piyush Goyal is speaking in the Rajya Sabha. Let's listen in. Also, we believe that we must run the house in a proper orderly manner. Ultimately, we cannot have a situation where we have a discussion, but yet we continue to disturb the house. We cannot have a situation where when the uh, Honorable Home Minister rises to give his response to this very sensitive issue and lay down the context and the actions that were taken. I think if we are all agreeable, that uh, there should be a discussion on Manipur. The government will be very happy. I will uh, take the convenience of the Honorable Home Minister when he'll be able to uh, present, uh, to, to discuss uh, in the House. We only have, uh, as the business is listed, we'll have to see when that date can be slotted in. But I can in in assure you, sir, that this government from day one has been keen for a debate on Manipur we stand with the people of Manipur. We believe that a good debate is in the interest of all sections of uh, society and the country. I will request my senior colleagues from different parties to uh, join me for a cup of tea and we'll have a discussion and we'll sit and work out how the house will work, how we can make sure the house runs in an orderly fashion. There are very important bills before the house. Today we have three bills listed each one of which is important and we would like to ensure the participation Honourable of all members. And sir, now that it's Thursday already, tomorrow is private members day. Friday, we'll, uh, uh, Monday, we'll have the uh, business that is being passed in the Lok Sabha today, coming before the House. If we can have a healthy discussion, if we can debate, have a dialogue and may the, may the best uh, course of action prevail. If we can continue to work in an orderly fashion in the next few days, I think that will give a very good message to the country. And the past can be behind us. Let's look to the future with positivity. Honorable Thanks. members, there is always going to be different point of view. One side may think all is being done. The other side may think much is required to be done. In this house, to exemplify our maturity, and his statesman approach, let us lend our ears to the other point of view also. Maybe the other point of view receives real consideration. Often it is seen it may be the right one. On this issue, I would not like to get further input. I will invite floor leaders 
in my chamber at 1 p.m. today, and the chair will accommodate a discussion on Manipur issues irrespective of time constraint and irrespective of other constraints. I now take up the next business. Sir. 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 Leaders. What on that issue, sir? Sir, I'm going to point out. Sir, please. What is Not your... on that issue, sir. Okay. I'm on a different point. Okay. Sir, on the first... What is your point of order, sir? I shall, sir. 258, sir. Eh? Sir. What is the point of order? So on the 1st of August, you rejected all the 267 notices, saying that they do not on confirm on the 1st of August. No, sir. Earlier also. Sir, Roll you, backs. you repeated again, sir, on that day also, that the notices do not fall under, follow the conform, are not in conformity yes, with the rules and your observations. Yes. You earlier referred to that, sir, and after that I very meticulously drafted my notice, sir. So I have asked for a clarification in what respect our notices do not fall under the observations of you, sir, yes. so that our future notices will be yes. in a proper form so that this technical factor need not stand in the way of our very important you see, issues. It's a very important sir, it's a very important. you are a very senior member, and any communication to the chair from any honorable member is read by me very carefully. It is analyzed. I have read your communication. One second. Thank you, sir. I have read your communication. It is very well worded. We have discussed it personally also on two occasions. And we have discussed it at one occasion at Uprashtapati Nivas also. I would urge you, sir, to go through my ruling. I have indicated with clarity from my perspective that these are the conditions which a notice under Rule 167 must satisfy before it is considered at my end. And one of the conditions is that the honorable member must spell out with clarity that under the rules... All right, so crucial no update that is coming in at the moment from the Rajya Sabha where uh, uh, Piyush Goel has said that the government is keen for a debate on the Manipur issue. The Rajya Sabha chairperson has said that all floor leaders have been invited to his chambers for uh, a discussion at 1 p.m and that the chair will admit a debate on Manipur irrespective of the time constraint. Uh, Piyush Koyal has also clarified that he will seek a time from the Home Minister for a discussion on Manipur in the Rajya Sabha. Is this solution going to be palatable to the opposition parties who have so far demanded a statement from no, none other than the Prime Minister? All of those are questions that need to be answered. But um, is there going to be an end to the stalemate between the opposition parties and the government over a discussion on Manipur, at least in the Rajya Sabha? We will know more on that in just a bit with the floor leaders meeting at 1 p.m. and the chair admitting a debate on Manipur. We'll track the story very closely from Parliament. Short break here, more news on the other side. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. 
conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place, Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein a gaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. Nothing will go on record. Honorable members, sir. Honorable members, one second. Please take your seat. Honorable members, let me respond to what the LOP has said. No. 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 Honorable members. Honorable members. We must. We must always be alive. Would you please take your seat? Then take. Nothing will go on record. Take your seat. Sorry. Don't don't disrupt the house. Honorable members. On, honorable members. Leader of the opposition has put out three things for consideration. I'll take up the last one. That concerns the honorable prime minister. We must always be alive to a situation that we are a nation of more than 1.3 billion people. We are a democracy, most functional, vibrant, globally recognized. India is the only democratic nation in the world that has constitutional democracy 
एट द विलेज लेवल एट पंचायत समिति लेवल एट जिला परिषद लेवल अपार्ट फ्रॉम स्टेट एंड देयर इफ आवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड टू बी डिफेंडेड बाय मी ही हैज कम टू बी रिकॉग्नाइज ऑन ग्लोबल प्लेटफॉर्म्स सीनेट एंड कांग्रेस इन द यूएस इमेजिन द काइंड ऑफ रिस्पॉन्स एवरी every indian should be proud we must be proud of it the no you cannot have an approach why are you shirking from the hard reality india is rising as never before the rise is unstoppable it is on account of all of us everyone has contributed to it such a global recognition i am not required to defend anyone the, the prime minister sir sir wait wait honorable members after three decades of coalition governance under the leadership of the prime minister you are 2014 you are 2019 electoral results i am not required to defend anyone if i am required to defend anyone i am not required to defend right i am not required to defend left i am required to defend constitution i am required to defend your rights therefore such an observation coming from leader of opposition is not very wholesome we cannot have it you see we must be proud of our government proud of our citizens proud of our developments where are we? honorable members where are we heading political political stance you are entitled i am not a stakeholder in politics one second i am not a stakeholder in politics i am not concerned with politics of parties i am concerned with governance i am concerned with growth of the country no honorable members matters raised with permission dr sumer singh solanki dr sumer singh solanki dhanyawad nothing i want to record sabhapati mahoday narbade har main aapke madhyam se sarkar evam sadan ka dhyan desh ke ek mahatvapurn vishay ki or aakarshit karna chahta hu माननीय सभापति महोदय देश भर में बोरवेल और ट्यूबवेल के खुले गड्ढों में गिरने से न जाने कितनी ही मासूम जिंदगियां की किलकारियां हमेशा हमेशा के लिए बंद हो रही है यह सरकार एवं समाज के लिए गंभीर चिंता का विषय है अभी कुछ दिन पहले ही मध्य प्रदेश के विदिशा जिले के खेरखेड़ी पठार गांव में खुले बोरवेल में गिरने से सात वर्षीय बालक लोकेश को नहीं बचाया जा सका इसी प्रकार मध्य प्रदेश के दमोह विदिशा उमरिया जिले में भी मासूम जानों को नहीं बचाया जा सका अभी कुछ दिन पहले ही महाराष्ट्र के अहमदनगर जिले में खुले बोरवेल में गिरे पाँच साल के बच्चे को तमाम कोशिशों के बाद भी नहीं बचाया जा सका तमिलनाडु के त्रिची शहर के नाटू काटू पत्ती गाँव में बोरवेल में गिरे दो वर्षीय बालक सुजीत को भी एन और एस की टीमों की हर मुमकिन कोशिशों के बाद भी नहीं बचाया जा सका पंजाब के संगरूर जिले में 150 फुट गहरे बोरवेल में गिरे तीन साल के फतेहवीर सिंह को भी नहीं बचाया जा सका माननीय सभापति महोदय विगत वर्ष उत्तर प्रदेश के बुलंदशहर में वाराणसी के पिंडारा में भी ऐसी घटनाएं घटित हुई जिसमें छह साल की मासूम बच्ची तेरह वर्षीय अनुकेत अनिकेत यादव को भी की भी मौत हो गई हरियाणा के हल्देड़ी गाँव में दो में पाँच वर्षीय प्रिंस के 50 फुट गहरे बोरवेल के गड्ढे में गिरने के बाद न्यूज टीवी चैनलों ने रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन के दृश्य लाइव दिखाए थे जिससे पूरी दुनिया का ध्यान इन इस प्रकार के हादसों की ओर गया था जिससे यह भी उम्मीद जगी थी कि भविष्य में ऐसे हादसे सामने नहीं आएंगे परंतु आज भी स्थिति ज्यों की त्यों बनी हुई है माननीय सभापति महोदय नेशनल क्राइम रिकॉर्ड्स ब्यूरो की दो की रिपोर्ट के अनुसार साल दो में देश में जहाँ बोरवेल में गिरने वाले बच्चों की संख्या 48 थी वहीं 2015 में बढ़कर इकहत्तर हो गई तमिलनाडु के बारे में 2014 में एक फैक्ट फाइंडिंग टीम ने गृह मंत्रालय को सूचित किया था कि इस राज्य में 2010 से 2012 के बीच पाँच बच्चे बोरवेल में गिरे थे 
जो कि अब यह आंकड़ा हजारों में पहुंच गया है माननीय सभापति महोदय 2006 में हरियाणा प्रिंस हरियाणा के प्रिंस बोरवेल में से निकालने के बाद 2015 तक सोलह हजार से अधिक व्यक्ति महिलाएं और बच्चे खुले गड्ढे में गिरने से उनकी मौत हो चुकी है तमाम बचाव कार्यों में करोड़ों रुपए खर्च होते हैं ऐसे भयावह हादसों को देखते हुए 2010 में सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी बोरवेल के रख रखाव संबंधी निर्देश जारी किए थे माननीय सभापति महोदय सवाल यह भी है कि यह भी कि आखिरकार इस प्रकार के हादसों को रोकने के लिए कोई कड़े कदम उठाने की आवश्यकता है मैं आपके माध्यम से अति संवेदनशील और गंभीर विषय के लिए सरकार से यह आग्रह करता हूं कि इस प्रकार की घटनाओं को रोकने के लिए दोषियों के खिलाफ कड़े कानूनों का प्रावधान होना चाहिए ताकि ऐसी भयावह घटनाओं का दोहराव देश में नहीं हो धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मान्य महोदय आपने एक भारत की गौरव की बात में आज करने वाला हूं आपके सामने आज भारत ने एक बहुत बड़ा रिकॉर्ड जो 31 जुलाई तक इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न भरने की आखिरी तारीख थी उसके अंदर 6.8 करोड़ इनकम टैक्स फाइल किए गए ये रिकॉर्ड पिछले वर्ष को वर्ष के मुकाबले सत्रह परसेंट ज़्यादा है इसके लिए मैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी और माननीय वित्तीय मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमन जी को बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं और साथ में साधुवाद करता हूं। इसके साथ इनकम टैक्स विभाग के सभी कर्मचारी सभी टैक्स कंसल्टर चार्टर अकाउंटर और सभी टैक्स पेयर जो है उनको बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूं। साथ में माननीय महोदय डिजिटल इंडिया के सपने को हमारे आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने जिस मेहनत के साथ आगे बढ़ाया है उसके साकार किए इस देश के लिए एक मिसाल है आज भारत डिजिटल गवर्नेंस क्षेत्र में प्रथम स्थान पर है इसका नतीजा है कि बड़ी संख्या में ऑनलाइन इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न बिना किसी रुकावट देश के कोने कोने से भरे जा रहे हैं मुझे लगता है इतने बड़े स्केल पर दुनिया के सिर्फ भारत ही करने में सक्षम है और सफलतापूर्वक कर सकता है बढ़ते हुए आईटीआर टी ये भी बताता है कि किसी प्रकार देश की अर्थव्यवस्था को आगे बढ़ रही है और जहाँ दुनिया बड़े देश की अर्थव्यवस्था मंदी की तरफ जा रही है संकट बादल छाए हुए हैं वहाँ दूसरी ओर हम देशवासियों के मेहनत और परिश्रम का अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था को भी शक्तिशाली बना रहे हैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी न्यू इंडिया जो हमारे पास विश्व की जो तीसरे नंबर की अर्थव्यवस्था की तरफ ले जाने में सक्षम है मैं माननीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी मोदी जी मोदी मतलब मैन ऑन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडिया जो देश को बदलने और तीसरी अर्थव्यवस्था की तरफ ले जाने में सक्षमता करने वाले धन्यवाद जय हिंद वंदे मातरम भारत माता की जय श्री विजयपाल सिंह तोमर सभापति महोदय मैं गंभीर विषय की ओर आपका ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं मानवर वर्तमान में राष्ट्रीय राजधानी क्षेत्र में यमुना नदी काली नदी हिंडन नदी का पानी पीने लायक नहीं रहा है राष्ट्रीय राजधानी क्षेत्र में लगे औद्योगिक इकाइयों स्लाटर हाउस चीनी मिल पेपर मिल केमिकल कारखानों के प्रदूषित जल से इन नदियों का पानी जहरीला हो गया है ये अपने समीपवर्ती सैकड़ों गाँव में कैंसर की बीमारियाँ फैली हुई है काली नदी जहाँ भी सैंपल लिया गया वहाँ ऑक्सीजन की मात्रा शून्य पाई गई मानवर जबकि डी सी दो लाख अस्सी हजार और बीओडी की मात्रा 40 पाई गई केंद्रीय भूजल बोर्ड की रिपोर्ट के अनुसार इस नदी के पानी में पारा कॉपर जिंक आर्सेनिक फ्लोराइड नाइट्रेट की मात्रा बहुत अधिक है स्पष्ट है कि काली नदी का पानी पीने लायक ही नहीं सिंचाई या किसी अन्य काम के लायक भी नहीं है और ऑक्सीजन खत्म होने से जलीय जंतु भी गायब हो गए हैं एनजीटी के आदेश पर काली नदी के किनारे चिकित्सा कैंप लगाए गए ऑल राइट सो डिस्कशन इन द राज्यसभा कंटिन्यूज मिड दैट के ऑस बट द के ऑस हैज रिमेंबर परसिस्टेड इन द अपर हाउस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट ओवर टेक्निकलिटी व्हिच इज रूल 267 अंडर रूल 267 ओपोजिशन हैज कंटिन्यूअसली डिमांडेड फॉर अ डिस्कशन ऑन मणिपुर व्हिच इज एसेंशियली अ डिस्कशन इन अ इन अ लॉन्गर फॉर्मेट फॉलोड बाय अ वोट एट द एंड of that discussion uh, the government has maintained that they are ready to discuss this in a short duration format so over the technicality 
the the deadlock in the upper house of parliament between the opposition and the government continues. The Rajya Sabha chairman now has intervened and said that floor leaders, he's invited the floor leaders to come and meet at one o'clock and said despite the time constraints, he is willing to admit a discussion on Manipur. Piyush Goel stood up at that moment and said that he will also seek time from the home minister to come and make a statement in the house on the Manipur issue. But uh, the opposition to this continues because after which there was a there was an exchange between uh, the speaker as well as uh, uh, Malikarjun Kharge and I want to just rewind to what happened just moments ago in the Rajya Sabha and play that out for you. Please, 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 please. So, honourable members, let us let us not get into hair splitting. Assessment of a situation. The success I want to go ahead, sir. Only leader of the opposition will hold the floor. Or nothing will go to court. Sir, my nothing other than LOP will go to court. Go ahead, sir. My only question is that 176 notice be usi din diye, or 267 be usi din diye. Jab 267 notice जो है ये सभी जितना भी बिजनेस है उसको अलग रख के 267 को प्रायोरिटी देना चाहिए ये ही पहले भी प्रेसिडेंट था और आज भी वो प्रचलित है लेकिन मुझे समझ में नहीं रहा ये प्रेस्टीज इश्यू क्यों बन गया 267 में एक हमको कहने के लिए तो मौका मिलता है और आपने ये भी कहा कि उसको एडमिट करने के लिए कारण होना चाहिए तो हमने कारण तो बताया मैंने तो आपसे कली विनंती की आप जरा गुस्से में थे शायद आपको सर आई एम अ मैरिड मैन फॉर मोर देन 45 इयर्स मैं कभी गुस्सा नहीं करता सर ट्रस्ट मी नहीं साहब कभी गुस्सा नहीं करता मैंने and Mr. Chidambaram, a very distinguished senior advocate, will know. As senior advocates, we have no right to show our anger, at least to the authority. You are an authority, sir. Gussa nahi karta. Isko modify kar do, sir, thoda. Nain, nain, gussa nahi karta. Thoda sa modification. Haan? Thoda sa modification. Nain, aap gussa nahi karta hai, dikhate nahi, lekin barabar andar se karte ho. So, sir, she is not a member of the house. We can't discuss one who is not a member of the house. Sir, in this relationship, otherwise we can discuss. Go ahead. Sir, sir, let us have your input, sir. Look, I have noticed you have not given me. I have written eight points in which I have written in detail. Why did I have to admit in 2-6-7? ये विषय एडमिट करना ये पूरा है लेकिन आप बार बार ये कह रहे हैं कि कोई कारण नहीं टू सिक्स सेवन में लेने के लिए तो ये प्रेस्टेज इश्यू बन गया अब हम इसको रोज उठा रहे उधर से रोज सजेशन सजेशन हो रहा नहीं मेरा सजेशन यही है कि आप एक बजे इसके लिए अपने चेंबर में बुला रहे हैं तब तक आप हाउस अर्जन करिए और हम बैठकर एक बजे एक बजे तो फिर यहाँ पर आएंगे फिर वो समस्या को सुलझाकर हम यहाँ पर बैठेंगे ये मेरा विनती है आपसे सब ये ये बड़ा छोटी सी आप छोटा सजेशन भी नहीं मानते प्राइम मिनिस्टर यहाँ आने दो बोले तो वो भी नहीं मानते और प्राइम मिनिस्टर को आप इतना डिफेंड कर रहे इतना डिफेंड कर रहे मुझे समझ में ही नहीं रहे ये अनपार्लमेंट्री है ये अनपार्लमेंट्री है ये अनपार्लमेंट्री है अरे ये हर बात को I I got a point. अरे भाई ये डेमोक्रेसी है। Please please ये क्या पाउंडर लेबर है? No no please. This is not going to get. No nothing will go to get. Please. Honourable members. Sir, आप बुला रहे हैं। Honourable members. 
One second. Please take your seat. Honorable Member. Let me respond to what the LOPS said. Sir, there is a point of order. No. 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 Honorable Members. Honorable Members. We must, we must always be alive. Would you please take your seat? Then take. Nothing will go on record. Take your seat. Sorry. Don't, don't disrupt the house. Honorable members. On, honorable members. Leader of the opposition has put out three things for consideration. I will take up the last one. That concerns the honorable prime minister. We must always be alive to a situation that we are a nation of more than 1.3 billion people. We are a democracy, most functional, vibrant, globally recognized. India is the only democratic nation in the world that has constitutional democracy at the village level, at Panchay Smithi level, at Jila Prishan level, apart from the state and there. If our Prime Minister is not required to be defended by me, he has come to be recognized on global platforms, Senate and Congress in the U.S. Imagine the kind of response. Every, every Indian should be proud. We must be proud of it. The, no, you cannot have an approach. Why are you shirking from the hard reality? India is rising as never before. All right, an interesting exchange there between Malikarjun Kharge and uh, uh, the chair of the Rajya Sabha. Let's go right across to Megha. Megha, the opposition there has stood up and in fact questioned the chair's eulogizing of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, that was a very interesting exchange that just took place. Yes, uh, you know, it's something which usually you would not see. And after the chair was accused of defending the prime minister, is when the chair started talking about, you know, Mr. Dankar, the vice president, started talking about uh, different achievements of India, right, from digital India to digital transfers to how the stature of our country has come to be recognized uh, worldwide, how the prime minister has uh, perhaps uh, been able to, you know, make a position for himself amongst the world leaders. So he started talking about everything else, you know, everything uh, which uh, many, many are seeing as achievements of uh, of India under uh, Narendra Modi's rule. And he talked about all of that and he said, you know, I am not here to defend the Prime Minister. I am here as a watcher of politics. I am apolitical here. I, have, I don't have an active political stance. Uh, and you don't accuse me of doing that. But what I'm talking about is essentially the achievements that our country has made in the past few years. And one will have to accept and admit to the fact that we have come to occupy a very, very significant uh, position when it comes to uh, nations worldwide. And uh, yes, and that was that, that, that was a very, very interesting exchange in the sense that you don't really, uh, you know, get to hear uh, the chair uh, in Rajya Sabha talk about things uh, like these, you know, his, his, his primary uh, job really there in Rajya Sabha is to manage the proceedings of the upper house to ensure the decorum of the house and, and get the bills Past. It's, and these are the basic primary job of the chair. But today he is here, essentially after this uh, accusation was put forth at him, to defend his position, to defend the position that he's occupying as the chair in the Rajya Sabha. He started talking about everything else. He started, uh, I mean, the, the opposition, of course, has been accusing him of uh, of. of taking a stand, taking a side, and taking taking the side of the Prime Minister. And this all is happening in the context of the fact that the opposition has been asking for the Prime Minister's presence in the House from right. day one. And yet all of this has emanated from that because the opposition says the Prime Minister is accountable to the par Parliament. He has he's a chosen elected representative uh, in this House, and his primary responsibility is towards the parliamentarians. And if he is not going to... Uh, take care of that, uh, which is his, which is something that comes as a, as the first duty of the prime minister. Then, then all the right. parliament can hold him accountable. And in that context, all of this conversation happened. The exchange between the two of them, yes, uh, where you hear uh, such unusual words from from the chair and, yes. a, and speaking in a context. 
and on a topic that usually you would not find them. Well, it's going uh, to be really, it's going to be really interesting to see how this is looked at. The chair, uh, you know, talking the way he did about the prime minister, uh, you know, is this really the best place to voice? Uh, perhaps what he has, uh, Megha. Several questions are now going to be asked over that. So interesting exchange. We played out uh, brief excerpts of, the, of that. Thanks very much for joining us with the very latest. We're going to slip into a very short break. Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. Rajya Sabha continues. We'll get you the latest on the other side. Stay with us. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debate, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella? Jeff is a... Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show. 
but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable, we're facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har af pe. Ab aap ke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. In an absolutely shocking incident, 14-year-old girl's burnt body found in a brick kiln in Rajasthan's Bhilwara. Police suspect rape and murder. Police have also said three suspects are in custody and are being questioned. And the Allahabad High Court has allowed for the Archaeological Survey of India survey to continue in the Gyanwapi case. 
the archaeological survey uh, the archaeological survey of india survey was ordered by the varanasi court and was stayed by the supreme court it was the mosque committee that had appealed against the asi's survey Lok Sabha adjourned till 2 in the afternoon amid ruckus over Manipur Rajya Sabha chairman to meet floor leaders at 1 pm Piyush Goyal says the government is keen for a debate on Manipur today Malikarjun Kharge says demand for discussion on the Manipur issue under rule 267 is not a prestige issue Overnight instances of violence in Haryana's Noo attempted vandalism at two mosque in Noo's Tauro Police have said no damage to the structure or injuries or deaths have been reported Mass burial of 35 Kuki dead bodies have been postponed for 5 days This as Meti groups had questioned the location of mass burial Good afternoon. I'm Sneha Koshi. We're starting this bulletin with an absolutely unfortunate and a horrific story. The burnt remains of a 14-year-old girl was found in a brick kiln in Rajasthan's Bhilwara. This has sent shock waves not only through Rajasthan but everyone who has woken up to this news. This happened late on Wednesday. Now, what exactly is the police saying? It this happened This came to the notice of the police after the family couldn't find the teenager who had left the home to take care of the goats along with her mother. She was allegedly separated from her mother and she vanished. Vanished. When she didn't return her family and her villagers spread out to look for her, searched for her all night and they found they informed the police. The police say they found bones, a silver anklet and shoes. in the still burning remains inside the brick kiln now the police say they suspect the girl was gang raped before she was killed three suspects according to the police have been taken into custody and are being questioned tm par thane par suchna mili narsingpura gaon mein ek choti bachchi ji जो अपने खेत पर बकरियां चराने गई थी जो वापस घर पर नहीं पहुंची है और इस इतला पर पास में कालबेलिया समाज के व्यक्ति डेरे लगातार रहते थे कोयले निकालने का काम करते थे तो परिजनों और ग्रामीणों ने आशंका जताई कि पास में एक भट्टी जली हुई देखी गई थी जिसमें नाबालिग तोला का हाथ का कड़ा उस भट्टी से बाहर निकला पुलिस ने गांव वालों के साथ मिलकर रात को जिन पर शंका थी उनमें से तीन लोगों को राउंड अप कर लिया है एक आदमी की हमारे को शंका है बच्ची के कड़े और हाथ की हड्डियों से हमें ऐसा सूचना मिली भाई कि भाई उसके अंदर इस बच्ची को जलाया गया है इस घटना की मैं कठोर शब्दों में निंदा करता हूँ हम ईंट से ईंट बजा देंगे सड़कों पर उतर जाएंगे इसको किसी भी कीमत पर फांसी की सजा दिलाकर रहेंगे ऐसा घटना घटी है जिस घटना के हम कोई भी व्यक्ति इसको माफ़ नहीं कर सकता अक्षम में घटना है और जिला कलेक्टर को यहाँ पर हम बुला रहे हैं वार्ता करने के लिए और उससे बात करके उसको मुआवजा दिलाएंगे और मुआवजा दिलाने के साथ साथ हम सब की एक ही मांग है कि तत्काल से तत्काल इसका सरकार चालान पेश कराए और चालान पेश कराने के बाद में हम लोग इसको फांसी की सजा दिलाएं तब हम लोगों को शांति मिलेगी and i'm being joined by my colleague harsha kumari singh right now harsha there are so many aspects to the story but first just the goriness of this crime a 14 year old girl's body being found the you know the burnt chars of that body being found inside a brick kiln what else do we know about this harsha 
Well, you know, when the girl went missing, the village people went out uh, looking for her. And in the early hours of the morning, if you've seen those visuals, this place is quite isolated. So where this brick inn was, it was quite isolated. And when they saw smoke coming out from that, that's when they realized that this, it's burning. And of course, that's when they went and investigated and found this kind of evidence, the shoes and that uh, silver, uh, um, you know, uh, kada. Now, please understand that in Rajasthan, the, the silver anklet that they wear is very, very thick. So obviously, that's not got burnt. I mean, it didn't melt that fast. That's why that remains of that was still found in that. Uh, so that's uh, that's one thing which was critical evidence in this entire case. Now, whether um, you know uh, she was murdered and then um, you know uh, she was burnt or gang raped, whatever's the chronology of events, one doesn't quite know. But obviously, uh, the fact that she was burnt uh, means that some kind of an incident happened where they wanted to destroy the evidence. That's why the police are suspecting that um, you know rape uh, uh, has happened and then the body has been burned to destroy evidence. Uh, that's what we have as of now. Uh, the Congress MLA is there, the former BJP MLA is there, the collector is going to reach the spot very soon. The SP, of course, reached first thing in the morning. Uh, they're suspecting that five people are involved in this. Three of them have been detained. Uh, and. Um, like you heard Dheeraj Gujar himself, he's the Congress MLA there, uh, saying that you know they will want that this case is fast-tracked. You know that the crimes in Rajasthan have led to a BJP versus Congress sparring over the past few days. There have been some pretty heinous crimes that have happened in Rajasthan. But along with that, the Chief Minister has also responded and said that each time the crime has happened, his uh, uh, police has actually acted very promptly. And in fact, in the Jodhpur case, uh, if you remember, we were talking about that. Uh, he said that the char uh, charge sheet and the chalan was paced, uh, you know, uh, uh, done in it within about 10 days of the crime happening and the suspects were arrested in few hours. So one thing is clear what the, the Congress is saying is that, you know, the police each time has acted very, very promptly. And of course, the crimes are completely heinous and there is no denying that. Right, Harsha. And perhaps another aspect to this whole crime and not taking away from the just how heinous this crime really is, but uh, Rajasthan is also going for elections. BJP has been uh, uh, making a lot of protests in the state, raising the issue of law and order situation. This again um, is likely to see a lot of protests. Well, yes, definitely, because anything that happens in Rajasthan now is politically loaded. But Sneha, having said that, every election this happens. So whether it's a Congress government or a BJP government, law and order and crimes against women is always an issue. Remember the larger sociological context of Rajasthan? It's a, it's a feudal state. It has very strong feudal rate uh, 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 roots. The status of women in terms of education, etc., has not been the best. It doesn't have the best record either in education, maternal, infant mortality. There are a lot of societal factors which are built into that. So, uh, you know, whether it's a BJP government or a Congress government, and I'm saying this because I've reported out of Rajasthan for 21 years, whether it's a BJP government or a Congress government, there is always a bad record of crimes against women in Rajasthan. The rapes in Rajasthan have always been high. The, uh, and, you know, it's always been among the top five worst performing states as far as uh, crimes of rape are concerned. So that's always been the case, the politics aside. And I think as reporters, we need to put that on the table for our viewers. Well, Harsha, thank you very much for those details. Very, very important insights from Harsha at this point. Elections or no elections, what's really happening on the ground is extremely shocking. And the fact that this continues to happen year on year, irrespective of whichever government be there, is perhaps something that every state in India needs to look into very carefully, a heinous crime being reported by Harsha Kumari Singh from, Rajasthan's, from Rajasthan. And the Allahabad High Court allows the Archaeological Survey of India's survey to determine if the Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi was built on a temple or not. The mosque committee had challenged the survey of the mosque, which is next to the iconic Kashi Vishwanath temple in Varanasi. And now they have said they will approach the Supreme Court to challenge the High Court order. Yes, the survey has been done in the affidavit. And they have said that when the SI has given the affidavit, there is no meaning to doubt it. And the SI has given the affidavit, it has been done in the whole survey. It has been done in the survey. डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट का फैसला तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी हो चुका है ये भी आदेश में हुआ और सिविल सूट जल्दी से जल्दी डिसाइड किया जाए इसमें कोई एडजमेंट ना हो ये भी कोर्ट ने आदेश पर
इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने ज्ञानव्यापी मस्जिद में एएसआई सर्वे करने का आदेश दे दिया है हमारे साथ इस समय मुस्लिम पक्ष के वकील श्री अखलाक अहमद जी हैं हम उनसे जानना चाहेंगे कि क्या है उनका इस अब इस फैसले के बारे में उनका क्या कहना है जजमेंट तो हम लोगों ने अभी देखा नहीं है लेकिन अभी इस फैसले के खिलाफ जो तो मानव सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो है एस एल दाखिल करेंगे नहीं नहीं ये बताएं कि अभी आप पहले फैसले के बारे में कुछ बताएं कि क्या फैसला आया है फैसला हम लोगों ने देखा नहीं सिर्फ जो तो अभी जबानी सुना गया है कि हमारा रिवीजन जो है तो अरे हमारी रीट खारिज कर दिया ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने अब अंदर अंदर क्या जजमेंट लिखा है क्या कंडीशन लिखी है इसके बारे में जब तक तो पूरा जजमेंट न देखा जाए कुछ कहा नहीं जा सकता आगे का क्या मूव रहेगा आगे ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे उसके खिलाफ निश्चित निश्चित जाएंगे एकदम जाएंगे कन्फर्म में जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जी जी या आपके आप आपस के लोगों की बातचीत हाँ, आपस के पहले से ही तैयारी नहीं पहले से ही तैयारी है इनकेस ये हमेशा से होता है कि अगर कोई आदमी बैकअप लाइन सेकंड लाइन लेके चलता है तो ये आपने पहले से हमने पहले तक इनकेस ऐसा कुछ होता है तो ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे क्या अभी अभी तक आपको क्या जानकारी मिली है कि क्या कब से सर्वे दोबारा शुरू अभी कुछ नहीं हमको रास्ते में सिर्फ हमको ये जानकारी हुई कि साहब हमारी जो तो रीट खारिज कर दिया है अब क्या उसमें कंडीशंस लिखी हैं और क्या है कब से शुरू होगा तब तक जजमेंट ना देखा जाए आगे कुछ कारण टूडे अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट हैज ऑर्डर्ड एएसआई सर्वे एंड वी आर होपफुल दैट जस्टिस विल बी डन एज दिस मस्जिद इज अराउंड सिक्स हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड मुस्लिम आर ऑफरिंग नमाज देर फ्रॉम लास्ट सिक्स हंड्रेड ईयर्स and we also want that uh, the places of worship act uh, should be enforced all over india on uh, on all the places of worship so that uh, no one, no another controversy can be raised as far as uh, places of worship are concerned is ka hriday se swagat karta hu aur mujhe pura vishwas hai ki asi ke survey ke madhyam se sachai bahar aayegi और ज्ञानव्यापी का जो विवाद है श्री राम जन्मभूमि विवाद की तरह इसका भी निर्णय होगा निस्तारण होगा और शिव भक्तों की जो मनोभावना है मनोकामना है वो पूर्ण होगी and my colleague alok pandey joins us for more on this alok while we know what happened in the court and what the reactions have emerged tell us just the context and the importance of what is happening in the court why is this so crucial uh well i'd like to just start uh, very briefly uh, with an update before i answer that question so uh, the district magistrate of varanasi mr rajalingam just spoke to the media and he said uh, that uh, Uh, that as soon as the asi approaches them they are fully prepared to cooperate with the archaeological survey of india and the survey can begin whenever the asi wants to so that's number 1 number 2 you heard the side of the mosque committee saying that they're going to approach the supreme court uh, when they do it today tomorrow it's a dif- uh, little difficult to say but yeah it's uh, it's it's natural that the next course of action for the mosque committee will be approaching the supreme court uh, the significance of what has happened today and of the entire ganwapi case as such lies in the fact that this is you know one of the three uh, disputes that uh, the bjp used in the early 90s if you remember ayodhya being one of them uh, gyanwapi being the second and mathura being the third and it propelled them to power so to say so it's an important uh, uh, it's, it's 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 something important in that sense uh, also just the strategic location of the mosque and the kachi vishwanath temple next to each other uh, in the holy town of varanasi the fact that you know this has been going on for a while while the ganwabi dispute as such is decades old or centuries old perhaps uh, the latest round has started after 2021 when five women approached uh, the varanasi court a lower court in varanasi asking for year long access to a shrine inside the mosque complex now that triggered a chain of events one of them being that the local court ordered a lawyer led survey which then in turn uh, its report got leaked then you know there was this entire talk that a purported shivling had been found in the wazukhana uh, area of the mosque now Uh, the supreme court intervened that area was sealed and then the court litigation went on uh, this latest survey the si survey that the district court ordered stems from a separate petition but filed by four of the original petitioners uh, before the district court where they said that the ganwapi mosque was built uh, you know on the base of a hindu temple that existed and that the only way to determine this was through a scientific survey the district court agreed a survey started but then the supreme court the mosque committee approached the supreme court that stayed the survey Uh, sent the case to the Allahabad High Court, which has today ruled that uh, the survey can go on. 
Uh, the exact details of uh, the order are not uh, available to us right now because they've not been uploaded yet, so we're awaiting that. But the operative part of the order this morning by the Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court was that the survey can go on, and within the contours and parameters of the ASI's affidavit before them, or before the Chief Justice's court, that the structure will not be harmed in any way. Uh, so that is what has happened, and we await uh, further details as in when the MOS committee approaches the Supreme Court, or as in when the ASI decides to uh, restart their survey at Gyanwapi. Right, right, Alok, thank you very much for all of those details. And uh, BJP had issued a whip for the MPs in the Lok Sabha, but there was massive ruckus in the Lok Sabha and it was adjourned till 2 o'clock. The ruckus was for the demand for a discussion on the Manipur issue. Now, what's happened in Ra Rajya Sabha? There's been ruckus in Rajya Sabha as well over the issue of uh, Manipur. They've been wanting to discuss uh, the issue of Manipur in Lok Sabha. The speaker was again not in his chair today. Yesterday, um, sources very close to the Lok Sabha speaker had said that he would not come to the parliament till the MPs from the opposition as well as the Treasury benches uh, behaved themselves to quote unquote. Uh, these are the visuals that you can see of the ruckus that has been happening. And um, we have got my colleague Himanshu right now for more on this. Himanshu, inside the parliament, there was ruckus in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, as well important bills that were likely to be discussed today. What would the status for that be? Himanshu, there were some important bills that were scheduled to be discussed in the parliament today, uh, whether it be the Delhi Services Bill or the Data Protection uh, Bill. All of these things were scheduled, but there's been ruckus in both the houses. Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. How is this going to um, pan out? Well, in Raj Sabha, the Raj Sabha chairman has called an important meeting of floor leaders at 1 p.m. to resolve the stalemate. Uh, today, when the House started, Raj Sabha chairman categorically said that he is ready to allow a short duration discussion on Manipur without any time limit. Because as per rules 176, uh, there is a time schedule in which a short duration discussion is, is to be held. But today, Raj Sabha chairman has offered to the opposition that if the government is ready for a discussion under rule 176, he is ready to admit that uh, notice uh, with a rider that there will be no time limit and the opposition MPs will be given as much time as they need to submit their stand on Manipur in Raj Sabha. Uh, and then he said that I'm calling a meeting of floor leaders at 1 p.m. to resolve this stalemate. Uh, but the problem is that soon after, uh, Malikarjun Kharge got up and he said that Rule 267 should be given precedence over Rule 16 as the, precede, as the rule is. And that is why opposition still is insisting for a debate under Rule 267 or on Manipur. And short while ago, Raj Sabha chairman in fact said that I had a lot leader of opposition to make a submission, but unfortunately he made a political uh, statement again. So clearly, while there was a serious effort today to resolve the stalemate in Raj Sabha, uh, there appears to be again a hurdle uh, there. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the 1 p.m. meeting. But for the moment, the Raj Sabha business is going on. But in Lok Sabha again, a second continuous day of ruckus on Delhi Services Bill. And we'll have to wait and see because there's very important legislation uh, which is listed. In fact, I can tell you that Piyush Goel, who's the leader of the House in Raj Sabha, uh, has said two very important things. One, that Home Minister is ready to come to Raj Sabha to respond to a debate on Manipur and we'll have to take uh, his convenience to see as to what time his free trading can come to Raj Sabha and make a response to the questions that opposition wants to raise on Manipur. And second indication is that Delhi Services Bill is likely to come up before Raj Sabha on Monday. But for that, it has to be first approved by Lok Sabha. We'll have to wait and see at 2 o'clock when the House resumes in Lok Sabha as to how soon government can actually initiate the discussion on the Delhi Services Bill that it desperately needs. Uh, we will now take you to a short interview I did with the Aam Aadmi Party leader Raghav Chadda on the Delhi Services Bill and what will be the Aam Aadmi Party stand when it is taken up in Parliament. Delhi Services Bill, I am with Raghav Chadda. 
जहाँ तक आंकड़ों का सवाल है बहुत महत्व होता है लोकतंत्र में सरकार का दावा है कि लोकसभा में बहुमत हमारे साथ है और राज्यसभा में भी वाई कांग्रेस पार्टी और अब बीजू जनता दल ने भी ऐलान कर दिया है समर्थन का टीडीपी ने लोकसभा में भी ऐलान कर दिया है तो आप कैसे इस इस बिल का विरोध करेंगे क्योंकि सरकार दावा कर रही है कि आंकड़े हमने जुटा लिए हैं दोनों सदन में देखिए पहले तो मैं ये कह दूं कि वाई कांग्रेस हो या बीजेडी हो ये दोनों पार्टियां देश के दो बड़े राज्यों में सरकारें चला रही हैं राज्य सरकारें चला रही हैं कई सालों से चला रही हैं और मुझे लगता था कि ये दोनों पार्टियाँ इस बिल का महत्व समझेंगी कि ये बिल किस प्रकार से राज्य की शक्तियों को ध्वस्त कर रहा है लेकिन आ, उन्होंने आ, शायद कोई कंपल्शन्स के मजबूरियों के चलते ये फैसला लिया कि वो इस बिल का समर्थन करेंगी और इसका विरोध नहीं करेंगी तो मुझे एक शेर याद आता है आ, बड़ा पुराना शेर है कि ज़रूर कोई मजबूरियां रही होंगी यूं ही कोई बेवफा नहीं होता सच कहने की बड़ी तमन्ना है लेकिन क्या करें हौसला नहीं होता तो ज़रूर उनकी कोई खास मजबूरियां रही होंगी जिन मजबूरियों के चलते उन्होंने संविधान और लोकतंत्र के विरुद्ध जाते ये फैसला लिया है वेल वी हैव लॉट्स मोर लाइंड अप फॉर यू बट फॉर नाउ फर्स्ट अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक दी 23 इयर्स ऑफ द बिग फाइट दिस शो इज नॉट जस्ट एन ऑर्डिनरी डिबेट शो बट इट इज अ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी in service of our viewers ND TV for news you can trust no sensationalism no ugly debates no agenda we strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. undeniable we're facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of ndtv's six month long campaign building a blueprint for climate action the climate clock is ticking but we're just in time we have a surprise for you we're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is uh, i don't know uh, satyan idla jeff is a bill gates for me Nehru place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we are on is yours. was fast right but tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt and that's how i like to roll 
टेक्नोलॉजी तो आप सभी के पास है बट वॉट यू नीड इज एवरीथिंग एल्स मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ एन डी टीवी नेटवर्क पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard, you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Breaking news to in-depth analysis, covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely And the digital, the, the digital Personal Data Protection Bill 2023 is set to be introduced in the Lok Sabha. Of course, the Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. amid ruckus over the Manipur issue. Now, the bill was approved by the Union Cabinet earlier this month. It's a, it's a bill that opposition has raised a lot of concerns about. Rajya Sabha MPs can only make non-binding recommendations in this particular case. The last-minute changes have been, that have been made to this bill have also raised quest, have, questions have been raised by the opposition regarding the last-minute changes also that have been made. And they say that their concerns still persist over this, particularly about privacy. Now, uh, the opposition and the activists also have raised concerns over the data protection bill. And a mass burial of tribal victims of Manipur's three-month-long ethnic clashes has been put on hold. The Manipur High Court in an urgent hearing at 6 a.m. ordered status quo on the land of the proposed burial site. The court... And I'm being joined by my colleague Ratnadeep right now for more on this. Ratnadeep, in fact, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs has also written to both the groups involved in this. That's right. In fact, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, we would like to take, uh, uh, we'd like to actually inform what has happened th from this morning. Uh, first, uh, uh, one of the major uh, uh, Kuki Zomi uh, tribal group, uh, in Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum, uh, had come on record to say that last night Ministry of Home Affairs had requested them to uh, put uh, their plans of burial of 35 uh, tribal uh, uh, people, uh, dead bodies who have uh, died in the violence uh, that has taken place in the past uh, three months on hold uh, for five days. So uh, the, uh, the tribal groups responded to MHA saying that, uh, you know, uh, they, have, they gave five demands uh, and uh, they wanted a written assurance from uh, center uh, and then they would put it on hold. Uh, to that, MHA uh, wrote back to uh, both the Kuki and the uh, Meite civil societies from both uh, the tribal as well as the non-tribal civil societies saying that uh, the issue of, uh, you know, the last rights of the victims of the violence would be resolved in seven days' time. So MHA bought time for seven days. Meanwhile, uh, 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 you know, civil society group uh, had uh, filed a PIL at the uh, Manipur High, uh, High Court. It was not listed uh, for hearing uh, uh, for today, but it was an unlisted matter. But uh, the, uh, you know, the counsel of the petitioner as well as the state uh, this morning met the acting chief justice at his res residence at 5 a.m. saying that, you know, this is this has to be taken up in the uh, court urgently because uh, at the site of uh, that the proposed site of the uh, burial, 
uh, of the you know 35 uh, bodies there is a mob building up on both sides remember since yesterday uh, while uh, you know the tribal groups have taken uh, over that area that patch of land there was heavy security deployment and outside that security security ring you had the non tribal the Métis people also there so uh, uh, in fact the Métis groups had objected to the location uh, uh, of the you know uh, proposed uh, site of uh, burial of the 35 uh, you know, uh, Kuki Zomi uh, uh, tribal victims. And therefore, uh, the High Court actually took up the matter. Uh, this uh, morning at 6 a.m., uh, there was a, a bench, uh, two-member uh, two bench, uh, led by the Acting Chief Justice uh, M.V. Murli Dharan, and uh, the High Court in an interim order had asked the central government, the state, and all the stakeholders involving the civil, civil societies as well to maintain status quo on the land. They have asked more security in and around the land, and they have asked all the stakeholder groups to try and uh, solve this uh, issue right. amicably so the high court has uh, stepped in there is an interim uh, status quo until the next uh, hearing at the high court uh, in this PIL right Ratnadeep thank you very much for all of those details it's time for a short break for now A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the climate explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world.
23 years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust. Welcome back. The security forces have conducted flag marches across Nu and other parts of uh, Haryana amid instances of violence. There were overnight instances of violence reported from Nu. Uh, in Haryana, there were instances of vandalism of two mosques. The police have said that there's been no damage to the structure as well as no injuries or deaths which have been reported in those instances. They've also said there were around 10 to 15 people, a mob of around 10 to 15 people who attempted to vandalize the mosque. However, they say that the team of police reached the mosque minutes after the reports of fire had emerged and there's heavy deployment of police forces uh, across Nu. Internet sus services have also been suspended in three districts of Haryana and subdivisions of Gurugram. And my colleague Vedant has sent us this crowd report. I come to you from Tauru, which is approximately 10 to 15 kilometers from Nu, which has been the epicenter of the communal violence that we've been witnessing in this particular area of Haryana in the past three days. Now, despite the government's assurances that there are no incidents of violence being reported, just yesterday night, uh, here outside this particular mosque in the Tauru village, we saw that there was an attempt by a mob of 10 to 15 people to torch this particular mosque. That attempt could not be successful because the SP and uh, the police in charge, uh, Mr. Bijarnia, he came to the spot immediately uh, with uh, several fire tenders and uh, the blaze was uh, put out immediately as per the police. But the police also says that now uh, an investigation is underway and the 10 to 15 people who are actually the miscreants behind this attempted vandalism are now being identified by the police. And here you can see the kind of police deployment that we are seeing and this is not just here in this particular area of Tauru but across uh, Tauru and across parts of Nu, where this morning we also saw flag marches being conducted by the police. Uh, we are seeing heavy police deployment and Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar has said that they've appealed to the people. They've also had talks with community representatives and Haryana police continue to say that no incident of violence has been reported in the past uh, 24 hours. Now in this particular incident of attempted vandalism, there was no injury, there was no damage to the religious structure and uh, nor was there any uh, casualties or deaths reported. This was just an attempt at uh, torching this particular religious structure, this mosque here. But uh, immediately the SP and members of the Haryana police actually came to the spot and doused the blaze. This was not just one religious structure that was uh, uh, where there was attempted vandalism, but another uh, mosque, uh, the Punjabi Mohalla Mosque here in Tauru. A similar incident was reported there as well, but no damage to the religious structure, no injury or death. But police deployment continues and such isolated incidents of uh, attempted vandalism, uh, attempted um, violence are being witnessed still in parts of Haryana. In Tauru, in Nu, with camera person Manoj Thakur Vedant for NDTV. I come to you from the Palra village in Gurugram where migrant workers continue to leave. Many of them say that they live in constant fear. That is why they're going back to their hometowns. Many of them are from Assam, uh, border areas of West Bengal, and they're all going back to their homes. 
they say that uh, till the time there's police, they feel safety, but otherwise they're living in a constant sense of fear. Let's get a sense from some of these people. Sir, apna naam batayi. Asrab. Sir, ye batayi. Aap log tamam log yahan par apna saman lekar ja rahe hain wapis. Kya karan hai jiski wajah se aap sab kuch apna chhod kar yahan par ja rahe hain wapis? Sir, karan ye hai. Ham log achhe se tha yahan koi dikko nahi tha. Porsu dosi kare baje kare. उसी टाइम कुछ बंदा आया था बीस तीस ऐसा होगा आके थोड़ा गाली गुलिस किया करा सब यहाँ से जाओ मतलब हिंदू मुसलमान वाली बात आ गया था हम लोग यहाँ से डर के चले गया था फिर वो लोग चार तो इतने दिन कहाँ रहे आप लोग आसपास में इधर उधर छप्पन इधर छत्तावन सेक्टर इधर रह रहा था फिर वो लोग बोला चार बजे फिर आऊँगा आया था प्रशासन भी आया था प्रशासन कम से कम पचास साठ प्रशासन भी आया था प्रशासन से वो लोग थोड़ा बहसबाजी किया प्रशासन कह रहा कोई दिक्कत नहीं कोई परेशानी नहीं हम लोग है तुम लोग रोटी बनाओ खाओ दो मस्त करो तो अब अब इसके बाद उसके जब परसों की आप बात कर रहे हैं उसके बाद फिर से कोई ऐसा इंसिडेंट हुआ जिसमें लोग आप यहाँ पर तमाम अनवेरीफाइड ऐसे वीडियोस भी सामने आए कल कुछ मारपीट हुई यहाँ पर हाँ, कल कल कुछ हुआ था लेकिन हम था नहीं हम हाँ, हम कहीं और था अभी आया मैंने हाँ, कल कुछ बंदा उधर था हाँ, तो कुछ मारपीट हुआ कल कल मारपीट हुआ जी पुलिस किस तरीके से सेफ्टी यहाँ पर क्या पुलिस थी लगातार यहाँ पर पुलिस बहुत हम लोग को सहयोग की थी क्या बहुत हेल्प किया लेकिन क्या कारण है की आप लोग देखिए मनोज जी फिर ऑल्सो शो दैम कि आप पूरा पूरा सामान जो जो आपके पास था यहाँ पर सब कुछ लेकर जा रहे हैं जा रहा हूँ क्यों कहाँ जा रहे हैं बंगाल जा रहा हूँ अपना इलाका जा रहा हूँ घर जा रहा हूँ क्यों यहाँ तो हमारे पास कोई है ही नहीं ऐसा कोई पुलिस वाला था ठीक है लेकिन किस कितने टाइम तक रहेगा पुलिस जितने जितने टाइम पुलिस वाला है उतने टाइम उम्मीद है कि वापस आप आएंगे यहाँ पर कभी कुछ अभी सोचा है कि इतने तो डर हमारे अंदर है अभी तो उम्मीद नहीं है जो हम लोग आएंगे और आप पूरी फैमिली के साथ जा रहे हैं पूरी फैमिली के साथ कौन कौन है आपकी फैमिली में हमारा बच्चा था बच्चा मैंने भेज दिया फैमिली था सब देखो फैमिली वाले है यहाँ जितने हैं सब कोई कुटी में काम करता है कोई ऑफिस में काम करता है कोई कपड़ा बिलने वाला काम करता है सब यही है हम लोग का and uh, as you can see here uh, they've uh, packed all of their stuff whatever they had and they're uh, loading all of it into cars and trucks and they're leaving for their homes they say that when there's police they do feel a sense of uh, uh, security and safety but because of uh, repeated such incidents yesterday also as many of these people say there was another uh, incident of violence where a couple of them were actually beaten up uh, let's also get in a sense from some people here sir apna naam bataiye दिलीप कुमार पांडे यहाँ पर आप देख रहे हैं सर कि ये लोग अपना पूरा सामान बांध कर जा रहे हैं कहीं ना कहीं सबके लिए ये बहुत मुश्किल है इस तरीके के लगातार इस तरीके के क्लैशेज होना लगातार मारपीट होना सभी के लिए मुश्किल है रहना मुश्किल है हम लोग इन्हीं लोग हम लोग भी डर लगता है हम तो बिहार से पंडित आदमी हूँ जी फिर भी इन लोगों के साथ में रहने का डर लग रहा है मैं भी रूम खाली करके भागू तो इसमें ना इन लोगों की गलती है ना आपकी गलती है ये कहीं गलती बताते हैं की अपनी घर में रह भाई रहे घर में नहीं रहे तो बाहर जाएगा बहुत दिक्कत होगा उनकी मर्जी तो घर के अंदर सब लोग रहे सेफ से हाँ, रहे, रहे हाँ। पुलिस भी आता है उनको है तुम रहो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है मगर लोग नहीं मान रहे हैं जी तो ऑफ कोर्स पीपल टेलिंग आज सर इट्स इट्स नॉट इजी फॉर एनी वन नो मैटर व्हाट योर रिलीजन इट्स इट्स नॉट इजी फॉर एनी वन टू लिव इन दिस काइंड ऑफ एन एनवायरनमेंट टू लिव इन दिस काइंड ऑफ एन एटमॉस्फेयर बट एज एज यू कैन सी पेट्रोलिंग बीइंग डन दिस हरियाणा फायर एंड इमरजेंसी सर्विसेज वी सी वी सो जस्ट वाइल बैक आल्सो हाउ फ्लैग मार्चेस एक्सेट्रा वर बीइंग कंडक्टेड बाय द हरियाणा एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन बाय द हरियाणा पुलिस नाउ थ्री मेंबर कमेटी हैज आल्सो बीइंग फॉर्मड टू कांस्टेंटली लुक एट social media because a lot of unverified reports a lot of unverified videos doing the rounds they are also flaring up violence but the situation for these migrant workers is really the worst because they are leaving uh, with whatever little they have been able to uh, gather in the past uh, many years they are leaving and they say that they have uh, no hope of returning uh, to the national capital to gurugram where they've been working for the past many years in gurugram with camera person manoj thakur vedant for ndtv right and we had reported about how internet services have been banned uh, uh, for uh, in certain areas of haryana including gurgaon and uh, three other districts but there's an update to that the restrictions have been removed for now from till 4 o'clock and this particularly because to facilitate students who have to download their cards admit cards and all for various examinations so the restrictions in internet services or the ban which was there in three districts of uh, haryana including new faridabad palwal 
as well as subdivisions of Gurugram, including Manesar and Sona, have been for now lifted till 4 p.m. And the Allahabad High Court has allowed the Archaeological Survey of India to conduct its survey to determine if the Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi was built on a temple. The Mosque Committee had challenged the survey of the mosque, which is next to the iconic Kashi Vishwanath Temple in Varanasi. They will now approach the Supreme Court to challenge the High Court order. Yes, the survey of the survey of the compliance of the survey of the survey. साथ ही साथ उन्होंने कहा कि जब एसआई ने एफिडेविट दिया है तो कोई मतलब नहीं है उसको डाउट करने का और जो एसआई ने एफिडेविट दिया उसके कंप्लायंस में ये पूरा सर्वे किया जाए डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट का फैसला तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी हो चुका है ये भी आदेश में हुआ और सिविल सूट जल्दी से जल्दी डिसाइड किया जाए इसमें कोई एडजमेंट ना हो ये भी कोर्ट ने आदेश पाया इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने ज्ञानव्यापी मस्जिद में एएसआई सर्वे करने का आदेश दे दिया है हमारे साथ इस समय मुस्लिम पक्ष के वकील श्री अखलाक अहमद जी हैं हम उनसे जानना चाहेंगे कि क्या है उनका इस अब इस फैसले के बारे में उनका क्या कहना है जजमेंट तो हम लोगों ने अभी देखा नहीं है लेकिन अभी फैसले के खिलाफ जो तो मानवूल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो है एस एल पी दाखिल करेंगे नहीं नहीं ये बताएं कि अभी आप पहले फैसले के बारे में कुछ बताएं कि क्या फैसला आया है फैसला हम लोगों ने देखा नहीं सिर्फ जो तो अभी जबानी सुना गया है कि हमारा रिविजन जो है तो अरे हमारी रीट खारिज कर दिया ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट अच्छा अब अंदर अंदर क्या जजमेंट लिखा है क्या कंडीशन लिखी है इसके बारे में जब तक तो पूरा जजमेंट ना देखा जाए कुछ कहा नहीं जा सकता आ, आगे का क्या मूव रहेगा आगे हमारे ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे उसके खिलाफ निश्चित निश्चित जाएंगे एकदम जाएंगे कन्फर्म है जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जी जी आपके आपस के लोगों की बातचीत पहले से ही तैयारी नहीं पहले से ही तैयारी है इनकेस ये हमेशा से होता है कि अगर कोई आदमी बैकअप लाइन सेकेंड लाइन लेके चलता है तो ये आपने पहले से हमने पहले इनकेस ऐसा कुछ होता है तो वहाँ ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे क्या अभी अभी तक आपको क्या जानकारी मिली है कि क्या कब से दोबारा शुरू कर अभी कुछ नहीं अभी हमको रास्ते में सिर्फ हमको ये जानकारी हुई कि साहब हमारी जो तो रीट खारिज कर दिया है अब क्या उसमें कंडीशंस लिखी और क्या है कब से शुरू होगा जब तक जजमेंट ना देखा जाए आगे कुछ कहा नहीं सकता मामला सब जुडीज है सो उस पर कोई टिप्पणी करना उचित नहीं है जो यहाँ पे जो सर्वे के लिए आर्डर हुआ वजू करना छोड़ के उस आर्डर के क्रम में ही ए एस पे आया था और फिर क्योंकि माननीय उच्च न्यायालय के स्टे होने के कारण फिर टीम यहाँ से चली गई है और फिर से जैसे आज ऑर्डर आया हुआ है उसके क्रम में वो जैसे मदद मांगेंगे हम उनकी जो भी सहयोग चाहिए वो प्रदान करेंगे टुडे अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट हैज ऑर्डर्ड ए एस आई सर्वे एंड वी आर होपफुल दैट जस्टिस विल बी डन एज दिस मस्जिद इज अराउंड 600 हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड मुस्लिम्स आर ऑफरिंग नमाज देर फ्रॉम लास्ट सिक्स हंड्रेड ईयर्स एंड वी ऑल्सो वॉन्ट दैट दी प्लेस ऑफ वर्शिप एक्ट शुड बी इन्फोज all over india on uh, on all the places of worship so that uh, no one, no another controversy can be raised as far as uh, places of worship are concerned iska hriday se swagat karta hu aur mujhe pura vishwas hai ki asi ki survey ke madhyam se sachai bahar aayegi aur gyan vyapi ka jo vivad hai sri ram janmabhoomi vivad ki tarah iska bhi निर्णय होगा निस्तारण होगा और शिव भक्तों की जो मनोभावना है मनोकामना है वो पूर्ण होगी डिबेट हैज मेनी फैसेट पहैप्स नो वन राइट आंसर लेफ्ट राइट एंड सेंटर कॉन्वर्सेशन दैट गेट टू द कोर ऑफ द डिबेट We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change, and it's happening not in some far-off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now, and it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety-filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that. 
the climate explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we are just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru Place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV trust Welcome back. Now, the parliament has been seeing a logjam over the Manipur issue for last several days. In fact, since the time the parliament session actually began. Today also, there was uh, uh, the, the Lok Sabha had to be adjourned till 2 o'clock amid ruckus. There was ruckus in the Rajya Sabha as well. Now, the opposition has said that they are ready to drop the demand for discussion under Rule 267 to resolve the deadlock. To remind our viewers, it was essentially um, a deadlock over modalities of how the opposition wanted a discussion on the Manipur issue and how the government looked at it. Now, the government and the ministers have again and again said that they are willing to discuss Manipur issue. But the opposition wanted it under specific rules, Rule 267 being one. Now the opposition has said, we are ready to let go of that specific demand. The, the discussion on Manipur can be held on any other rule as well. But the Prime Minister will have to give a statement on the Manipur issue, is what the opposition has now demanded. The opposition also wants time to be extended on the allotted time to discuss the Manipur issue. 
and I'm being joined by my colleague Akhilesh right now. Akhilesh, so uh, a big rope being given by the opposition now. They're saying they're willing to, they're going to, they're willing to uh, step down on their demand for Rule 267, but they want Prime Minister to make a statement. Any statement or specifically in the Parliament? That's correct. In fact, uh, there were series of meetings which had happened. In fact, uh, a leader of the House, uh, Mr. Piyush Goel, and Parliamentary Affairs Minister, Mr. Pehla Joshi, they both walked in uh, to Mr. Malikajud Kharge's room in Parliament, uh, where other opposition leaders were also sitting. The government made it very clear that it is ready to discuss. And of course, uh, uh, as far as the rule issue is concerned, because so far the tussle was that on, under which rule the discussion should take place in the upper house. Now the opposition parties are saying that they are ready to relax uh, their demand about uh, that uh, the discussion should take place only under Rule 267. They are saying that the discussion can take place under any other rule, but the time duration should be extended. But of course, the key demand of the opposition remains the same, that the Prime Minister should come to the House and make a statement on Manipur. So that demand, the opposition party is not retracting, but on the other demand of the rule, uh, the, the opposition parties have seemed to be you know, softening their stand. So there's a possibility now that the deadlock, which has been continuing in the upper house, uh, you know, may be, may be broken, broken because uh, the government and the opposition both are uh, you know, reaching to a common ground. And of course, the chairman taking a lead and he has been inviting, he has been talking to uh, opposition and both the ruling side. And in fact, at 1, 1 p.m. also, there's a meeting uh, at the chairman's office. So of course, uh, there's a there's a serious attempt by the chairman also to uh, break the deadlock and then the government also uh, reaching out to the opposition parties. Right. Thank you very much, Akhilesh, for all of those details. And that's all we have for you in this bulletin. Join us at 1 o'clock for all the details with Gargi Rawat. The a debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the climate explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff is a Bill Gates probably. Nehru place. Sake. Sake. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav. Aur ab mein aagaya hoon NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. 
you turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. And welcome, you're watching NDTV. I'm Gargi Rao. Now, the big uh, breaking news coming in right now. Uh, the opposition has now agreed uh, to not insist on a discussion on Manipur under a certain section, under Rule 267. So they're willing to drop that demand. That is the big breaking news right now. Remember, uh, since the monsoon session has begun, the opposition has been uh, insisting on a discussion on Manipur, uh, which under a section, uh, under a section 267, under a Rule 267, Six, seven, and this is something the government was not agreeable to. Uh, this meant that all business would have to be cleared and there would be a discussion on Manipur. However, the government was only agreeable to a short duration discussion and it's over this issue that we have seen this standoff or impasse continuing in Parliament uh, and uh, earlier today as well. We've seen repeated adjournments but now after discussion and Mr. Malik Arjun Kharge also meeting uh, with the Rajya Sabha chairman, uh, the opposition has done a, something of a climb down. It has said it is ready to drop this, uh, to drop uh, the demand for discussion under Rule 267. However, they will are still insisting that the Prime Minister give a statement on Manipur. Remember, that is another point the opposition has been insistent on that the Prime Minister make a statement in the House on Manipur. The government on its part has repeatedly said that it is ready for a discussion on Manipur and in fact blamed the opposition uh, for not allowing a discussion on Manipur. But the issue was under which rule that discussion would take place. But now the opposition has said it is ready to uh, change its demand over uh, rule uh, discussion under Rule 267 to resolve this deadlock. Let's go across to Megha. Let's go across to Megha now for more. And Megha, so uh, finally, uh, you know, hopefully a way out of this impasse with the opposition now agreeing uh, to drop their demand for a discussion under Rule 267. Well, Gargi, at this moment, I think we are awaiting a little more clarity. So I would request that, you know, we, uh, we sort of uh, hold on with that information for some more time because this is what the opposition is saying, that they might be ready to let go of the demand for a discussion under Rule 267, but they have not clarified whether they are talking about Manipur or they are talking about the other issue, which uh, possibly could be the Delhi Ordinance Bill. So if this, is, uh, this, if this is really about Manipur, the opposition will have to give a statement, make it uh, absolutely clear that they are ready to let go of uh, uh, of their demand and not ask for the suspension of all the legislative businesses, that they would be ready for a short duration uh, discussion. Now, a short duration discussion is something what the government has been saying every day, that we are ready for a discussion under Rule 176. So let's have a discussion with no upper limit. There, the entire contention from the side of the opposition was that we want a freewheeling discussion. The government said we are ready for a freewheeling discussion. We will not put an upper limit to it. You can have your discussions as long as you want. Uh, and yet the opposition was uh, insisting that they want all the other legislative businesses to be officially suspended. This is an emergency provision and to have a discussion under 267. At this moment, there are indications that they might relinquish the demand of theirs. But we are awaiting a proper official statement on the side of the opposition to say that on the topic of Manipur, to make it absolutely clear that on the topic of Manipur, they are ready to have a short duration discussion. So it's not going to happen under... Uh, 276, 267, I beg your pardon, it would happen under 176. It would be their short duration discussion, which is what everybody has been ready for in terms of uh, the government and a couple of other parties in the upper house who have, uh, who are parties seem to be friendly to the government. The chair has been saying that every day I, I ask for a discussion that's imperative that we must have a discussion on Manipur and let's have a, a discussion under Rule 176, but that was not acceptable to the uh, opposition. 
I'm awaiting a little more clarity on that, but these are the indications we are picking up from their side. Right, and Megha, the other two key issues are the Delhi Services Bill as well as the Data Protection Bill. Uh, what on that? Also in the uh, Lok Sabha, you had a situation where the Speaker was not coming uh, to the House. However, opposition leaders uh, did go and meet him. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Gargi. So as far as the Speaker is concerned, that story is concerned, I must uh, uh, now confirm to you that we have a confirmation from none other than the Speaker's office that the Speaker would be back uh, in the Lok Sabha uh, around 2 o'clock till later. Uh, this is uh, precisely uh, because of two reasons. One, of course, is an important day because uh, you are getting, you know, the Delhi Ordinance Bill will come up for discussion and also for voting today. There's a wait that the BJP has uh, circulated for all its members. But apart from that, I think what's important for us to note is that a lot of opposition MPs uh, which includes uh, Supriya Sole, Adiranjan Chaudhary, Shabata Rai, Farooq Abdullah. All of them have come and met the speaker. Some of them met them met the speaker early in the morning. And they have uh, requested the speaker to come back. I mean, we all know yesterday what happened. The speaker was so angry and so upset with the misbehavior, uh, alleged misbehavior of the uh, parliamentarians that he said he would not be occupying this matter in the time uh, members of the parliament learn to behave. So, uh, to assure the speaker that they will uh, they will ensure that the dignity of the chair is maintained uh, as far as the proceedings of the lower house is concerned and they've requested him to come back so most likely today you would have the speaker back in the house and especially at a time when the delhi ordinance bill will be discussed in uh voted upon you also have the data protection bill uh, which is to be introduced today so it is an important day uh, you know when in the context of legislative businesses etc all right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Mega, for joining us with those uh, details. So still waiting for some clarity on the point about the Manipur discussion. As Mega said, uh, the opposition has to come out on record and, and say that they are ready to drop the demand uh, for the discussion on Manipur under uh, Rule uh, 267, though they are still insisting that the Prime Minister make a statement on Manipur in the House. Uh, now, as uh, Mega was saying, the other important issue is the Data Protection Bill, which is to be tabled today. Uh, the opposition has raised several concerns and uh, also there were concerns that the government was introducing it as a money bill. But now uh, Kart Karthi Chidambaram has also tweeted, uh, just received a clarification that it is not being brought in as a money bill. That is important as, a, as if it was a money bill, then the Rajya Sabha could not uh, make any sort of binding uh, 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 changes to it or recommendations. But now if the government brings it as a non a money bill, it will uh, allow for that uh, to take place in the Rajya Sabha. Uh, various uh, activists have raised concerns and opposition parties as well. Uh, what are the objections? Activists say that this bill limits the scope of the Right to Information Act, uh, that the bill helps state and private entities. Uh, the government, the opposition has said the government is bypassing parliamentary procedure. That is, if they attempted to bring it as a money bill, which now uh, Congress leader Karthi Chidambaram is saying they're not bringing it as a money bill. Also concerns over corporates being left out of the ambit of the law. And government controls appointment to the board, so autonomy also compromises one of the issues or concerns raised by activists and the opposition. Now some tragic news coming in from Rajasthan, from the coaching hub Kota, where there's been yet another death by suicide in the coaching hub Kota. A student from Uttar Pradesh has died by suicide. That is the news coming in. So this year that makes it the 17th case of a student dying by suicide in Kota. Remember there have been various concerns raised, but no real solutions are found to this problem, the stress that students undergo. Let's go across to Harsha now for more on this. And Harsha, very sad news, uh, the 17th death by suicide in Kota this year. So yes, this is the 17th uh, suicide in Kota this year by a student. Um, uh, he is from Uttar Pradesh, uh, from a place called Rampur, and he was studying for medical uh, exams in uh, uh, Kota. He was found uh, to have died by suicide in his hostel room. And uh, also, um, uh, you know, the, the, the body has right now been kept in the mortuary. Uh, there are constantly these kind of suicides being reported. As we said, it's the 17th suicide that has happened in Kota. And uh, 
And in the suicide note, the, the police have discovered a suicide note where he's written that uh, nobody will be responsible uh, for my death. Uh, so um, that is a very, very sad note that he's written. He's just um, 70, uh, I think, yes, he's just about 17 years old, a very young uh, student from Kota, uh, where this unfortunate, very, very unfortunate uh, news just coming in from Kota that something like this has happened. And Harsha, once again, I know I ask you this every time, but uh, there have been concerns raised about how much stress these students undergo and various measures suggested, but really no, no sort of solution found to this. Parents continue to send their children there. This is one of the best known places in the country to prepare for these entrance exams. All right, we seem to have lost the line there with Harsha, but a very tragic, a 17th case of suicide emerging from Kota this year. Uh, moving on to news uh, again from Rajasthan, the horrific killing of a 14-year-old girl has sent shockwaves uh, through the state. The young girl's burnt uh, remains were found in a brick kiln in uh, Bhilwara early this morning, hours after the teen had left home to graze goats with her mother. She was allegedly separated from her mother and vanished, and when she didn't return, her family and villagers spread out to look for her and uh, they found her remains in the brick kiln near her home. The police found bones, a silver anklet and shoes in the still burning remains. Uh, they suspect that the girl was perhaps raped before she was killed. Uh, three local men who were caught at the spot have been taken into custody and are being questioned. नरसिंहपुरा गांव में एक छोटी बच्ची जिस जो अपने खेत पर बकरियां चराने गई थी जो वापस घर पर नहीं पहुंची है और इस इतला पर पास में कालबेलिया समाज के व्यक्ति डेरे लगाकर रहते थे कोयले निकालने का काम करते थे परिजनों और ग्रामीणों ने आशंका जताई कि पास में एक बट्टी जली हुई देखी गई थी जिसमें नाबालिग तोला का हाथ का कड़ा उस बट्टी से बाहर निकला पुलिस ने गांव वालों के साथ मिलकर रात को जिन पर शंका थी उनमें से तीन लोगों को राउंड अप कर लिया है एक आदमी की हमारे को शंका है बच्ची के कड़े और हाथ की हड्डियों से हमें ऐसा सूचना मिली भाई कि भाई उसके अंदर इस बच्ची को जलाया गया है इस घटना की मैं कठोर शब्दों में निंदा करता हूं हम ईंट से ईंट बजा देंगे सड़कों पर उतर जाएंगे इसको किसी भी कीमत पर फांसी की सजा दिलाकर रहेंगे ऐसा घटना घटी है जिस घटना की हम कोई भी व्यक्ति इसको माफ़ नहीं कर सकता अक्षम्य घटना है और जिला कलेक्टर को यहाँ पर हम बुला रहे हैं वार्ता करने के लिए और उससे बात करके इसको मुआवजा दिलाएंगे और मुआवजा दिलाने के साथ साथ हम सबकी एक ही मांग है कि तत्काल से तत्काल इसका सरकार चालान पेश कराए और चालान पेश कराने के बाद में हम लोग इसको फांसी की सजा दिलाएं तब हम लोगों को शांति मिलेगी Let's go across to Harsha for more. And Harsha, very uh, shocking and tragic case of this 14-year-old girl and a lot of anger one can imagine in the area. But three people have been taken into custody. Well, yes, you know, uh, what we are learning from the police is that yesterday this girl had gone uh, out grazing animals with her mother. Uh, as they went out, both of them got separated. The girl did not come back uh, last evening till late, actually. And that's when the people went out looking uh, for her. They couldn't find her. And in the early hours of the morning, they saw this brick kiln. Now, if you can see the visuals, this brick kiln is quite an isolated area away from the main where the village is, where the habitation is. They found smoke coming out of the brick kiln. And on investigation, uh, you know, it seemed that somebody, something had been burned there. So, of course, they informed the police. The police reached the spot. The FSL team is also there. And absolutely horrific details emerging from that that, you know, shoes, a silver anklet, a silver ornament has also been recovered. Now, the silver anklets and ornaments are very thick in Rajasthan that traditionally are worn. So, obviously, it took time for it to melt. It didn't melt, actually. So, that's the evidence that they found. They've also found human remains. The FSL will now be in a position to, uh, you know, tell, uh, tell uh, and help the police by telling uh, exactly what that points to though of course it's quite clear that some kind of a ghastly incident the police are saying rape has happened uh, with the girl and then um, you know uh, the, to destroy the evidence the body has been burnt so uh, clearly that's what it's pointing to the police believe that five people 
uh, could be involved in this. Three have been detained, um, uh, you know, early this morning. They are being questioned. Of course, it's going to lead to an, a huge amount of political sparring between the Congress and the BJP. Remember, just four months to go for an election in Rajasthan and every incident that happens, uh, you know, uh, is taken up, uh, uh, you know, acquires a political resonance. Uh, but that's going to be inevitable given that the countdown to elections in Rajasthan has begun. It's just four months away now. All right, uh, Harsha, thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. The Allahabad High Court uh, today allowed the Archaeological Survey of India survey to determine if the Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi was built on a temple. The Mosque Committee had challenged the survey of the mosque, which is next to the iconic Kashi Vishwanath Temple. They will now be approaching the Supreme Court to challenge the High Court order. The Archaeological Survey of India will continue its survey to determine if the mosque in Varanasi was built on a temple. The Mosque Committee had challenged the survey and uh, had said that uh, the Allahabad High Court has said the ASI survey of Gyanwapi Mosque complex will start. The session's court order is up upheld by the High Court. The ASI survey had been ordered by Varanasi Court on the 21st of July based on a petition by four women who claimed it was the only way to determine whether the landmark mosque was built after raising a Hindu temple. However, uh, the, there's been no permission given for any digging to take place. That permission for that will have to be sought separately. Yes, the affidavit has been done survey the affidavit. साथ ही साथ उन्होंने कहा कि जब एसआई ने एफिडेविट दिया है तो कोई मतलब नहीं है उसको डाउट करने का और जो एसआई ने एफिडेविट दिया उसके कंप्लायंस में ये पूरा सर्वे किया जाए डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट का फैसला तत्काल प्रभाव से प्रभावी हो चुका है ये भी आदेश में हुआ और सिविल सूट जल्दी से जल्दी डिसाइड किया जाए इसमें कोई एडजमेंट ना हो ये भी कोर्ट ने आदेश पर इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट ने ज्ञानव्यापी मस्जिद में एएसआई सर्वे करने का आदेश दे दिया है हमारे साथ इस समय मुस्लिम पक्ष के वकील श्री अखलाक अहमद जी हैं हम उनसे जानना चाहेंगे कि क्या है उनका इस अब इस फैसले के बारे में उनका क्या कहना है जजमेंट तो हम लोगों ने अभी देखा नहीं है लेकिन अभी फैसले के खिलाफ जो तो मानुबुल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो है एसएलपी दाखिल करेंगे नहीं नहीं ये बताएं कि अभी आप पहले फैसले के बारे में कुछ बताएं कि क्या फैसला आया है फैसला हम लोगों ने देखा नहीं सिर्फ जो तो अभी जवानी सुना गया है कि हमारा रिवीजन जो है तो अरे हमारी रीड खारिज कर दिया अनुबुल सुप्रीम कोर्ट अच्छा अब अंदर अंदर क्या जजमेंट लिखा है क्या कंडीशन लिखी है इसके बारे में जब तक तो पूरा जजमेंट ना देखा जाए कुछ कहा नहीं जा सकता आ, आगे का क्या मूव रहेगा आगे हमारे अनुमूल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे उसके खिलाफ निश्चित निश्चित जाएंगे एकदम जाएंगे कन्फर्म में जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जी जी आपके आप, आप, आपस के लोगों की बातचीत आपस के पहले से ही तैयारी नहीं पहले से ही तैयारी है इनकेस ये हमेशा से होता है कि अगर कोई आदमी बैकअप लाइन सेकेंड लाइन लेके चलता है तो ये आपने पहले से हमने पहले इनकेस ऐसा कुछ होता है तो वहाँ अनुमूल सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे सुप्रीम कोर्ट जाएंगे क्या अभी अभी तक आपको क्या जानकारी मिली है की क्या कब से दोबारा शुरू कर अभी कुछ नहीं भी हमको रास्ते में सिर्फ हमको ये जानकारी हुई कि साहब हमारी जो तो रीड खारिज कर दिया है अब क्या उसमें कंडीशंस लिखी और क्या है कब से शुरू होगा तब तक जजमेंट ना देखा जाए आगे कुछ कहा नहीं जाता मामला सब जुडीज है सो उस पर कोई टिप्पणी करना उचित नहीं है जो यहाँ पे जो सर्वे के लिए ऑर्डर हुआ वजू खाना छोड़ के उस ऑर्डर के क्रम में ही ऐसे यहाँ पर आया था और फिर क्योंकि मान्य उच्च न्यायालय के स्टे होने के कारण फिर टीम यहाँ से चली गई है और फिर से जैसे आज ऑर्डर आया हुआ है उसके क्रम में वो जैसे मदद मांगेंगे हम उनकी जो भी सहयोग चाहिए वो प्रदान करेंगे टुडे अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट हैज ऑर्डर्ड ए एस आई सर्वे एंड वी आर होपफुल दैट जस्टिस विल बी डन एज दिस मस्जिद इज अराउंड 600 हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड मुस्लिम्स आर ऑफरिंग नमाज देर फ्रॉम लास्ट सिक्स हंड्रेड ईयर्स एंड वी ऑल्सो वॉन्ट दैट दी प्लेस ऑफ वर्शिप एक्ट शुड बी इन्फोज all over india on uh, on all the places of worship so that uh, no one, no another controversy can be raised as far as uh, places of worship are concerned iska hriday se swagat karta hu aur mujhe pura vishwas hai ki asi ke survey ke madhyam se sachai bahar aayegi aur gyan vyapi ka jo vivad hai sri ram janmabhoomi vivad ki tarah iska bhi निर्णय होगा निस्तारण होगा और शिव भक्तों की जो मनोभावना है मनोकामना है वो पूर्ण होगी वेल आई लाइक टू जस्ट स्टार्ट वेरी ब्रीफली विद एन अपडेट बिफोर आई आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन सो द डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट ऑफ वाराणसी मिस्टर राजा लिंगम जस्ट स्पोक टू द मीडिया एंड ही सेट दैट 
uh, that as soon as the ASI approaches them, they are fully prepared to cooperate with the Archaeological Survey of India and the survey can begin whenever the ASI wants to. So that's number one. Number two, you heard the side of the Moss Committee saying that they're going to approach the Supreme Court. Uh, when they do it today, tomorrow, it's a diff uh, little difficult to say. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's natural that the next course of action for the Moss Committee will be approaching the Supreme Court. Uh, the significance of what has happened today and of the entire Gyanwapi case as such lies in the fact that this is, you know, one of the three uh, disputes that uh, the BJP used in the early 90s, if you remember, Ayodhya being one of them, uh, Gyanwapi being the second and Mathura being the third. And it propelled them to power, so to say. So it's an important, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's something important in that sense. Uh, also, just the strategic location of the mosque and the Kachi Vishwanath temple next to each other. Uh, in the holy town of Varanasi, the fact that, you know, this has been going on for a while. While the Gyanwabi dispute as such is decades old or centuries old, perhaps, uh, the latest round has started after 2021 when five women approached uh, the Varanasi court, a lower court in Varanasi, asking for year-long access to a shrine inside the mosque complex. Now, that triggered a chain of events, one of them being that the local court ordered a lawyer-led survey, which then in turn, uh, its report got leaked, and, you know, there was this entire talk that a purported shivling had been found in the Vazukhana uh, area of the mosque. Now, uh, the Supreme Court intervened, that area was sealed, and then the court litigation went on. Uh, this latest survey, the SI survey that the district court orders, stems from a separate petition, but filed by four of the original petitioners uh, before the district court, where they said that the Gyanwapi Mosque was built, uh, you know, on the base of a Hindu temple that existed and that the only way to determine this was through a scientific survey. The district court agreed. A survey started, but then the Supreme Court, the Mosque Committee approached the Supreme Court that stayed the survey. Uh, sent the case to the Allahabad High Court, which has today ruled that uh, the survey can go on. Uh, the exact details of uh, the order are not uh, available to us right now because they've not been uploaded yet, so awaiting that. But the operative part of the order this morning by the Chief Justice of the Allahabad High Court was that the survey can go on, and within the contours and parameters of the ASI's affidavit before them, or before the Chief Justice's court, that the structure will not be harmed in any way. Uh, so that is what has happened, and we await uh, further details as in when the Moss Committee approaches the Supreme Court, or as in when the ASI decides to uh, restart their survey at Gyanwapi. Well, that time for us to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get to the latest from Manipur. Stay with us. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity. Because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. 
आई डोंट नो सत्यन एडिला जेफ बिजास बिल गेट्स पावर में नेहरू प्लेस साकेत साकेत मुंबई टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NTTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NTTV because the only side we are on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology to ab sabhi ke paas hai, but what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav, aur ab main aa gaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting, so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity. Welcome back. A mass a burial of tribal victims of Manipur's three-month-long ethnic clashes was put on hold today. The Manipur High Court, in fact, directed that status quo be maintained at the proposed burial site uh, at a village of Turachandpur district, where uh, the 35 people who were killed in the ethnic strife were to be buried. Uh, the High Court order was passed this morning after a hearing at 6 a.m. Uh, meanwhile, the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum also agreed to conditionally postpone the burial. for 5 days after talks with the home ministry this mass burial uh, announcement had faced questions from methi civil society groups uh, let's go across to ratnadeep for more on this story and ratnadeep just take us through you know all these developments are uh, the high court also putting out an order there were talks between uh, the tribal body and the union home ministry as well and uh, now uh, the burial has been put on hold that's right in fact for the benefit of our viewers uh let me explain what has happened uh, uh today in fact the uh, tribal leadership uh, from the kuki and zomi community had declared that they are going to uh, uh organize a mass burial of 35 uh, victims whose bodies were lying at the morgue of the turachandpur hospital remember this uh, conflict started on 3rd of may and today it completes 3 months and still uh, in fact conflict uh, continues and uh, uh you know they had selected a, a place uh which is uh, uh very close uh, to the border of the neighboring bishnupur district although the place is inside churachandpur district uh, however uh, kuki group uh, the methi civil societies raised objections uh, to the locations uh, in fact uh, they said that it's very close to the uh, methi village uh, in fact uh, 
uh, what had happened yesterday is that the volunteers from the uh, cookie groups actually had gone to the area to clear it and they were there and from yesterday itself a huge security cover was uh, put in place in that area uh, the uh, in the nearby area the methi groups actually protested so there was a you know there was a kind of a tension building up now uh, mha stepped into the matter mha uh, spoke to the uh, tribal groups in fact whether the tribal groups have claimed that mha had requested them uh, to postpone uh, it uh, you know postpone the uh, mass burial by 5 days to which the tribal groups again had put up five uh, demands and they say that we need a written assurance for from mha uh, to which the uh, you know the junior minister minister of state uh, from home for home affairs nitan rai wrote to both uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, tribal uh, the kuki and zomit civil society and the military civil society to maintain peace and the issue and assured that within 7 days the issue of last rights of the victims would be sorted meanwhile uh, uh, at the manipur high court uh, another uh, civil society group actually went forward and filed a pil uh, the state government and the uh, council of the petitioner uh, went actually this morning at 5 am and knocked the door of the Chief, uh, acting chief justice uh, uh, mr mv um, uh, justice Mul mv mulidharan's residence and uh, he, uh, he was apprised that the high court should take this matter up urgently this pil because there is mob building up in that area and there can be fresh flare up fresh violence so uh, looking at the public interest looking at the sensitivity of the case the high court decided uh, to immediately uh, on an emergency basis take up the matter uh, a two judge bench led by the acting chief justice heard the matter and uh, all the parties and passed a uh, interim order saying that the center the state government and all the other stakeholders uh, uh, will have to uh, maintain status quo as far as the land as far as the proposed land where the burial was supposed to take place is concerned uh, till the next hearing date now the uh, high court has uh, posted this matter for uh, the 9th of august for the next hearing they have also asked the center and the state to uh, make adequate security arrangement in the area they have asked uh, uh, you know the all the uh, parties involved uh, including center state and the uh, civil society groups from both sides to try and settle uh, this issue amicably uh, uh, whereas uh, you know they have also uh, asked Uh, that the you know uh, a status report should be given to the court in the next hearing so uh, after this actually the uh, you know uh, today in chirachanpur a massive uh, you know uh, gathering took place of the uh, you know tribal groups and they decided that at least uh, they're going to uh, uh, keep the burial uh, on hold uh, in fact uh, even as we speak uh you know uh, uh, sometime back there was a, a, sc a scuffle between security forces including army uh, and uh, rapid action force uh, uh, in uh, kangwai area in fact uh, we are hearing that a few people uh, have been injured after uh, you know the uh, security forces had to open up uh, uh, you know tear gas shell uh, to disperse the crowd uh in fact uh, from in in the uh, kankopi district which is also dominated by the tribals the 12 hour ban has been called uh, today to mark the three months completion of uh, uh, you know this uh, crisis that uh, manipur is witnessing since midnight there has been protest ha happening there so therefore uh, uh, the situation is once again building up in manipur however the uh, high court's order has uh, put a status quo on the land All right uh, thanks so much Ratnandi for joining us with those developments as the latest from Manipur let's now focus on Haryana where the state government has formed a three member panel to monitor social media this after a lot of criticism that they were not able to anticipate the trouble that took place in you know, the violence that broke out given that there had been threats and counter threats on social media ahead of the religious procession that came under attack uh, the Haryana government on Wednesday said that mobile internet and sms services in new and some other places in the state will remain suspended till the 5th of august to prevent any disturbance however uh, overnight there was attempted vandalism at two mosques in nuz taru uh, the police say that no damage to the structure and no injuries or deaths uh, that a mob of 10 to 15 people attempted to vandalize the mo uh, mosques uh, the team of police reached the mosques minutes after reports of a fire that there was a molotov cocktail or some sort of fire bomb thrown at the mosque so a heavy deployment of uh, police across a new internet suspended despite haryana police saying situation is improving you still have these isolated instances of violence with two mosques being attacked overnight कल रात को दो मस्जिद में ऐसी इंसिडेंट्स की रिपोर्ट थी जिसमें कि उन पे आगजनी की बात थी 
इसमें पहले इंच मस्जिद के अंदर जो है आगजनी जो इलेक्ट्रिक जो इनपुट होता है वहाँ उस एरिया में जहाँ बैटरीज रखी थी उस एरिया के अंदर फायरिंग रिपोर्टेड थी जिसको तुरंत ही काबू कर लिया गया था बारिश का टाइम था इट अपीयर्स कि शायद शॉर्ट सर्किट हो सकता है देर वॉज नो मोलोट ऑफ कॉकटेल्स बीन यूज ऐसा कुछ नहीं वहाँ पर पाया गया हमारी टीम में मैं स्वयं वहाँ खुद मौके पर पहुँच गए थे और हमने उस सिचुएशन का जायजा लिया था उसके बाद वहाँ पर हमने स्टैंडिंग गार्ड भी हमने वहाँ खड़ी कर दी है दूसरी मस्जिद में बहुत ही छोटा इंसिडेंट था और वहाँ पर भी हमारी स्टैंडिंग गार्ड कर दी गई है और पूरी तरह से हमारा स्थिति पर नियंत्रण बना हुआ है I come to you from the 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 district of Haryana and currently I'm standing at the new chalk, which has been the epicenter of the communal violence here in Haryana. And currently rapid action forces have been deployed here in uh, in large numbers. In fact, paramilitary forces, senior police officials of the Haryana police are also at the spot monitoring the situation. Uh, in fact, just a few hours back we saw that uh, flag marches were also conducted by the rapid action forces. In fact, um, what we're also being told in uh, is that an, in another half an hour curfew. might be relaxed here as you can see all shops are currently closed uh, internet is suspended and section 144 or prohibitory orders for gathering and assembly are currently in place as well here you can see how rapid action forces have been deployed at various checkpoints to make sure that there's no untoward incident they're conducting flag marches this also as a home ministry here in haryana appeal to the people to maintain calm and also stay inside their houses which is why section 144 is also in place Now the Haryana government has also appointed a three-member panel to look into uh, social media and you know uh, flag any inflammatory posts or fake videos that are doing the rounds constantly. In fact, just uh, a few hours back, we reported from Taudu where uh, you know videos of um, uh, a mosque being torched also uh, surfaced online. In fact, the police have now said that the that, that an investigation is underway and the accused are being identified. But here in Noo, the situation is yet to uh, the situation is calm. I'm on the ground, but as far as normalcy for the people is concerned, there's still time in that because uh, you know there's curfew, partial curfew in place. All shops are closed. There's very little uh, traffic movement or gathering that we can see here, and paramilitary forces in large numbers. In fact, at all checkpoints, in fact, at all checkpoints of this uh, new chalk, you can see paramilitary forces, rapid action forces being deployed. Now, uh, the Haryana police um, say that. Uh, in the past 24 hours at least there, have been, there has been no incident uh, of uh, violence however isolated incidents like the one in taudu have come to light in gurugram the situation is uh, pretty much under control uh, education institutions have reopened today in fact uh, in uh, parts of uh, gurugram uh, the internet suspension has also been uh, in, in a sense removed now only in three subdivisions of gurugram internet suspension continues but here in nu uh, a sort of an eerie silence after an eerie calm perhaps after uh, the communal violence with very little traffic movement and rapid action forces being deployed in large numbers in no with camera person manoj thakur vedant for ndt tv i come to you from taudu which is approximately 10 to 15 kilometers from nu which has been the epicenter of the communal violence that we've been witnessing in this particular area of haryana in the past 3 days now despite the government's assurances that there are no incidents of violence being reported just yesterday night uh, here outside this particular mosque in the taudu village we saw that there was an attempt by a mob of 10 to 15 people to torch this particular mosque that attempt could not be successful because the sp and uh, the police in charge uh, mr bijarnia he came to the spot immediately uh, with uh, several fire tenders and uh, the blaze was uh, put out immediately as per the police but the police also says that now uh, an investigation is underway and the 10 to 15 people who are actually the miscreants behind this attempted vandalism are now being identified by the police and here you can see the kind of police deployment that we are seeing and this is not just here in this particular area of taudu but across uh, taudu and across parts of nu where this morning we also saw flag marches being conducted by the police uh, we are seeing heavy police deployment and chief minister manohar lal khattar has said 
that they've appealed to the people. They've also had talks with community representatives. And Haryana police continue to say that no incident of violence has been reported in the past uh, 24 hours. Now, in this particular incident of attempted vandalism, there was no injury, there was no damage to the religious structure, and uh, nor was there any uh, casualties or deaths reported. This was just an attempt at uh, torching this particular religious structure, this mosque here. But uh, immediately the SP and members of the Haryana police actually came to the spot and doused the blaze. This was not just one religious structure that was uh, uh, where there was attempted vandalism, but another uh, mosque, uh, the Punjabi Mohalla Mosque here in Taudu, a similar incident was reported there as well, but no damage to the religious structure, no injury or death. But police deployment continues and such isolated incidents of uh, attempted vandalism, uh, attempted um, violence are being witnessed still in parts of Haryana. In Tauru, in Nu, with camera person Manoj Thakur Vedant for TV. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation, climate change. And it's happening, not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away, it's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety filled, too technical or too political. I'm here to change that, the Climate Explainers part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions, and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates, probably. Nehru place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. Chaliye shuru karte hai. The NDTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NDTV because the only side we're on is yours. was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt. And that's how I like to roll. Technology to aap sabhi ke paas hai. But what you need is everything else. Mera naam hai Gaurav aur ab mein aagaya hu NDTV Network pe. Har roz, har hafte. Ab aapke aur paas. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world.
23 years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. NDTV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on with accuracy and integrity because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. It's undeniable. Welcome back. Now let's get to the latest from Parliament, which will reconvene at 2 o'clock. The opposition has said it's ready to drop its demand for a discussion on Manipur under Rule 267. Remember, this had been the reason for the deadlock with the opposition insisting the discussion take place under Rule 267. But now, in a big development, the opposition has said it's ready to forego this particular demand and discussion can be held under any other rule, but they are still insistent that the Prime Minister give a statement on Manipur. Let's go across to Akhilesh uh, for more. Akhilesh, give us more details on this and uh, what can we expect at 2 o'clock? Well, uh, Gargi, today some serious attempts were made between both the opposition and the ruling benches uh, to resolve this deadlock. And in fact, uh, a leader of the House, Mr. Piyush Goel, and also the Parliamentary Affairs Minister, Mr. Pehla Joshi, they both walked in uh, to uh, leader of the opposition, Malikajun Kharge's room in the Parliament House, where all other opposition leaders were sitting, and they had a discussion. After this meeting, we have been told by the sources that the, the opposition has softened its stand to demand the discussion under Rule 267 in Rajya Sabha in this rule uh, all the other rules are suspended and the chairman on the priority decides to accept this matter and opposition was insisting that the discussion should take place under this particular rule of 267 this was the reason this deadlock has been persisted and that's why uh, the discussion could not take place in Sabha. but of course the opposition party has other demand they are saying that the prime minister should come to the house and make a statement in the upper house on this demand the opposition parties are not ready to you know back off that's why the deadlock continues but of course there are some some signs that uh, uh, the deadlock between the opposition and the ruling benches is likely to resolve because on this second demand or uh, the Prime Minister making a statement in the House, maybe also, you know, uh, there may be a compromise that may be reached between the opposition and the uh, ruling uh, uh, benches because we've been told by the sources that they are even ready to dis consider that if, if Home Minister Amit Shah comes to the House and make a statement on Manipur, they will accept and go by it. But of course they want that the discussion should be lengthy and it, the more hours should be given uh, for the discussion and it can take place under any rule uh, apart from 267 and because the government was not agreeing for that. The point is very simple, Gargi, because the opposition feels that there are other pressing issues also that needs to be highlighted. Uh, for example, prices, the tomato prices and other issues which are concerned in the common man and because of the insistence of the opposition parties such important matters are not being discussed and on Manipur also they are saying that we had sent a delegation of 21 MPs to Manipur they have been there they have discussed with uh, various people there they have visited the uh, refugee camps and now they have come back what they have seen what they saw what people have told them you know that should come out, out also before the nation that's why this floor of the house is necessary and that is why the softening of the stand in the opposition. All right, Akhilesh, thanks so much for joining us uh, with that. So hopefully a solution to the impasse that we've seen in the parliament since the monsoon session began, the houses to reconvene at 2 o'clock. With that, we'll slip into a short break. More news coming up on the other side. Stay with us. We have a surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella. Jeff Bezos. Bill Gates probably. 
नेहरू प्लेस साकेत साकेत मुंबई टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी टेक्निकल गुरुजी चलिए शुरू करते हैं The NTTV News Network that informs, inspires, and illuminates. Watch every side of the story here on NTTV because the only side here on is yours. It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis, Covering the latest developments across politics, business and technology. Bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Welcome back. The spotlight is back on India. Foreign brokerages are bullish. Morgan Stanley upgrades India to overweight and downgrades China to equal weight. This comes in the backdrop of the U.S. losing its AAA status and economic slowdown in China. An overweight rating in simple terms means the brokerage firm believes India will perform better in the future. Well, time for us to slip into a short break. Uh, more news coming up on the other side. Parliament to reconvene at 2 o'clock. Stay with us. It's undeniable. We're facing the crisis of the generation. Climate change. And it's happening. Not in some far-off distant land or some millions of years away. It's happening now. And it affects everything we know and love. Information around climate change can often feel too distant, too jargony, too scary, too anxiety-filled, too technical, or too political. I'm here to change that. The Climate Explainers. Part of NDTV's six-month-long campaign, building a blueprint for climate action. The climate clock is ticking, but we're just in time. 
surprise for you. We're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Satya Nadella? Jeff is a... Bill Gates probably. Nehru Place. Saket. Saket. Mumbai? Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. चलिए शुरू करते हैं दी एन टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दैट इनफॉर्म इंस्पायर एंड इलूमिनेट्स वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एन डी टीवी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स It was fast, right? But tech is evolving even quicker than our abilities to adapt, and that's how I like to roll. Technology तो आप सभी के पास है, but what you need is everything else. मेरा नाम है गौरव और अब मैं आ गया हूँ NDTV Network पे हर रोज हर हफ्ते अब आपके और पास. Go beyond the now. When there's too much talking but very little being said, too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. From breaking news to in-depth analysis. Covering the latest developments across politics, business, and technology, bringing you stories that shape our nation and the world. Twenty-three years of the big fight. This show is not just an ordinary debate show, but it is a responsibility in service of our viewers. TV for news you can trust. No sensationalism, no ugly debates, no agenda. We strive to be transparent and unbiased in our reporting so you can get news that you can rely on. In a world filled with noise, we bring you news that you can rely on. With accuracy and integrity, because at NDTV, trust is everything. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. facing the crisis of the generation climate change and it's happening not in some far off distant land or some millions of years away it's happening now and it affects everything we know and love information around climate change can often feel too distant too jargony too scary too anxiety filled too technical or too political i'm here to change that the climate explainers part of ndtv's six month long campaign building a blueprint for climate action the climate clock is ticking but we're just in time we have a surprise for you we're going to ask a bunch of you some special questions and every correct answer is going to reveal what our surprise is uh, i don't know uh, satya nadella jeff is a bill gates for Nehru Place, Saket. Saket. Mumbai. Technical Guruji. Tech Guruji. Technical Guruji. Technical Guruji. 
चलिए शुरू करते हैं डी एन टीवी न्यूज नेटवर्क दैट इन्फॉर्म इंस्पायर्स एंड इलूमिनेट वॉच एवरी साइड ऑफ द स्टोरी हियर ऑन एनडी टीवी बिकॉज द ओनली साइड हियर ऑन इज योर्स Welcome you watching ND TV and the big story right now parliament is reconvening and in a development that could end the impasse that we've been seeing the opposition has agreed on a debate on Manipur under any rule so there uh, you know backtracking by the opposition uh, earlier they were insisting on a discussion under 267 rule 267 but now after a meeting between Malikarjun Kharge and Piyush Goel who actually approached Malikarjun Kharge in his office during the adjournment uh, Uh, now it seems that the opposition has agreed let's just listen into what's taking place please resume your, resume your seats please resume your seats yes mr pramod tiwari sir what is your point of order <coughs> sir i have three four point of order at least listen one three or four three or four point of order listen one sir i need mean, then you decide what rule should be सर हम लोग विनम्रता पूर्वक भरपूर प्रयास कर रहे हैं कि मणिपुर में जो संहार हुआ है जिस तरह महिलाओं की महिलाओं की मानवर अगर आप वो नहीं सुनेंगे मानवर आप सर मान्य सदस्य गण मान्य सदस्य गण मैंने मान्य सदस्य नथिंग विल गोन रिकॉर्ड नथिंग विल गोन रिकॉर्ड मान्य सदस्य गण मैंने मेरे प्रयास में शायद कुछ कमी रख दी है नथिंग विल गोन रिकॉर्ड इतना प्रयास किया है इतना चिंतन किया है इतनी मुलाकात की है चैंबर में सदस्यों से बात की है पर हालात ऐसे बन गए कि वी आर आउट टू विन ब्राउनी पॉइंट्स हाउस में डिस्कशन लिस्ट करने के बावजूद नहीं हो पाया है मैंने यहां तक कह दिया नो इट्स अ गुड पॉइंट बट इफ आई स्टार्ट डीलिंग विद योर इग्नोरेंस आई विल हैव नथिंग हैज टू डू आई ओनली विल बी विल बी क्लियरिंग द एयर श्री प्रहलाद जोशी श्री प्रहलाद जोशी to move a motion for consideration of the offshore area sir with your mineral development and regulation amendment bill 2023 the offshore mineral development regulation act 2002 as passed by lok sabha be taken into consideration sir motion moved i now call upon the members whose names have been received for participation in the discussion dr Sasmit Patra sir i stand to support the offshore regulation amendment bill on behalf of my party the biju janata dal and our leader honorable chief minister shri navin patnaik ji we support the bill sir the geological survey of india estimates 79 million tons of heavy minerals are there And well, there you can see Parliament, both houses reconvening. Uh, the big news is that there has been a breakthrough uh, between uh, the government and the opposition over the Manipur discussion, and the opposition has agreed uh, that it will not insist on a discussion under Rule Two Six Seven. Let's go across to Megha for more. And Megha, so uh, what happens now? Right now, we can see business is taking place, but uh, will that Manipur discussion happen? Also, several important bills are planned for Parliament. Well, this is this is uh, quite a breakthrough, actually. Uh, you know, Gargi, the log jam is now expected to end, and even though you are seeing these. Uh seeds from rajya sabha right now the proposal has gone in from the side of uh, the opposition the india 
India parties who have uh, given a proposal uh, to the government and I'm just quoting from what they have sent us. Uh, the sources from uh, India party, nobody wants to be, uh, you know, no one wants to come on record from their side, but this is what they are saying. They are saying India parties have offered a middle path solution to the leader of the house in Rajya Sabha to break the log jam and get a discussion on Manipur going in an uninterrupted manner. Hope the Modi government agrees. Now, this is what this is the statement that has come in from the India parties. So now, of course, a big, big climb down on both the counts that they were uh, protesting upon. Let's understand. They said, number one, that they want the prime minister's statement to proceed a discussion on Manipur. Right now, with this new proposal, they are not talking about the prime minister at all. No word on prime minister being present or prime minister's statement at this moment. So clearly, uh, that demand, it looks like they have dropped. The other, of course, they have agreed to have a discussion under Rule 167 uh, of the Rajya Sabha. They have they quit their demand of Rule 267, which is essentially meant that you will have to, uh, you know, suspend every other legislative business. Under 167, that doesn't need to happen. It is more like a joint effort, uh, a discussion which is seen as a joint effort between both the government and the opposition. Uh, together, they would be, uh, you know, drafting, say, a statement on, on the issue which is being discussed. So <coughs> a discussion on a, on a public interest issue can happen in a manner like this under Rule, one, uh, under rule 167, which is what they have agreed upon now. That's the middle part they are quoting and this uh, statement that they have sent by via sources, uh, you know, suggesting that they have offered a middle ground. The middle ground is Rule 167 that has been offered from the opposition to the government. So essentially, no prime minister. Now the prime minister's statement not to, not required by the opposition. Perhaps uh, the, their own explanation is that the prime minister will be speaking in Lok Sabha on 10th of August. Maybe that suffices for them. But till this day, it had not uh, because the uh, you know the uh, the uh, demand for no. Uh, confidence was accepted last week itself but from that day till today uh, the rakas had continued but now there is a climb down a significant climb down by the opposition they have and they this proposal has gone from the side of the opposition they themselves have confirmed that it's not that the government came to uh, you know seek help from them the opposition went to the government they are confirming the statement of their saying that they have offered a middle path solution to the leader of the house in Rajya Sabha to break the log jam and get a discussion on Manipur going in an uninterrupted manner this is exactly what the government had been saying but when last week the government was was seen to be hardening the stand and digging the feet in, saying that we've done enough, we've done as much as we could, and we are not going to make any more concessions for the opposition. If they don't let the House function, so be it. We continue with that. In this din, we will get papers tabled, we will get bills introduced, we'll get bills discussed and voted upon. So it just seemed like the government was going full throttle with, with their legislative business. The opposition, uh, you know, uh, despite the fact that they were creating so much of a ruckus and, and wanted the house to shut down, but that didn't happen. Anyways, the, the point here is that they have come, offered a, a solution, a middle part to the government. Will the government agree, not agree? From our sources within the government, we've been, we've been told that the government was always ready for a short duration discussion, so they, do, will, they will not have a problem in saying yes to this proposal. So most likely, you should see a discussion on Manipur. The tricky question here is, when will that happen? Because today, uh, today you have Mr. Amit Shah busy, uh, uh, you know, in in the in the lower house with the uh, Delhi Ordinance Bill. Tomorrow, the Delhi Ordinance Bill is expected to come to Rajya Sabha, so that will take precedence. Tomorrow being Friday, Monday again. This coming Monday, that would be uh, uh, we are being told that 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 Monday it may not be possible. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days Lok Sabha, the no confidence motion discussion happens so when will this Manipur discussion take place that's a tricky question at this moment whenever the time uh, so permits we should now know that a discussion on Manipur from both sides on this particular under this particular rule has been agreed upon and it will eventually happen in the upper house whether it happens tomorrow it happens next week but now all sides have agreed for it and and the conditions from the opposition side have been dropped so that is the big uh, breakthrough, the big breaking news. Finally, a way out of the impasse. No clarity exactly when this discussion will happen. Thanks so much, Megha, for that. Let's just listen in to what's happening in the Lok Sabha. I oppose introduction and I want a division, sir. Please allow me division. Yes, it is my right, sir. I want a division, I'm telling you on because, no, I, I want a division on this introduction bill, sir. <laughs> Shri Gaurav.
गौरव गोगोई जी ये इस बिल को आप स्टैंडिंग कमेटी में भेजे इट इज बिल विच इम्पिंजेज ऑन द फंडामेंटल राइट एज पर दोटो स्वामी जजमेंट ऑन द राइट टू प्राइवेसी इट शेड बी सेंट टू स्टैंडिंग जी सर अंडर अंडर रूल सेवेंटी टू वन आई बेक टू अपोज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द पर्सनल डिजिटल पर्सनल डाटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल 2023. This is a cumbersome bill and very different from the original bill which was sent to the standing committee. Shri Manish For Tiwari reasons ji. of his own, Manish the chairman of the standing Manish committee and the minister, Manish they have changed. They have changed the bill altogether, and now they have included one Not data protection. Sir, please wait for that. Sir, sir. सर एक मिनट सुनिए आई वॉन्ट दिस बिल टू बी अगेन सेंट टू दिस स्टैंडिंग कमिटी ओके ओके और एक मिस्टर चेयरपर्सन सर अंडर रूल सेवेंटी टू टू ऑफ द रूल्स ऑफ प्रोसीजर एंड कंडक्ट ऑफ बिजनेस ऑफ द लोकसभा आई हेयर बाय राइज टू अपोज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द बिल आई अपोज इट ऑन थ्री काउंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल a bill which was considered by the joint parliamentary committee came back to the house was withdrawn by the government reintroduced cannot be introduced as a finance bill number 2 it's a bill which requires serious reconsideration by a joint parliamentary committee for the simple reason that it is in complete contradiction to the fundamental right of privacy upheld by the supreme court in the puttu swami judgment number 3 this bill cleaves the entire digital universe into two parts the, uh, the 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 bill will apply with full force to all non governmental organizations and the entire government universe is going to be exempt from it so therefore the fundamental right to privacy laid down by the supreme court in puttu swami stands assaulted right. by the provisions of Shri this bill Supriya and Sulegi. therefore sir, this i okay okay please sir under rule 272 i Ji. stand here to oppose the bill on two small points i will not repeat any first is excessive centralization of all the data everything okay. will be controlled it's a complete insult and hurting the spirit of the federal uh, we have to deal with the federal structure of government of india okay, point okay. number 1 second Achha. even right to information is diluted it right manish ji said government of india will be completely protected others will be completely exposed third there is a penalty cause which from 2500 crores is brought down to 250 what is the meaning even a small ngo tomorrow challenges is 250 and a big industrial home which is ridiculous and there is no compensation there is penalty but what about a victim there is no clarity of compensation and right to privacy tomorrow it's completely evaded sir so anybody can have our data there is no privacy so okay, okay. i request the minister to kindly reconsider right. shri n k premchandra ji sir sir i, I please, please sir please. i strongly oppose the digital personal data protection bill 2023 sir 23 the point is sir sir what please please sir no no sir you carry on sir sir sir, 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 sir may make please. may make a submission regarding yesterday also this matter was raised in the house regarding rule 722 not only the legislative competence any matter can be opposed 72 clause one is the general clause and proviso is saying that to have a full fledged debate in the house legislative competence is to be there but as far as opposing any ground i can oppose the bill so number one ground is the basic human fundamental rights is being taken away that is being accepted as the fundamental right in nine bench constitution bench of the supreme court in respect of this puttu swami case so it is totally violating the basic fundamental human rights of the citizens of the country and number two sir day before yesterday the it standing committee that is standing committee on communications and information technology has submitted a parliamentary committee report standing committee report on the floor of this house yeah. that is so many recommendations are are there without looking into the recommendation of the standing committee coming with a new bill it is not fair and proper on the part of the minister in introducing the bill so i strongly urge that those recommendations may be taken up so as to respect the Shri parliamentary Adhir committee Ranjanji. with these objections i oppose the bill sir i rise to vehemently oppose the bill under rule 72 of business of procedure conduct uh, business of procedure conduct of business sir the issue is that through this bill the government is going to trample upon the right to information act and right to privacy so so 
we are vehemently opposing this kind of sinister motive being displayed by this government. The bill by amending the right to information act wants to introduce an era of corruption because new personal data like assets and liabilities, education qualification of corrupt government functionaries cannot be asked for under RTI. Second issue, the bill does not provide for compensation to individual who is, who has personal, who is, whose personal data has been compromised or who has suffered loss due to theft of personal data. Third, the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill 2023 violates the fundamental rights of privacy as laid down in the Putuswami case, as other esteemed members have also referred, since the present bill does not restrict the government to use and process personal data. Therefore, I will suggest the government that they should send this bill for further deliberation, for wide discussion among all sections of the population. That is why, right now, the time is not opportune for introduction of this bill. Better, you should send the bill to the Standing Committee, Joint Committee, or any other forum for having a threadbare discussion in regard to this. Dr. Shishi Tarurji. Sir, thank you very much. Sir. As the former chairman of the Standing Committee, I have... Did, no, no, no. Sir, as the former chairman of the Standing yeah, yeah. Committee, let me say that this is a matter that we have repeatedly requested the minister to take the committee into confidence. It is a matter of disappointment that, to the best of my knowledge, the committee has not been asked to study this bill, which, as has been pointed out, has been repeatedly modified by the government and is brought in its third iteration to this House in this condition. Given the vast number of objections you have heard, Mr. Chairman, I would urge that the bill be sent to the Standing Committee for proper examination as a new bill, because for the three different versions do not match, and they have been done without consultation with the committee whose mandate it is. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Honorable Minister, do you want sir. to say something? Yes. Honorable Please. Chairperson, sir. Please, Betty. Betty. No, no. You didn't give any notice. Betty, now. प्लीज बैठिए स्वागत आने बात कह दी जी सर लेजिस्लेटिव कॉम्पिटेंस के बारे में किसी भी मान्यवर सदस्य ने प्रश्न नहीं उठाया है जो प्रश्न उठाया है कि क्या ये फाइनेंस बिल है क्या ये मनी बिल है या जनरल बिल है मैं एकदम स्पष्ट तरीके से मान्यवर मनीष तिवारी जी ने कहा था अभी मैं स्पष्ट तरीके से सदन के सामने आपके समक्ष रखना चाहूंगा कि ये एक जनरल बिल है ये मनी बिल नहीं है इसके ऊपर पूरा डिटेल में डिस्कशन होगा इसके ऊपर जो भी पॉइंट अभी मान्यवर सदस्यों ने रखा है चाहे पुट्टू स्वामी जजमेंट से संबंधित हो चाहे कॉम्पेंसेशन से संबंधित हो चाहे गवर्नमेंट जो जो आरोप लगाया गया है अपनी बात रख दी है व्यवस्था आपने अपनी बात रख दी है आपने अपना विषय रख दिया है मान्यवर चेयरवर मान्यवर चेयरपर्सन सर हर एक विषय पे डिटेल में डिबेट करने के लिए सरकार तैयार है मैं आपसे अनुरोध अनुरोध करूंगा इसको इंट्रोड्यूस करने की प्रश्न है कि विधेयक को प्रस्थापित करने की अनुमति प्रदान की जाए जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में है वो हाँ कहे जो सदस्य इसके विरोध में वो ना कहे मेरे विचार में निर्णय हावालों के पक्ष में हुआ हावालों के पक्ष में हुआ माननीय मंत्री जी विधेयक को प्रस्थापित करें बिल ओके आइटम नंबर ट्वेंटी डॉक्टर भारती पवार News coming in from Manipur, uh, where locals held a protest in Chura Chandpur, and uh, there was also, as you can see, uh, tear gas being fired by the uh, security forces there. So protesters who were uh, there in Chura Chandpur, they tear gas by security personnel who seem to be moving back. There's a situation remaining uh, tense in Manipur. There have been these sporadic sort of uh, incidents over the last uh, so many weeks for three months. In fact, uh, while, uh, since the violence took place, there has been a sort of a state of emergency across Manipur in the sense that many people remain in uh, camps. Many have had to abandon their homes. Uh, a sense of uneasy tension continues in the state. Let's go across to Ratnadeep. Uh, for more, Ratnadeep, you can tell us what's happening there in Tura Chandpur. There were, pro there were protests and uh, you can see security forces using tear gas. 
Well, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, let me uh, clarify this: that uh, these visuals that you are seeing are uh, right from the border of the Churachandpur and the Bishnupur district. Remember, Churachandpur is a uh, tribal-dominated area in the hill, and Bishnupur district is in the valley. So, what we are pick, uh, picking up from our uh, army sources and police sources, several people have actually got injured uh, because there was right from the morning there was build-up of a mob from the valley side uh, who uh, uh, wanted to uh, prevent. That the uh, burial that that uh, you know uh, uh, tribal groups wanted to uh, you know organize uh, they were protesting against it and uh, there was huge security presence and uh, 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 you know uh, as we have pointed out in our previous bro broadcast that the uh, you know uh, that the plan of uh, mass burial of 35 uh, uh, tribal victims from the Kuki and Zomi community has been put on hold because of uh, request from center as well as uh, order by uh, the uh, Manipur High Court. But what happened is that from the uh, uh, the uh, Bishnupur side in Kangbai, to be very uh, precise, there was this uh, uh, mob which uh, uh, which was built up, huge mob, and there was scuffle with the security forces. There was army presence there. There were central security forces, RAF rapid action force was there, and to disperse the crowd, they had to uh, use uh, force. They had to use tear gas shell. In fact. Uh, what we are hearing is that uh, uh, you know the security forces also had to fire in the air. That's what uh, we, are, we are given to understand. And several people are injured in this. The injured have been rushed to uh, you know uh, Moirang hos uh, civil hospital in Bishnupur, right, uh, and uh, some of them are being shifted you. to Imphal. They are going to have well. to go so across to Parliament really now to listen in as the Union Home Minister is speaking. <laughs> सही सदन चलाओ तो अच्छा लगता है लाने का अधिकार नहीं है संविधान के तहत संसद की कॉम्पिटेंसी पर भी सवाल उठाए गए हैं और दूसरा ये मुद्दा उठाया गया कि विधेयक जो लेकर मैं इस सदन के सामने उपस्थित हुआ हूं वो विधेयक सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजमेंट के भावनाओं के विरुद्ध है मान्यवर सबसे पहले मैं यह दोनों चीजों का बहुत डिटेल जवाब देना चाहता हूं क्योंकि उस वक्त जब मैं खड़ा हुआ विपक्ष का मूड सुनने का नहीं था आज कुछ अच्छा वह भी मूड दिखता है तो मान्यवर जब तक कॉम्पिटेंसी का सवाल है प्लीज माने माने नहीं है मान्यवर जहां तक कॉम्पिटेंसी का सवाल है संघ राज्य क्षेत्र का प्रशासन संविधान के भाग आठ में उल्लेखित प्रावधानों के तहत आता है अनुच्छेद दो से दो तक इसकी कार्य रीति को संविधान में वर्णित किया गया है और अनुच्छेद दो के ए ए में विशेष प्रावधान किए गए हैं जिसके तहत दिल्ली विधानसभा सहित एक संघ शासित प्रदेश है तो दिल्ली ना तो पूर्ण राज्य है ना संघ शासित प्रदेश है ना संघ शासित प्रदेश विथ असेंबली क्योंकि ये राजधानी क्षेत्र है इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए 239 ए में इसका एक विशेष प्रावधान संविधान के तहत किया गया है इसकी डिटेल बात मैं बाद में बताऊंगा अब कहा कि भारत सरकार को इसके बारे में कानून बनाने का अधिकार नहीं है ऐसा विषय कुछ सदस्यों के द्वारा रखा गया मैं इस सदन का ध्यान अनुच्छेद दो ए ए थ्री बी की तरफ दिलाना चाहता हूं दो ए ए थ्री बी बहुत स्पष्ट है इसके तहत इस संसद को दिल्ली संघ राज्य क्षेत्र या इसके किसी भी भाग के बारे में उससे संबंधित किसी भी विषय पर कानून बनाने का पूर्ण अधिकार प्राप्त है इसलिए कुछ सदस्यों ने जिस 
बात को इंट्रोडक्शन के वक्त यहाँ उठाने का प्रयास किया था मेरा दायित्व तो बनता है उस वक्त माहौल ठीक नहीं था तो आज इसका मैं ढंग से जवाब दूं मान्यवर कुछ सदस्यों ने यह भी कहा हाथ में सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जजमेंट रखकर कि ये सर्वोच्च अदालत के आदेश के उल्लंघन कर कर इसको लाया गया है मैं वो सभी सदस्यों को विनती करना चाहता हूं कि आपने सर्वोच्च अदालत के आदेश का अपने मनपसंद हिस्सा ही पढ़ा है जब सर्वोच्च अदालत के आदेश को सदन में कोट करते हैं तो संपूर्ण आदेश का अध्ययन होना जरूरी है उसका दूसरा हिस्सा भी पारदर्शिता के साथ सदन के सामने रखना चाहिए खैर जिन्होंने नहीं रखा नहीं रखा मैं रख देता हूं मान्यवर मैं स्पष्टता करना चाहता हूं कि ये विधेयक जो है इसमें सर्वोच्च अदालत के निर्णय को जो उन्होंने रिफर किया है उसके पैरा 86, सिक्स पैरा नाइन्टी और विशेष कर कर पैरा 164 सिक्सटी फोर एप की ओर मैं ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहता हूं उसमें स्पष्टता से कहा है कि संसद को 239 एए के तहत दिल्ली संघ राज्य क्षेत्र के किसी भी विषय पर कानून बनाने का अधिकार है ये अदालत ने अपने जजमेंट के अंदर बहुत स्पष्ट कर दिया मान्यवर अब मैं थोड़ा विधेयक पर बात करना चाहूंगा दिल्ली शासन इसकी एक ऐतिहासिक पृष्ठभूमि है मान्यवर दिल्ली की स्थापना 1911 में अंग्रेजों के शासन के द्वारा महरौली और दिल्ली दो तहसीलों को पंजाब प्रांत से अलग कर कर बनाई गई 1919 और 1935 में ब्रिटिश सरकार ने चीफ कमिश्नर प्रोविंस का नोटिफिकेशन किया और दिल्ली को चीफ कमिश्नर प्रोविंस के तहत रखा गया आजादी के बाद पट्टा भी सीतारमैया समिति ने दिल्ली को राज्य स्तर का दर्जा देने की सिफारिश की हालांकि जब सिफारिश संविधान सभा के सब समक्ष आई मेरा विपक्ष के सदस्यों को विनम्रता से अनुरोध है कि इस बात को जरा गौर से सुनेगा पट्टा भी सीतारामैया समिति की सिफारिश जब सदन के सामने आई तब पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी श्रीमान सरदार पटेल राजा जी राजेंद्र प्रसाद और डॉक्टर अंबेडकर जैसे नेताओं ने इसका विरोध किया कि उचित नहीं होगा कि दिल्ली को पूर्ण राज्य का दर्जा दिया जाए मैं फिर से एक बार रिपीट करता हूं किस किस ने विरोध किया था पंडित नेहरू ने किया था सरदार पटेल ने किया था राजा जी ने किया राजेंद्र प्रसाद जी ने किया और अंबेडकर जी ने भी इसका विरोध किया था और उस वक्त पंडित नेहरू जी के एक चर्चा के हिस्से को मैं सदन के सामने रखना चाहता हूं दो साल पहले सदन ने एक समिति सीतारामैया समिति की नियुक्ति की और अब जब रिपोर्ट आया है तब दुनिया बदल गई भारत बदल गया है और दिल्ली काफी हद तक बदल गई है इसलिए दिल्ली में हुए इन परिवर्तनों की परवाह किए बगैर उस समिति की सिफारिशों को स्वीकार नहीं कर सकते और स्वीकार स्वीकार करना वास्तविकता से पूरी तरह मुंह मोड़ लेना होगा एक समय तो नेहरू जी ने संविधान सभा के सदस्यों को यहां तक कहा कि चूंकि नई दिल्ली में तीन चौथाई संपत्ति केंद्र सरकार की है इसलिए तर्क संगत यही होगा कि इसको केंद्र के अधीन रखा जाए बाद में जब अंबेडकर जी ने समापन किया तब उन्होंने कहा जहां तक दिल्ली का सवाल है हमें ऐसा लगता है कि भारत की राजधानी के रूप में 
शायद ही किसी स्थानीय प्रशासन को मुक्त अधिकार यहाँ दिए जा सकते हैं संयुक्त राज्य अमेरिका और ऑस्ट्रेलिया में जो राजधानी के क्षेत्र है इसकी मिसाल भी उन्होंने वहाँ दी और उन्होंने कहा कि इसके लिए एक अलग व्यवस्था करनी चाहिए और संविधान सभा में इस पर जोड़ना चाहिए खैर मैं इसलिए कहता हूँ कि आप जिस चीज़ का विरोध कर रहे हैं ये सिफारिश किसकी थी ये आपको मालूम होना चाहिए ये पंडित नेहरू की सिफारिश थी मान्यवर मैं उसके बाद में उन्नीस में सी स्टेट एक्ट के द्वारा दिल्ली को विधानसभा दी गई परंतु छप्पन में राज्य पुनर्गठन आयोग की सिफारिशों पर दिल्ली की विधानसभा हटाकर उसको संघ राज्य घोषित किया गया लगभग तीन दशक तक ये व्यवस्था चलती रही सतासी में सरकारिया कमेटी बनी जो बाद में बालाकृष्णन कमेटी के रूप में जानी गई और इक्यानवे में उनहत्तरवा संविधान संशोधन किया गया और इसके बाद दिल्ली राजधानी राज्य क्षेत्र शासन अधिनियम उन्नीस जिसमें मैं आज संशोधन लेकर आया हूं इसको इस महान सदन ने पारित किया गया और वही विधेयक के अंदर संविधान संशोधन के अंदर 239 ए जिसका मैंने जिक्र किया उसमें इस संसद को राजधानी क्षेत्र के किसी भी हिस्से के लिए और किसी भी कार्य के लिए कानून बनाने के लिए संपूर्ण अधिकार संसद को देने का काम किया गया मान्यवर समस्या कहाँ से समाप्त शुरू हुई उन्नीस से व्यवस्था चली आ रही थी कभी भारतीय जनता पार्टी सत्ता में आई कभी कांग्रेस पार्टी ने शासन किया कभी ऊपर कांग्रेस का शासन था तब हमारी सरकार थी तो कभी ऊपर कांग्रेस की सरकार थी तब नीचे हमारा शासन था मगर कोई झगड़ा नहीं हुआ था सब कुछ ठीक चल रहा था क्योंकि किसी की मनसा अधिकार हथियाने की नहीं थी सेवा करने की कांग्रेस पार्टी ने भी भाजपा के साथ झगड़ा नहीं किया भाजपा ने भी कांग्रेस सरकार के साथ झगड़ा नहीं किया और बहुत अच्छे से चल रहा था कोई डिस्प्यूट नहीं कोई झगड़ा नहीं 1915 में स्थिति बदली और यहां सॉरी दो में यहां स्थिति बदली और यहाँ एक ऐसे दल की सरकार आई जिसका मकसद मुझे कोई झिझक नहीं है कहने में जिसका मकसद सेवा करना है ही नहीं झगड़ा करना मान्य अध्यक्ष जी मान्य अध्यक्ष जी अनेक पार्टियों के मुख्यमंत्री रहे अनेक पार्टियों की मिलीजुली सरकार रही शुद्ध रूप से सरकार रही मगर राष्ट्र सेवा करने में और जन सेवा करने में किसी भी पार्टी को कोई दिक्कत नहीं आई मैं बाद में बात करूंगा क्या दिक्कत है वो उसकी भी डिटेल बात करूंगा प्रॉब्लम क्या है वो प्रॉब्लम ट्रांसफर पोस्टिंग के अधिकार का नहीं है विजिलेंस को कंट्रोल में लेकर बंगला जो बना दिया है इसका सत्य छुपाना है जो भ्रष्टाचार हो रहा है इसका सत्य छुपाना है मान्यवर 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 उसके बाद में पंद्रह में अचानक ही राज दिल्ली राज्य सरकार ने एक विषय सर्कुलर निकाला जिसमें उन्होंने ट्रांसफर पोस्टिंग के अधिकार अपने हाथ में लिए केंद्र सरकार ने एक नोटिफिकेशन निकाला उसको हाई कोर्ट में चैलेंज किया गया हाई कोर्ट का फैसला केंद्र सरकार के पक्ष में आया इसको सुप्रीम कोर्ट में चैलेंज कर दिया गया उसमें खंडित जनादेश आया फिर संविधान पीठ बनी संविधान पीठ ने कुछ फैसले कर कर नीचे फिर से दो जजों की बेंच को दिया उसमें भी सहमति नहीं बन पाई और फिर से 
संविधान पीठ बनी जिसने अभी अभी फैसला दिया मान्यवर मान्यवर वो जो इंटरप्रिटेशन है वो इंटरप्रिटेशन उन्होंने कानूनी और मॉरल दृष्टि से नहीं किया उन्होंने इंटरप्रिटेशन कानून की स्थितियों का करते हुए ये कहा है कि फिर भी दिल्ली देश की संसद को और भारत सरकार को दिल्ली संघ राज्य क्षेत्र के लिए हर प्रकार का कानून बनाने का अधिकार है वो अधिकार का उपयोग कर कर एक वट हुक्म एक नोटिफिकेशन निकाला गया और वो नोटिफिकेशन इसलिए निकालना पड़ा कि संसद उस वक्त काम नहीं कर मतलब संसद बैठी नहीं थी बैठकें चल नहीं रही तो नोटिफिकेशन निकला और संसद सत्र के अनुपस्थिति में जो जो नोटिफिकेशन निकला इसको मैं यहाँ लेकर आया हूँ जो आज सदन के चर्चा के लिए मैंने आप सबके सामने रखा है मेरा सभी पक्ष के सदस्यों से विनंती है कि चुनाव जीतने के लिए किसी समर्थन हासिल करने के लिए किसी पक्ष का विधेयक का समर्थन करना या विरोध करना ऐसी राजनीति नहीं करनी चाहिए नया गठबंधन बनाने के नए गठबंधन बनाने के अनेक प्रकार होते हैं नया गठबंधन बनाने के अनेक प्रकार होते हैं विधेयक और कानून देश के भले के लिए लेकर ले आते हैं इसका विरोध या इसका समर्थन भी देश के और दिल्ली के भले के लिए करना चाहिए अगर हमारी राजनीति में थोड़ी स्वीकृति कम है तो सबको मिलाना है दिल्ली का जो होना है वो हो जितना भ्रष्टाचार होना है वो हो मंत्री कुछ भी करे मुख्यमंत्री करोड़ों के बंगले बनाए मगर हम विपक्ष में रहते हुए समर्थन करेंगे क्योंकि हमें गठबंधन बनाना है इस तरह से नहीं सोचना चाहिए मेरी अपील है मेरी अपील है मेरी अपील है विपक्ष के सदस्यों को कि आप दिल्ली की सोचिए एयरलाइंस की मत सोचिए एयरलाइंस से फायदा नहीं होने वाला है एयरलाइंस होने के बाद भी पूर्ण बहुमत से नरेंद्र मोदी प्रधानमंत्री बनने वाले हैं इसलिए इसलिए ये एयरलाइंस के कारण जनता के हितों की बलि मत चढ़ाइए जनता सब देख रही है एयरलाइंस कर कर आप अगर ऐसा सोचते हो एलायंस कर कर आप अगर ऐसा सोचते हो कि जनता का विश्वास हासिल कर दिया जाएगा जनता का विश्वास आपको मिला था मगर जिस तरह से 10 साल यूपीए ने शासन चलाया 12 लाख करोड़ के गपले घोटाले करे इसलिए आज वहां बैठे और मैं फिर से कहना चाहता हूं दिल्ली सरकार के दिल्ली सरकार के गपले घोषाले भ्रष्टाचार को प्रचिन्न रूप से अलायंस की गरज के कारण मदद कर रहे हो पूरा देश देख रहा है और पूरा देश चुनाव में इसका हिसाब किताब करेगा मान्यवर मैंने ये सदन के सामने रखा है बिल को मेरा सभी से निवेदन है कि अलायंस के मध्य नजर इस पर अपना अभिप्राय न करे देश के और राजधानी क्षेत्र के भले के लिए न्यूट्रलिटी से बात करें और वैसे भी मैं बता देता हूं विशेषकर कांग्रेस पार्टी वालों को कि ये बिल पारित होने के बाद वो अलायंस में आपके साथ आने वाले नहीं है तो जो सच है वो करिए इतना अपील करके मेरी बात को समाप्त करें प्लीज मान्य सदस्य आपको बोलने का मौका दिया जाएगा लेकिन आप बार 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 उठोगे तो मौका नहीं दिया जाएगा ये सदन है सभी मान्य सदस्य आगे आपको मौका दिया जाएगा आप एक पार्टी के हो और आपको मौका देंगे लेकिन बीच बीच में नहीं उठते हैं नहीं तो आपका समय खत्म हो जाएगा नौ आप भी अपनी बात कहना अधीर रंजन चौधरी जी सर आपको विराजमान होते हुए हमें बड़ा प्रसन्न होते हैं सर सबसे पहले मैं ये कहना चाहते हैं कि कल ही ये मुद्दा सदन में आने वाले थे 
हम तैयार होके बैठे भी थे यहाँ लिस्टेड भी हुई थी सर लेकिन पता नहीं सत्तारूढ़ पार्टी की तरफ से कल मैं आसन पे नेता इसलिए नहीं आया सर सत्तारूढ़ पार्टी की तरफ से कल सदन को ठप कराया गया यह हमारी संसदीय परंपरा में ऐसा नहीं देखा कि यह संसद ठप कराते हैं और सत्तारूढ़ पार्टी खुद और दूसरी देखा कि हमारे गृह मंत्री नदरत रहे सदन से और स्टेट मिनिस्टर होम वो भी नदरत रही तो बाद में पता चल कि अंदर की बात क्या है अंदर की बात यह है कि मोदी मोदी जी के साथ हमारे अमित शाह जी शायद कहीं घूमने गए और सदन को अपने भगवान की मर्जी पे खिलौने की तरफ फेंक के चले गए सर आज जब सदन में आए विषय पे बोले सर विषय में सर विषय में जब विषय में क्या अमित शाह जी बोल रहे थे सर आज जब सदन में आए तो अच्छा लग रहे थे कि हमारे अमित शाह जी बार बार जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी को और कांग्रेस पार्टी को तारीफ कर रहे थे मनुष्य क्या देख रहे हैं भाई ये ये दिन है या रात है मैं तो सोचा कि मैं तो सोचा कि दौर के जाए और अमित शाह की मुंह में शक्कर शहद डाले क्योंकि अमित शाह की मुंह से नेहरू जी की तारीफ कांग्रेस की तारीफ बकाई ये मेरे लिए बड़ा अचरज लगे लेकिन कुछ ही समय बाद कुछ ही समय बाद ये पता चले कि कुछ ही समय बाद ये पता चले कुछ ही समय बाद पता चले पंडित जी नहीं 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 अध्यक्ष जी जिनको मैंने पंडित नेहरू जी ने तारीफ नहीं करी है मैंने जो पंडित नेहरू जी ने कहा वो कोट अनकोट कहा है उसको तारीफ मानना है तो मुझे कोई आपत्ति नहीं है सर एक ही बात कहना चाहते हैं कि मानवर इधर उधर की बात ना कर बता कफीला कैसे लूटा मैं ये कहना चाहते हैं मैं ये कहना चाहते हैं आपको जब जरूरत पड़ते हैं तब नेहरू जी को सराहना नेहरू जी को सहारा लेने पड़ते आप अगर नेहरू जी की सहारा नेहरू जी को सहारा बराबर लेते रहते तो आज हिंदुस्तान में ये मणिपुर हरियाणा हमें देखने को नहीं होते ये आप मान के चलिए ये दिल्ली है दिल्ली और ये दिल्ली हमारा दिल है एक दिन मैंने एक दिन मैंने सर एक दिन मैंने अपने रूह से पूछा एक दिन मैंने अपने रूह से पूछा ये दिल्ली क्या है जब जवाब में ये बताए गए मानो आसमान जिसम है तो दिल्ली उसका जान है तो ये दिल्ली के साथ बार बार क्यों छेड़खानी किए जा रहे हैं ये मैं आप लोगों से पूछना चाहते हैं आपने खुद अपने वक्तव्य में ये पेश किए कि 1911 में ये कलकत्ता से राजधानी उठ के दिल्ली आए बिल्कुल सही बताया आपने ये 1990 में बालाकृष्ण कमेटी की रिपोर्ट और रिकमेंडेशन आई सिक्सटी नाइन्थ अमेंडमेंट 1991 वाज पास बाय पार्लियामेंट हुई इंसर्टेड आर्टिकल 239 थर्टी नाइन डबल ए एंड टू थर्टी नाइन डबल बी इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड प्रोवाइडेड फॉर ए लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इन दिल्ली इन शॉर्ट द सिक्सटी नाइन्थ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट रफली रेस्टोर द काइंड ऑफ गवर्नेंस सिस्टम दैट वॉज ऑफर टू दिल्ली इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू ए यूनियन टेरिटरी विथ ए लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर एंड इलेक्टेड चीफ मिनिस्टर विथ लिमिटेड मैंडेट ये यूनियन टेरिटरी बने 1956 में देखिए मेरा सिर्फ यही कहना है कि आप जो भी कहे शंका हमारे इसलिए है कि हिंदुस्तान में से एक ही राज्य दिल्ली नहीं है अगर दिल्ली में इस तरीके की छेड़खानी होते रहेंगे तो इसके चलते आप धीरे धीरे हिंदुस्तान की बाकी राज्यों में एक किस्म के ही हमला करते रहेंगे अगर आपको यह लगे कि यहां घोटाला होते रहते ये घोटाले के लिए क्या ये बिल लाना जरूरी था आपके हाथ में ईडी है सीबीआई है कितने सारे फौजे हैं आपके हाथ में कितने सारे शक्तियां हैं आपके जेब में तब तो उसको इस्तेमाल क्यों नहीं करते 
ये घोटाला की घोटाला की चलते घोटाला की विरोध कर, करने के लिए आपको क्या ये बिल लाना जरूरी था मैं ये सवाल पूछना चाहते हैं दूसरी सवाल ये है कि देखिए देखिए ये अध्यादेश की घोषणा लोकतांत्रिक और न्यायिक विचार विमर्श का दरकिनार दरकिनार करने का एक स्पष्ट प्रयास है क्योंकि मैं बता रहा हूं क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट की 2023 संविधान पीठ के फैसले के महज छह दिन बाद ही 17 मई 2023 की अध्यादेश को मंजूरी देने वाले कैबिनेट प्रस्ताव पारित किया गया था जबकि अध्यादेश को 19 मई को ही कानूनी रूप दिया गया और उसी शाम जैसे ही सुप्रीम कोर्ट की छुट्टियां शुरू हुई इस अध्यादेश को जनता के लिए लागू कर दिया गया ये सही है ये गलत अब बताओ इतना जल्दबाजी क्यों आपको लगे कि अध्यादेश के तहत ये बिल लाना जरूरी समझाए आपने क्यों ये अध्यादेश लाने की क्या जरूरत थी आप तो सीधा बिल ला सकते ये जरूरी क्या थी ये इमरजेंसी क्या थी एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी सिचुएशन क्या थी उस समय आपको सदन में यह बताना पड़ेगा देखिए 1991 में दी पार्लियामेंट आल्सो पास द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ नेशनल कैपिटल टेरिटरी ऑफ दिल्ली एक्ट टू सप्लीमेंट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू द लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली एंड द काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर इट कन्फर्ड ऑन द असेंबली दी पावर टू लेजिस्लेट ऑन ऑल मैटर्स इन द स्टेट लिस्ट एज वेल एज द कंकरेंट लिस्ट एक्सेप्ट लैंड पुलिस एंड पब्लिक ऑर्डर फर्दर इन 2018, थाउजेंड एटीन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज डेल्ट विद द इश्यू ऑफ द पावर्स ऑफ दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन्वॉल्व द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल टू थर्टी नाइन डबल ए ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हुई डील्स विद द गवर्नेंस स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द नेशनल कैपिटल इन द रूलिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच हेल्ड दैट ऑल द दिल्ली कुड नॉट बी अकॉर्डेड द स्टेटस ऑफ ए स्टेट The concept of federalism would still apply to it. ये संघीय ढांचा के लिए हमें चिंता जरूर करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि हिंदुस्तान में अगर संघीय ढांचा ना बचेगा तो हिंदुस्तान तबाह हो जाएगी इस कगर में हिंदुस्तान ना जाए इसलिए हमें चिंता करना जरूरी है The 2018 thousand एटीन रूलिंग सेट दैट विथ द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ आर्टिकल टू थर्ट टू थर्टी नाइन डबल ए इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन पार्लियामेंट एन भी सेज a representative form of government for delhi while seeking to provide a directly elected legislative assembly with legislative powers over matters within the state list and the concurrent is barring those exempted kal hamara sadan mein jab parsu ye charcha hote samay hame jab virodh karna zaruri mehsoos kiya to hamare koi neta gyani neta ya uthke keh rahe the ki hamare erudite hum log nahi hai ye kanun nahi samajhte mante hain un jaisa flamboyant लीगल लुमिनरी मैं कम से कम नहीं हूं ये बहुत बिल्कुल मानता लेकिन एक बात जरूर कहना चाहते हैं कि ये जो आपकी तरफ से जो बयान दिया गया था वो भी हमारे पास है वो ये था कि ये था कि ये आपने माना कि भार्डिक इट सेल्फ हैड नोटेड दैट सिंस देयर इज नो सेंट्रल लेजिस्लेशन गवर्निंग द सर्विसेस एंड द डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस इन दिल्ली द पावर वुड लाइ With the elected government, ये आपका तर्क है आपका दूसरी तर्क यह है द सेंटर एज रिमूव द बेसिस एंड रीजन ऑन हु इज द जजमेंट वॉज गिवन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिसीजन ऑन द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल टू थर्टी नाइन डबल ए एन टी फोर्टी वन इन द एबसेंस ऑफ एनी स्पेसिफिक पार्लियामेंट लेजिस्लेशन डीलिंग विद द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सर्विसेज सीम टू बी एन एक्नोलेजमेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एज द सुपीरियर अथॉरिटी ऑफ पार्लियामेंट टू मेक लॉस फॉर नेशनल कैपिटल ए आपका तर्क यही है तो इसके साथ मैं यह कहना चाहते हैं बिल्कुल आपका तर्क सही है लेकिन यह भी सही है कि रिव्यू पिटिशन फाइल बाय द सेंटर इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट क्लेम द दिल्ली इज नॉट ए फुल फ्लेजेड स्टेट बट ओनली ए यूनियन टेरिटरी व्हिच इज एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द यूनियन आपको सुविधा की मैं बता रहा हूं द पार्लियामेंट इज दिल्ली टू लेजिस्लेशन ए भी अपने कहते टू लेजिस्लेशन ए भी अपने कहते द सेंटर हैज आर गुड हाउ The May 11 judgment addresses the contention by acknowledging that though Delhi is not a full-fledged state, its legislative assembly is constitutionally entrusted with the power to legislate upon the subject in the state list and concurrent list. आप कहीं हैं बहुत बड़े-बड़े वकील बैठे हुए हैं हमारा रोबी संकर प्रसाद जी वो भी है आप खुद आप देख लीजिए 
द यूनानिमस जजमेंट मैं एक, एक बड़े मेन स्ट्रीम पेपर से मैं ये एक ये उद्धित करते हैं द यूनानिमस जजमेंट हेल्ड दैट दो दिल्ली इज नॉट ए स्टेट अंडर द फर्स्ट शेड्यूल टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट इज कॉन्फर्ड विथ पावर टू लेजिस्लेट अपॉन सब्जेक्ट टू गिव एफेक्ट to the aspiration of the people of nctd it has a democratically elected government which is accountable to the people of the nctd under the constitution scheme envisaged in article 239 double a clause 3 nctd was given legislative power which though limited in many aspects is similar to state in the sense with the addition of article 239 double a the constitution created an asymmetric federal model with the union of india at the center एंड द एन सी टी डी एट द रीजनल लेवल सर हमें यह कहना है जब चुनकर नुमाइंदे आते हैं चुनकर जब लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली बनते हैं तो क्या उनका लेजिस्लेट करने के अधिकार नहीं दिया जाएगा सब छीन लिया जाएगा बचपन से सुन के आते हैं कि चोर कतवाल को डांटे यहां तो लगते हैं कि चोर सिर्फ कतवाल का नहीं कलेक्टर को हुक्म कर रहे हैं क्योंकि क्योंकि यह सारे जो सारे जो हमारे लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली रहेगा ये लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली को खत्म करते हुए ये ब्यूरोक्रेस पे सारे सारे जिम्मेदारी सारे अधिकार ब्यूरोक्रेस पे सौंपा जाते हैं ब्यूरोक्रेस फैसला करेगा सरकार कैसे चलेगी ये क्या सही होगा देश के लिए हमें जहां आपको गलत लगे छाट दीजिएगा कोई हर्ज नहीं मैंने कहा ये कहावत की तरह ये कहावत ये कहावत है मैं अपनी बात नहीं द कोर्ट हट हेल दैट द एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर ऑफ द दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट वॉज को एक्सटेंसिव विथ इज लेजिस्लेटिव पावर दैट इज द एग्जीक्यूटिव आर्म ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट कवर्स ऑल द सब्जेक्ट इंक्लूडिंग सर्विस एज एक्सेट पब्लिक ऑर्डर पुलिस लैंड फॉर विच द लेजिस्लेटिव आर्म कैन मेक लॉज आप ये कह सकते हैं कि हमारे पार्लियामेंट उससे भी शक्तिशाली है बिल्कुल आप कह सकते हैं आपको अधिकार है लेकिन इसमें और एक बात है ये मैं नहीं कह रहे ये डॉक्टर पी टी टी डी टी आचार्य साहब एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनलिस्ट वो कह रहे क्या जानते हैं वेन यू एनालाइज द की प्रोविजन ऑफ दिस ऑर्डिनेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ आर्टिकल टू डबल ए एज वेल एज जी एन सी टी डी 